Want to speak real Hebrew from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at HebrewPod101.com. Hi everybody, Edith here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Hebrew questions. The question for this lesson is, what are the meanings of some of Hebrew's unique greetings? Hebrew has special greetings for different occasions. Let's take a closer look at some of them. We'll start with the very useful greeting, which means good luck. Behatzlacha. It literally means with success, as if to say, may you complete your task with success. You can say to a person to wish them good luck with a test, a job interview, a new project, or any other goal they wish to achieve. For example, if your friend got promoted and you want to wish him or her good luck with their new job, you can say, Behatzlacha batafkida chadash. Or simply, Behatzlacha. The next expression can be heard around dinner tables, in pubs, and at parties. Lechaim. It means cheers and it's used as a toast when drinking with company. The literal meaning of lechaim is to life, reminding us that life itself should always be celebrated. Lechaim. This next expression can come in handy when celebrating a happy occasion such as a wedding, engagement, childbirth, graduation, and so on. When someone congratulates you, you can answer Bekarovitz lecha, literally meaning, soon so shall it be by you. For example, if you just got engaged to your girlfriend and a single friend congratulates you, you can reply with, Toda, Bekarovitz lecha. To a female friend, you will say, Bekarovitz lech. The last expression is a famous one. You may know it since it came from Yiddish and was adopted by English as well. You may know it as, Mazal tov, and in Hebrew it's, Mazal tov. It literally means good luck, but is used as congratulations. This expression was originally meant to declare that a good thing had happened. It was said at weddings and births as if to say, what a lucky event has happened. With time, the meaning was altered a little, and today this expression is used to wish a person luck in the future. You can use it whenever you want to congratulate someone, on a new job, winning an award, graduating from university, and so on. For example, Mazal tov leyoma uledet, literally, congratulations for your birthday. Or, Mazal tov congratulations on winning the first place. How was this lesson? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Hey Trot! Hi everyone, shalom, welcome to Hebrew Weekly Words. I'm your host, Tiara, and this week's theme is rooms. Uh, what can you possibly say about rooms? Uh, we're going to find out together. Chadar Shena, bedroom. Room in Hebrew is cheder, so chadar uh, Shena is literally sleeping room. Chadar Shena nimtza b'kzea misderon. The bedroom is in the end of the hall. Mitbach, kitchen. Mitbach, kitchen, my favorite part of every house. Unfortunately, hamitbach sheli katan meod. My kitchen is very small. You can barely move in it. Shirutim, bathroom. Slicha, efa shirutim. Excuse me, where's the bathroom? That's an important sentence to learn in Hebrew. Memorize it. Salon, living room, uh, where you have all your parties. Salon. I have a Picasso painting in my living room. Chadar Ochel, dining room. Chadar Ochel, uh, which literally means food room. Uh, that's way more fun than dining room, food room. Don't go in the dining room. I broke a plate in there. So that's it for this week. We talked about rooms. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check our website and see you next week on Hebrew Weekly Words. Bye! Yesh troll ba'aliyat agag. There's a troll in the attic. Right? That's where they usually live. Trolls or under bridges. There are a few kinds of trolls.
Hi everyone, welcome to Hebrew Top Words. My name is Yara and today we're going to learn 10 phrases you never want to hear. Are you ready? It's going to be mean. Let's start. I can't pay you back today. I can't pay you back today. Fine, pay me back tomorrow. It's all good. I told you so. Oh, that's a nasty one. I told you so. Hi, mom. Yeah, you did. We need to talk. We need to talk. It can never turn out to be, you want something. <laughs> no. I want to break up. So yeah, what usually follows we should talk is אני רוצה להיפרד. I want to break up. <laughs> this is a really sad lesson. You know what? It's better for the both of you. את מפוטרת. You're fired. את מפוטרת. You're fired. <laughs> for a male, it would be אתה מפוטר. Fine, I didn't want this job anyway. Yeah. השמנת <laughs> לאחרונה? Have you gained weight recently? This is one of the meanest ones. And it's really mean because they never say it in a mean way. Have you gained weight lately? Well, maybe I have. And I like it. It's not you, it's me. It's not you, it's me. It can be nice to hear that. I don't want it to be me, I prefer it to be you. It depends on the context, I guess. סליחה, שכחתי. Sorry, I forgot. סליחה, שכחתי. Sorry, I forgot. I forgot to bring you your stuff. Or I forgot to come today. I forgot to wake up on time. You know who I'm talking about. I used to say it a lot when I was younger. That was like my catchphrase. Oh, sorry, I forgot. תודה על קורות החיים שלך. עם זאת, התפקיד כבר אויש. Thank you for your resume. However, the position has been filled. תודה על קורות החיים שלך. עם זאת, התפקיד כבר אויש. Thank you for your resume. However, the position has been filled. באמת? את נראית הרבה יותר מבוגרת. Really? You look much older. באמת? את נראית הרבה יותר מבוגרת. Really? You look much older. That's, you know what, even if you think that, don't say it out loud. That's just rude. Okay, these were 10 phrases you never want to hear. Thank you so much for watching and letting us hurt your feelings. And don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks, bye! Hi everybody, Edith here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Hebrew questions. The question for this lesson is, how do you use the Hebrew preposition al? The Hebrew word al has many uses. It can mean on, about, of, at, or for, depending on the context. Let's go through some examples so you can learn how to use al correctly. First, let's do some examples for when al means on. יש ארנק על השולחן. There is a wallet on the table. התמונה תלויה על הקיר. The picture is hanging on the wall. Here are some examples of the word על when it means about or of. אנחנו צריכים לדבר על זה. We need to talk about this. לא שמעתי על הסרט הזה. I haven't heard of this movie. The word על is also used as at to indicate a direction like in this sentence. תסתכלי על האיש הזה. Look at that man. It can also be used as for to indicate purpose or consideration. תודה על המתנה. Thank you for the present. הוא נענש על הפשע שביצע. He was punished for the crime he committed. The word על can also be conjugated in a few ways depending on the subject it's referring to. These conjugations are created by combining the preposition על with a pronoun such as I or you. 
These conjugations are needed in case the word al is referring to a person not being mentioned by name. For example, if we said, I'm thinking about him, instead of, I'm thinking about Ben. Likewise, it can also be conjugated for objects without explicitly stating them. For example, the book is on it, instead of, the book is on the shelf. Here are a few examples for conjugations of the word al. Siparti la chalea. I told you about her. Ein mukom ala shulchan, yesh alav sfarim. There is no room on the table. It has books on it. Ata yichol yistakel ala reitim, aval al tishayen alem. Literally, you can look at the furniture, but don't lean on them. Kol ha kafe nishpach alai. All the coffee was spilled on me. How was this lesson? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Et trop Want to speak real Hebrew from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at hebrewpod101.com. Hi viewers! Welcome to Hebrew Weekly Words. My name is Yara and this week's theme is jobs. Miktsuot. Miktsuot is the plural form. The singular form is miktsua, which is more of a profession than a job. Nurse. Achot. Uh, this is a fun one because achot literally means um, sister. And it's the same word for nurse and sister, so it can get confusing and there's no real way to tell them apart of you base it on the context. So here's a fun sentence. Achoti hi achot. My sister is a nurse. Which is literally like saying my sister is a sister. Yep. Farmer. Chaklai. Chaklai means farmer and it comes from the word chaklaut meaning agriculture. Samba sheli hu chaklai. My grandfather is a farmer. So yeah, chaklaut is agriculture and it's also in Hebrew used as farming. Chaklaut. Mehandes, engineer. Mehandes. The feminine form is mehandeset. Engineers make a lot of money. מהנדסים מרוויחים הרבה כסף. I think, I'm not an engineer. Programmer, מתכנת. מתכנת is the masculine form. The feminine form is מתכנתת. היא לומדת להיות מתכנתת. She is studying to be a programmer. Office worker, עובד משרד. It literally means office worker. It's not used very often. In Hebrew because I think people like having their own job title uh, other than just office worker but you can say that uh, we have five office workers so thank you so much for watching uh, what do you do for a living tell us in the comments below and don't forget to check out the site see you next week bye everybody, Edith here, and today we're going to talk about must-know expressions of agreeing and disagreeing with somebody, in Hebrew, of course. אני מסכים איתך לחלוטין. I couldn't agree with you more. אני מסכים איתך לחלוטין. I couldn't agree with you more. Yes, so like when you really want to emphasize your opinion is the same as somebody else's and like you feel very strongly and passionately about it, it's like, I couldn't agree more. אני מסכים איתך לחלוטין, totally, 100%. כמובן, of course. כמובן, of course. Um, so if somebody asks you something, or he wants to hear your agreement about something, you'll say, oh, yes, yes, you're absolutely right, of course, כמובן. אני מניח, I guess so. אני mm, מניח, I guess so. So the literal tra translation of like the verb להניח, אני מניח, 
um, it's like, it's assume. So it's kind of like saying, instead of I guess so, it's like, I assume so. That's the literal translation. I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that. It's like you took the words out of, out of my mouth. You know, I was just going to say that. We're thinking the same thing, you know, great minds. <laughs> Ken, atatsodek. Yes, you're right. Ken, atatsodek. Yes, you're right. This is often like if somebody gives you an advice and you know that their advice is solid. So it's like, yeah, you know, you're right. Sometimes advice, advices are hard to follow. So sometimes you will see, you will say it like, yeah, I, I know, you're right. And sometimes like, yeah, I know, you know? Atatoe. You're wrong. Atatoe. You're wrong. So this is like very abrupt and kind of a harsh way to tell somebody that he's wrong. Um, but I would say that's probably the most common, commonly used, at least in Israel. People are quite, um, you know, they're out there and they speak their minds. And if they don't agree with you, they'll just tell you straight to the face, you know, like, you're wrong. Loni really. I don't think so. Loni really. I don't think so. So it's like, if you're maybe 90% sure about something that it's not, or you just, people, some, somebody asks you something and you don't, like, you don't feel it, you just say, I don't think so. Lonir Eli, which literally translates to, I don't see so. Ulai, maybe. Ulai, maybe. This was like one of my favorite words when I was a little kid. Like people would ask me things and I would just say, Ulai, <laughs> uh, which just literally is maybe. Ani lo maskim. Lo. I don't agree. No. Ani lo maskim. Lo. I don't agree. No. So when you say ani lo maskim in Hebrew, it can either mean I don't agree or I won't allow it. Um, it depends to who you're talking to. Like I would maybe say it to my dog and I'll tell him ani lo maskima and then he'll just stop doing what he's doing. Um, but if you're not agreeing with somebody's opinion, you can also say ani lo maskim. Mm -mm, lo. Ani maskim. I agree. Ani maskim. I agree. I don't know, I seem to use that much less than don't agree. Maybe, maybe it's just me. Okay, so these were must-know expressions in Hebrew for agreeing and disagreeing. Please tell me in the comments below, like, do you tend to agree more with people or disagree? Because I think I disagree more. Uh, <laughs> Please don't forget to smash that subscribe button and like up this video. And please check out HebrewPod101.com for more content and more Hebrew. And I will see you all next time. Bye bye, Leitot! Hi everyone, Shalom, my name is Yara and this is Hebrew wow. Weekly Words. This week's theme is computer words. Uh, so not my thing, but sure, let's have fun. The first word is מחשב נייד, a laptop computer. אני צריכה לקנות מחשב נייד חדש כי שלי כבר לא עובד. I have to buy a new laptop computer because mine doesn't work anymore. That's the sad story of my life right now. מחשב שולחני, desktop computer. אחי הקטן יושב כל היום מול המחשב השולחני שלו. My younger brother sits all day in front of his desktop computer. Get up, do something with your life. מדפסת, פרינטר. Uh, a printer is a lot of fun if you have a cat. If you have a cat, you know what I'm talking about. They keep chasing the pages that come out of the printer, like, 
What do you want from me? יש לי מדפסת צבעונית. I have a color printer. מיקרופון, מיקרופון. This is the weird thing I have right here that, I mean, looks like a tiny beetle. It's not a beetle. It's a microphone. דבר למיקרופון, לא שומעים אותך. Talk to the microphone, we can't hear you. מקלדת, keyboard. <laughs> a friend of mine once pranked me and uh, changed two buttons in my keyboard. I can't blind type, so it was... It took me a while to understand what's going on. המקלדת שלי רועשת. My keyboard is noisy. And this is the end. Oh my God, we learned so much today. Uh, thank you so much for watching Hebrew Weekly Words. Be sure to check out our website and we'll see you next week on Hebrew Weekly Words. Bye. Hi everybody, Did here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. Today we are going to talk about five major cities in Israel. Let's start. Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. Yerushalayim hi ir atika me'od. Jerusalem is a very ancient city, and it's beautiful, and you should visit. So actually a good, um, a good viewpoint on Jerusalem is from the Mormon University. There is a Mormon University in Jerusalem, believe it or not, and it's a beautiful place to visit on its own, and also it has a very, very nice... Um, like panoramic view over the city. So if you're ever in Jerusalem and you have the chance, I highly recommend it. Tel Aviv Yafo. Tel Aviv Jaffa. Tel Aviv Yafo. Tel Aviv Jaffa. Dana lomedet ba universita be Tel Aviv. Dana studies at the University of Tel Aviv, which is where I studied. So Tel Aviv is the largest city in Israel, and also, if you ask me, the most interesting one. And it's fun, it's awesome, um, and there are many, many dogs there. So if you're a dog lover, this is the place for you. Haifa. 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 Haifa n'tzet bezo ha-karmel. Haifa is located in the Carmel area. So I know there are a lot of cities in the U.S. that are called Carmel, which is, I think it's kind of funny. And Haifa is a beautiful city. There are many things to see there. And the weather is pretty good, too, because it's like up on the mountain. Nice place. Always give me allergies for some reason, but if you don't have allergies, that's not a problem. Be'er Sheva. Be'er Sheva. Be'er Sheva. Be'er Sheva. באר שבע היא העיר הראשונה שמוזכרת בתנ״ך. באר שבע is the first city to be mentioned in the Bible. Yes, it is. I think Abraham was there and there was something with the wells and uh, that's why it's called באר שבע, because there are seven wells there. I don't know much about it. טבריה. טיברייס. טבריה. טיברייס. בוא נלך לטבריה ונתרחץ בכנרת. Let's go to Tiberias and bathe at the Sea of Galilee. Um, yeah, Tiberias is beautiful. It's a very nice place, especially if you're like um, a tourist or just visiting from somewhere else in Israel. It's beautiful, it's fun. And the Sea of Galilee in Hebrew means כנרת, um, which is a much shorter name. And the meaning of the name is because of the shape. The shape looks like a violin. And in Hebrew, violin is kinor. So, kinor, kineret. Okay, everybody, that's it. Those were five major cities in Israel. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever visited one of them or which other cities do you know uh, as well. And don't forget to, to like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to HebrewPod101.com for more Hebrew, more content, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. I am Edith, and today we're going to talk about 10 sad words. Hmm. Let's begin. Mud'ag. Upset. Mud'ag. Upset. האיש מודאג שכן נותרה לו עבודה רבה. The man is upset as he has a lot of work remaining.
Yeah, that's upsetting. Lachiv, to hurt. Lachiv, to hurt. אנשים טובים משתדלים שלא להכאיב לאחרים. Good people try not to hurt others. You know, you should always be considerate towards other people and try to put yourselves in their shoes because, you know, we're human beings. <laughs> Budded, lonely. Budded, lonely. Haisha bodeda. The woman is lonely. I don't know, this sentence kind of reminds me of when I was studying English when I was like nine. So my teacher taught me through Beatles songs and then she taught me Eleanor Rigby for some reason. And I started crying like in the middle of the lesson, you know, I wasn't like ugly crying, but I was like weeping because the song is so sad and it's about lonely people. And I don't know, I just, it hit me right in the feels. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was a sensitive kid. Atsuv, sad. Atsuv, sad. Ze atsuv liyot levad b'shabat. It's sad to be alone on Saturdays. I think especially like for Jewish people and like in Israel maybe, if you're alone on Saturday and Saturday is like Shabbat and some people do kiddush and stuff like that and then when you're alone it could be sadder but... I don't think it's, for me, I don't think it's sadder than any other day. It kind of depends on the context, you know? Koder, gloomy. Koder, gloomy. Mezeg ha'avir ayom nir'e koder. The weather seems gloomy today. I have a British friend, and like when the weather is bad, she always says, Oh, that's grim. So, <laughs> koder can also mean grim. Oh, that's grim. Livkot. <laughs> To cry. Livkot. To cry. Hu boche kol hazman. He cries all the time. You know how some babies are like that? Oh my gosh. Meyuash. Discouraged. Meyuash. Discouraged. Shum davar lo lech li ayom. Ani meyuash. Nothing works for me today. I'm discouraged. So yeah, the word meyuash can be discouraged, but it can also be something a little bit more dramatic, like despair or <laughs> something like that. But day-to-day -day conversations, usually it's just like discouraged and not total despair. Meuchzav, <laughs> disappointed. Meuchzav, disappointed. Ani meuchzav, kibalti tziyun garua bamivchan. I'm disappointed. I got a bad grade in the exam. Meduchdach, unhappy. Meduchdach, unhappy. Achrei shani tsofe beseret atzuv, ani margish meduchdach. After I watch a sad film, I feel unhappy. So the word meduchdach is not only unhappy, but it can also be something that's more like, you know, gloomy or grim doesn't have to have a reason, like you're just feeling gloomy, you're just feeling a little bit melancholic. Chared, anxious. Chared, anxious. Totsot abkhina magiot machar, v'ani me'od chared legaben. The exam results are coming out tomorrow, and I'm really anxious about it. Okay, that's it for today for Hebrew Top Words. Today we did 10 sad words. Please tell me down below if there are any more sad words that you would like to know. And yeah, you know, comment this video, like it up, subscribe to our channel. And also don't forget to check out HebrewPod101.com for more content, more videos, and more Hebrew. And I'll see you all next time. Bye, shalom. Yeah, I'm good in outros. <laughs>
Τι θα παραγγείλεις? Η πίτσα φαίνεται νόστιμη. Νομίζω αυτό θα παραγγείλω. Έφαγα πίτσα χτες, οπότε... Οκ, okay. τότε τι λες για χάμπουργκερ? Καλό φαίνεται. Αυτό θα πάρω. Τι θα παραγγείλει ο άντρας? Ένας άντρας και μια γυναίκα κοιτάζουν τον κατάλογο σε ένα εστιατόριο. Τι θα παραγγείλει ο άντρας? Τι θα παραγγείλεις? Η πίτσα φαίνεται νόστιμη. Νομίζω αυτό θα παραγγείλω. Έφαγα πίτσα χτες, οπότε... Οκ, okay. τότε τι λες για χάμπουργκερ? Καλό φαίνεται. Αυτό θα πάρω. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi, my name is Eleni and we will do the Greek weekly words today. So let's see what is the um, uh, word of this week. Fruits, fruta. So the first word is ananas. Pineapple. We don't have a lot of pineapples in Greece, but uh, we had uh, different kind of fruits actually. We had a lot of grapes, so stafilia. We have a lot of oranges, uh, portocalia. We had a lot of mandarins, so mandarinia. Pear, a lot of pears, so uh, achlavia. Δεν έχουμε καθόλου ananades στην Ελλάδα. We don't have at all uh, pineapples in Greece. Peponi, melon. We love melon in Greece and we eat it very much during summer because it's very fresh. Να σου κόψω λίγο πεπόνι για να δροσιστείς. Do you want me to give you some melon to refresh yourself? Μήλο, apple. Ένα μήλο την ημέρα, το γιατρό τον κάνει πέρα. Uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Φράουλα, strawberry. Μ' αρέσουν πάρα πολύ φράουλες. Uh, I love strawberries. Μ' αρέσουν πάρα πολύ τα milkshake με γεύση φράουλα. I love very much strawberry milkshakes. Πορτοκάλι. Orange. So, in Greece we are using a lot uh, of uh, the orange peel and we use it to make some cakes. Χρησιμοποίησα τη φλούδα του πορτοκαλιού για να δώσω άρωμα στο κέικ. I used orange peel to give a particular aroma to my cake. Thank you very much for watching us. If you want to leave your comment, please feel free to let us know what do you like. And if you want to learn more Greek words, take a look on our website, so greekpod101.com. And thank you very much again and goodbye. See you. Γεια σας, είμαι η Στεφανία. Το Σάββατο πριν την Κυριακή της Απόκρεο, κατά τη δεύτερη εβδομάδα του Καρναβαλιού και το Σάββατο πριν την Κυριακή της Πεντηκοστής, λέγεται Ψυχοσάββατο ή Σάββατο των Ψυχών. Τα δύο Ψυχοσάββατα αυτά γιορτάζονται 57 ημέρες πριν το Πάσχα και 48 ημέρες μετά το Πάσχα, αντίστοιχα, είναι αφιερωμένα στους νεκρούς. Σε αυτό το βίντεο θα μάθετε πώς οι Έλληνες τιμούν τους νεκρούς τα ψυχοσάβατα. Γνωρίζετε ποιο είναι το νόημα της παροιμίας «Κάνει νημόσυνο με ξενακόλυβα» Θα σας δείξουμε την απάντηση στο τέλος αυτού του βίντεο. Η Ορθόδοξη Εκκλησία προσεύχεται για τους νεκρούς κάθε Σάββατο η ανάμνηση του Χριστού που πέθανε κατά το Μεγάλο Σάββατο. Παρ' όλα αυτά, τα ψυχοσάββατα έχουν καθιερωθεί προς τη μήνα αυτών που πέθανα χωρίς να έχει πραγματοποιηθεί ποτέ για αυτούς, για διάφορους λόγους, ένα μνημόσυνο. Η τελετή κατά την οποία ζητείται από τον Θεό να συγχωρέσει και να αναπαύσει την ειρήνη όσου έχουν φύγει από κοντά μα.
Πολλοί κάνουν μνημόσυνα για του νεκρού συγγενεί του και επισκέπτονται του τάφου του για να περιποιηθούν το μνήμα, να το καθαρίσουν, να αφήσουν λουλούδια, να λιβανίσουν και να ανάψουν το καντήλι. Πριν την έλευση του χριστιανισμού, τα μνημόσυνα αποτελούσαν έθιμο των αρχαίων Ελλήνων, οι οποίοι με δεήσει, θυσίε και προσφορέ ζητούσαν συγχώρεση για τι αμαρτίε των νεκρών. Σήμερα, μνημόσυνα γίνονται ω εξή. Καταρχά, αναγγέλλονται μέσω εφημερίδων ή με ειδικά αγγελτήρια που επικολούνται στη γειτονιά όπου ζούσε νεκρό. Έπειτα, σάλεται τρισάγιο στον τάφο του νεκρού από ιερέα ή γίνεται ειδική δέηση στην εκκλησία μετά τη θεία λειτουργία. Στο τέλο, πάντα μοιράζονται τα κόλληβα στου παρευρισκόμενου και μερικέ φορέ ακολουθεί τραπέζι. Τα κόλληβα είναι ένα νόστιμο γλυκό αποβρασμένο σιτάρι, ρόδι, ξηρού καρπού, σταφίδε, κανέλα και μερικέ φορέ ζάχαρη άχνη. Παλιότερα τα ετοίμαζαν στα σπίτια. Σήμερα όμω ετοιμάζονται σε ζαχαροπλαστία ή ειδικά εργαστήρια. Μετά το μνημόσυνο, ό,τι περισσέψει, μοιράζεται σε συγγενεί και φίλου για να φαγωθεί και να συγχωρεθεί έτσι συμβολικά ο νεκρό. Η χριστιανική συνήθεια των κόλυβων πιστεύεται ότι προέρχεται από την συνήθεια των αρχαίων Ελλήνων να προσφέρουν στου νεκρού την πανσπερμία, ένα μείγμα σιταριού και άλλων καρπών. Στην Κρήτη, την παραμονή και ανήμερα του Ψυχοσάββατου δεν κόβουν δέντρα γιατί πιστεύουν ότι οι ψυχέ κάθονται σε αυτά και μα παρακολουθούν. Αν κάποιο κόψει ένα κλαδί, οι ψυχέ θα πέσουν κάτω και θα παραπονεθούν. Και τώρα θα σα δείξω την απάντηση του προηγούμενου quiz. Γνωρίζετε ποιο είναι το νόημα τη παροιμία κάνει μνημόσυνο με ξανακόλυβα. Η παροιμία αυτή σημαίνει ότι κάποιο επωφελείται από τι προσπάθειε άλλων, τι οποίε παρουσιάζει ω δικέ του προσπάθειε. Πολύ συχνά λέγεται και για κάποιον που θέλει να δείξει ότι είναι χουβαρντά, αλλά χρησιμοποιώντα χρήματα άλλων. Πώ σα φάνηκε το μάθημα αυτό, Μάθατε τίποτα ενδιαφέρον, Εσεί έχετε παρόμοια έθιμα στη χώρα σα. Αφήστε μας τα σχόλιά σας στο GreekPod101.com και τα λέμε στο επόμενο μάθημα. Γεια χαρά! Hello everyone and welcome to GreekPod101. I'm Emmanuel and I will be your teacher for today. And good luck with this. <laughs> As the holidays are coming, Most of you will uh, visit Greece, so I will make you a lesson about 10 things to do in Greece in the summer. Let's start. Ταξιδεύω στο εξωτερικό. To travel abroad. Ταξιδεύω στο εξωτερικό. Ταξιδεύω στο εξωτερικό. To travel abroad. Μ' αρέσει να ταξιδεύω στο εξωτερικό και ειδικά στην Ευρώπη. I love to travel abroad, especially in Europe. Χαλαρώνω στη παραλία. To relax at the beach. Χαλαρώνω στη παραλία. Χαλαρώνω στη παραλία. To relax at the beach. Πώς να χαλαρώσω στη παραλία με τη δυνατή μουσική που έχουν όλα τα μπαρ. How to relax in the beach with that loud music from the bars. This is a main problem in Greece. All the beach bars, they have loud music, so you cannot easily find a quiet spot. Μαθαίνω ελληνικά με το GreekPod101.com To learn Greek with GreekPod101.com This is a good one. (laughs) Μαθαίνω ελληνικά με το GreekPod101.com I learn Greek with GreekPod101.com So now you know, when they will ask you how you learn Greek, you will tell them Μαθαίνω ελληνικά με το GreekPod101 Μαθαίνω να μαγειρεύω ελληνικά φαγητά To learn to cook Greek food Μαθαίνω να μαγειρεύω ελληνικά φαγητά Μαθαίνω να μαγειρεύω ελληνικά φαγητά. I learn to cook Greek food. Η γυναίκα του που είναι ξένη έχει μάθει να μαγειρεύει ελληνικά φαγητά. His wife, who is foreigner, has learned to cook Greek food. Κάνω barbecue to have a barbecue. Κάνω barbecue. Κάνω barbecue. 
Κάποιος κάνει barbecue γιατί μυρίζει τσίκνα. Someone is making a barbecue because it smells like a roasted meat. This is a major thing in Greece. We always, every day, every week, every month, we have barbecue in our houses. So, <laughs> it's a common thing. You will find it everywhere. Especially with souvlakis. Especially with souvlakia, to say it correctly. Γλεντάω όλη τη νύχτα. To party all night. Γλεντάω όλη τη νύχτα. Γλεντάω όλη τη νύχτα. To party all night. Στο γάμο οι καλεσμένοι γλέντισαν όλη τη νύχτα. At the wedding the guests were parting all night. Μαυρίζουν. To get a tan. Μαυρίζουν. To get a tan. Πω πω, έχεις μαυρίσει πολύ. Wow, you got so tanned. Ωραίο. Πηγαίνω για πεζοπορία. To go hiking. Πηγαίνω για πεζοπορία. Go hiking. Σκεφτόμαστε να πάμε για πεζοπορία αυτό το Σαββατοκύριακο. We are thinking to go for hiking this weekend. Because in Greece... We are very sporty and our lifestyle is all the time in the nature. We usually go for hiking or making other kind of activities like running, cycling and weightlifting. So it's something common. I'm going for running every day. Εργάζομαι σε θέση μερικής απασχόλησης. To work a part-time job. Εργάζομαι σε θέση... Μερικής απασχόλησης. Εργάζομαι σε θέση μερικής απασχόλησης. To work a part-time job. Αυτή τη στιγμή εργάζεται σε θέση μερικής απασχόλησης και με το ζόρι τα βγάζει πέρα. At that time, she has a part-time job and she barely make it financially. Διασκεδάζω με φίλους. To have fun with friends. This is a good one. Διασκεδάζω με φίλους. To have fun with friends. Μου αρέσει να διασκεδάζω με τους φίλους μου παίζοντας μπιλιάρδο. I like to have fun with my friends playing pool. So, that's it for today. Hope you find it interesting. If you want to learn more, you can go to greekpod101.com and you can subscribe to the channel. And see you soon with more lessons. Take care. Have a nice day. Αναγκαστικά, λόγω των κακών βαθών... How are your Greek listening skills? First you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Ένα άντρα μιλάει με μια υπάλληλο ενό καταστήματο. Ποιο που κάμισο θα αγοράσει. Ποιο που κάμισο νομίζετε ότι είναι καλύτερο. Το άσπρο ή το μπλε. Ε, λοιπόν, νομίζω ότι το μπλε είναι καλό. Πηγαίνει καλά με τον γκρι σακάκι σας. Νομίζετε. Αλλά δεν ταιριάζει με την κόκκινη γραμβάτα μου. Ή μήπως ταιριάζει. Μμμ, mm, συμφωνώ. Οκ, okay. τότε θα πάρω το άσπρο, όχι το μπλε. Ποιο που κάμισο θα αγοράσει... Ένα άντρα μιλάει με μια υπάλληλο ενό καταστήματο. Ποιο που κάμισο θα αγοράσει. Hmm. Ποιο που κάμισο νομίζετε ότι είναι καλύτερο. Το άσπρο ή το μπλε. Ε, λοιπόν, νομίζω ότι το μπλε είναι καλό. Πηγαίνει καλά με τον γκρι σακάκι σα. Νομίζετε.
αλλά δεν ταιριάζει με την κόκκινη γραμβάτα μου. Ή μήπω ταιριάζει. Hm, mm, συμφωνώ. Οκ, okay. τότε θα πάρω το άσπρο, όχι το μπλε. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi everybody, my name is Edith. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in the series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at hebrewpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is... Sameach. Happy. Sameach. Sameach. Happy. אני שמחה להכיר אותך. I'm happy to get to know you. אני שמחה להכיר אותך. עצובה. Sad. עצובה. עצובה. Sad. זה עצוב להיות לבד בימי שבת. It's sad to be alone on Saturdays. זה עצוב להיות לבד בימי שבת. כועס. angry. כועס. כועס. angry. למה את כל כך כועסת? why are you so angry? למה את כל כך כועסת. בגדים. clothing. בגדים. בגדים. clothing. שכבות של בגדים. Layers of clothing. שכבות של בגדים. נעל. שו. נעל. נעל. שו. הנעליים היו קטנות. The shoes were small. הנעליים היו קטנות. גרב. סאק. גרב. גרב. סאק. ללבוש גרבי ספורט עם נעלי ערב זה נראה משונה. Wearing gym socks with dress shoes looks odd. ללבוש גרבי 
ספורט, עם נעלי ערב, זה נראה משונה. תחתונים, underwear, תחתונים, תחתונים, underwear. הגרביים והתחתונים שלי נמצאים במגירה הראשונה בארון הבגדים שלי. My socks and underwear are in the top drawer of my dresser. הגרביים והתחתונים שלי נמצאים במגירה הראשונה בארון הבגדים שלי. לדבר. Talk. לדבר. לדבר. Talk. הוא דיבר על הפרויקט החדש שלו. He talked about his new project. הוא דיבר על הפרויקט החדש שלו. לתת. give. לתת. לתת. give. אתה יכול לתת לי הנחה? Could you give me a discount? אתה יכול לתת לי הנחה? נמוך. Low. נמוך. נמוך. לואו. המשכורת שלי נמוכה מדי. The wage is too low. המשכורת שלי נמוכה מדי. גבוה. היי. גבוה. גבוה. היי. הבית נמצא גבוה על רמה. The house is high on a plateau. הבית נמצא גבוה על רמה. פרי. Fruit. פרי. פרי. Fruit. אני רוצה לשתול כמה עצי פרי בגינה. I want to plant some fruit trees in the garden. אני רוצה לשתול כמה עצי פרי בגינה. תמנון. אקטופוס. תמנון. תמנון. אקטופוס. התמנון שוחה באוקיינוס. The octopus is swimming in the ocean. התמנון שוחה באוקיינוס. כריש. 
shark. Karish. Karish. Shark. Hashana, Shvua Hakarish, Matril Mukdam Meharagil. This year, Shark Week starts earlier. Hashana, Shvua Hakarish, Matril Mukdam Meharagil. Liviatan. Whale. Liviatan. Live ya tan. Whale. Haliviatanim olim bishvilish of avir. The whales are coming up for air. Haliviatanim. Olim bishvil lishof avir. Meunan. Cloudy. Meunan. Me u nan. Cloudy. Nihiya meunan b'chutz. It's getting cloudy outside. Nihiya meunan b'chutz. Karir. Ku. Karir. Karir. חם במהלך היום, אבל קריר בלילה. It's hot during the day, but cool at night. חם במהלך היום, אבל קריר בלילה. מלפפון Cucumber. Melafefon. Me la fe fon. Cucumber. Ani mechina salat israeli i melafefon ve agvania. I make Israeli salad with cucumber and tomato. Ani מכינה סלט ישראלי עם מלפפון ועגבניה. פלפל בל פפר פלפל פלפל בל פפר הפלפלים הנפוצים ביותר הם ירוקים, אדומים או צהובים. The most common bell peppers are green, red or yellow. הפלפלים הנפוצים ביותר הם ירוקים, אדומים או צהובים. Broccoli. 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 Echa tam vashel broccoli. How do you cook broccoli? איך אתה מבשל ברוקולי? Well done!
In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at HebrewPod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom! Hi everyone, welcome to Hebrew Weekly Words. My name is Yara and this week's theme is... Flavors. Okay, let's learn some Hebrew. Ta'am, flavor. So this word ta'am is flavor as in what ice cream flavor do you like? But we also use it to say there's no point and be ta'am. It also tastes like in good taste. He has good taste. Yesh lo ta'am tov. It's funny because it sounds like he's delicious. Kharif. Spicy. There's usually a kind of spice that we just call it kharif. Spicy. I don't even know what it's made of and maybe it refers to different kind of spicy spices, but that's how you call it. So when you go to a falafel stand, you can tell the vendor, simli harbe kharif. Put a lot of spicy in my falafel. And one you really want to memorize is בלי חריף בבקשה, no spicy please, מלוח, salty, uh, which comes from the word מלח, salt. So the Dead Sea is called in Hebrew the salt sea, because it's salty. Ugh, האורז הזה מלוח מדי. This rice is too salty. חמוץ, sour. I like it because it goes well with the face that you make when you eat something sour. It's like chamutz. Limon hu chamutz. Lemon is sour. Matok, sweet. Maybe my favorite Israeli sweet is sufganya, which is the Hanukkah donut. It's not a donut. I don't want to call it that. I think it's offensive to the sufganya because it's so much better than that. אני אוהבת את הקפה שלי מתוק. I like my coffee sweet. Like I like my men. This is the end of the video. We talked about flavors today. What is your favorite flavor? Tell us in the comments and don't forget to check out the site. I'll see you next week. Bye! Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Greek listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Enos adras psachni ena doro genetlion yeti gineka tu se ena kosmi matopolio. Πιο περιδέρεο θα οράσει. Μπορώ να σας εξυπηρετήσω. Ψάχνω ένα δώρο γενεθλίων για τη γυναίκα μου. Τι προτείνετε. Λοιπόν, τι λέτε για αυτό το περιδέρεο. Mm. Φαίνεται λίγο μακρύ. Αυτά εδώ. Έχουμε ένα μενταγιόν λουλούδι και ένα άλλο με μια καρδιά. Ψάχνω για κάτι λίγο πιο εκλεπτισμένο. Πόσο κάνει αυτό εδώ το κολλιέ από πέρλες? Είναι στα 500 ευρώ. Mm. Αυτό είναι πολύ ακριβό. Εντάξει. Θα πάρω το πρώτο. Μάλιστα. Ορίστε. Ποιο περιδέρεο θα αγοράσει? Ένας άντρας ψάχνει ένα δώρο γενεθλίων για τη γυναίκα του σε ένα κοσμηματοπολείο. Ποιο 
περιδέρεο θα οράσει, μπορώ να σας εξυπηρετήσω. Ψάχνω ένα δώρο γενεθλίων για τη γυναίκα μου. Τι προτείνετε? Λοιπόν, τι λέτε για αυτό το περιδέρεο? Μ, φαίνεται λίγο μακρύ. Αυτά εδώ έχουμε ένα μενταγιόν λουλούδι και ένα άλλο με μια καρδιά. Ψάχνω για κάτι λίγο πιο εκλεπτισμένο. Πόσο κάνει αυτό εδώ το κολλιέ από πέρλες? Είναι στα 500 ευρώ. Hm. Αυτό είναι πολύ ακριβό. Εντάξει, θα πάρω το πρώτο. Μάλιστα, ορίστε. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Γεια σας! Είμαι η Στεφανία. Τα Θεοφάνια ή αλλιώς τα Φώτα είναι μια χριστιανική εορτή που γιορτάζεται κάθε χρόνο στις 6 Ιανουαρίου η ανάμνηση της βάπτισης του Ιησού Χριστού από τον Άγιο Ιωάννη τον Βαπτιστή στον Ιορδάνη Ποταμό. Είναι η τρίτη και η τελευταία εορτή του 12 ημέρου, της περίοδου δηλαδή από τα Χριστούγεννα ως τα Θεοφάνια. Λέγεται 12 ημέρο επειδή διαρκεί 12 ημέρες. Σε αυτό το βίντεο θα μάθετε πώς ακριβώς γιορτάζονται τα Θεοφάνια στην Ελλάδα. Η σύνθετη λέξη θεοφάνεια αποτελείται από δύο λέξεις. Μήπως γνωρίζετε ποιες είναι αυτές? Θα σας δείξουμε την απάντηση στο τέλος αυτού του βίντεο. Σύμφωνα με τις γραφές, κάποια ημέρα ο Ιησούς παρουσιάστηκε στον Ιωάννη τον Βαπτιστή, που κήρυτα και βάπτιζε στον Ιορδάνη ποταμό, ζητώντας του να βαπτιστεί. Κατά τη στιγμή της βάπτισης, κατέβηκε από τον ουρανό το Άγιο Πνεύμα, υπομορφή περιστεράς. Στάθηκε πάνω από τον Ιησού, ενώ ταυτόχρονα ακούστηκε η φωνή του Θεού από τον ουρανό. Φανερώθηκε έτσι στη γη η Αγία Τριάδα. Πάνω σε αυτό το γεγονός καθιερώθηκε από την Εκκλησία το μυστήριο του βαπτίσματος με την χρήση νερού. Την ημέρα των Θεοφανίων, στις παραθαλάσσιες περιοχές της Ελλάδας, τελείται το έθιμο του αγιασμού των υδάτων, κάτι που θυμίζει την βάπτιση του Ιησού. Κατά την τελετή, που λέγεται και απλά αγιασμός, καταγιάζονται τα ύδατα με ευχές και επικλήσεις του ιερέα, καθώς και με την εμβάπτιση του Τιμίου Σταυρού στα νερά. Σε περιοχές μη παραθαλάσσιες, η τελετή μπορεί να γίνει σε ποτάμι, λίμνη ή και σε δεξαμενή νερού. Αγιασμοί τελούνται επίσης σε σπίτια, όπου ο ιερέας, με ένα κλαδί βασιλικού, ραντίζει το σπίτι με το αγιασμένο νερό. Κατά την εμβάπτιση του Τιμίου Σταυρού σε θάλασσα, ποτάμι, λίμνη ή δεξαμενή, Τολμηροί κολυμβητέ ή αλλιώ βουτυχτάδε βουτούν στα παγωμένα νερά για να τον ανασύρουν. Όποιο πιάσει τον σταυρό, αφού πρώτα τον φυλίσει, τον περιφέρει στι οικίε και λαμβάνει πλούσια δώρα. Στην ελληνική ταινία Μανταλένα, που γυρίστηκε στην Αντίπαρο το 1960, γίνεται μια χαρακτηριστική απόδοση του εθίμου αυτού, αν και ο λίγο κομικοτραγική. Άλλα έθιμα των Θεοφανίων είναι τα κάλαντα των φώτων, που λένε τα παιδιά την παραμονή τη εορτή και το πλήσιμο των εικόνων. Θυμάστε τους καλικάτζαρους, τους δαίμονες που ανεβαίνουν στη γη την παραμονή των Χριστουγέννων. Με τους αγιασμούς των θεοφανίων φοβούνται, τρέπονται σε φυγή και επιστρέφουν ξανά στην υπόγεια κρυψώνα τους, όπου και παραμένουν μέχρι την επόμενη παραμονή Χριστουγέννων. Και τώρα θα σας δείξω την απάντηση του προηγούμενου quiz. Η σύνθετη λέξη θεοφάνεια αποτελείται από δύο λέξεις. Μήπως γνωρίζετε ποιες είναι αυτές? Η λέξη θεοφάνεια αποτελείται από τη λέξη θεός και από το αρχαίο ρήμα φένο που σημαίνει φανερών. Η γιορτή ονομάζεται έτσι επειδή, όπως είδαμε, ο θεός φανερώθηκε στη γη. Λέξεις όπως φαίνομε, φαινόμενο, φαντασία, φάντασμα, φανάρι παράγονται από το ρήμα φένο. Πώς σας φάνηκε το μάθημα αυτό? Μάθατε τίποτα ενδιαφέρον? Εσείς έχετε δει ποτέ ζωντανά ή σε βίντεο την τελετή αγιασμού των υδάτων. Αφήστε μας τα σχόλιά σας στο GreekPod101.com και τα λέμε στο επόμενο μάθημα. Γεια χαρά!
you're gonna learn some Hebrew words. Yay! Hi everyone, my name is Yara and this is Hebrew Weekly Words. And our theme today is clothing actions. Actions that has to do with clothing. Okay, let's start. Lilbosh, to put on. So, lilbosh, it's to put on or to wear. Ma ta mitkaven lilbosh la mesiba ha'erev? What are you going to wear for the party tonight? Letaken, to mend. Hachatsait sheli nikre'a, az ani tzricha letaken ota. My skirt got ripped, so I need to mend it. Lechabes, to wash. This word lechabes means to wash only clothes. Lechabes, clothes, you can't. Lechabes, anything else. Mikevan sheshafachti mitza lechulta, hayiti tzricha lechabes ota. Since I spilled juice on the shirt, I had to wash it. Limdod, to try on. Limdod means uh, literally to measure, uh, but you can also use it uh, to say trying on clothes. Nichnasti letaha halbasha kedei limdod et amichnasayim. I went into the changing room to try on the trousers. Lehatim, to go with. So, matim is also suitable or fit, like properly. So you can say, matimali. Does this shirt fit me? Hasharsheret matimal achulza. The necklace uh, goes with the shirt. Oh, this is the end. I'm so happy because I'm so hot. So this is the end. Thank you so much for watching. We were talking about clothing actions. So don't forget to check out the site and we'll see you next time. Bye. Oh my. Hello everybody, Edith here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. Today we're going to talk about 20 travel phrases you should know. Let's get started. Could I get a map? Could I get a map? Obviously, you can hear the closeness between the word map and mapa. And I think probably the origin is like Greek or something like that. And it just, you know, found its way into all the different languages. Do you speak English? Do you speak English? Well, obviously, if somebody speaks English, he can answer you that question even if you ask it in English? <laughs> Is there a bus from the airport to the city? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? Yeah, that's always very useful. I suggest you ask this question like at the information center inside the airport and not just go outside and start asking people because most people have their own arrangements of getting to their own places and, you know, just talk to people who know stuff, you know? Yes, internet al khuti bechinam? Is there free Wi-Fi? Yes, internet al khuti bechinam? Is there free Wi-Fi? Now, this is a question that I can relate to. If you want to ask, like, what's the Wi-Fi password in Israel, then you should ask, Ma hasisma la Wi-Fi? If you say Wi-Fi, people know what that is. Um, so just ask, Ma hasisma? Yesh lachem chadarim pnuim alayla? Do you have any vacancies tonight? Yesh lachem chadarim pnuim alayla? Do you have any vacancies tonight? Girl, if you didn't pre-order your rooms in advance, like, I don't know, I don't, I can't even, I don't know what to tell you. Okay? Just, what ifs. Ani yechol avor lechedar acher? Could I move to a different room? Could I move to a different room? I don't normally do this unless the room is really bad or it smells. That happened to me before, like when the room just smells out of... out of nowhere. Hizmanti makom. I have a reservation. Hizmanti makom. I have a reservation. So this one you can use in both restaurants or hotels. Or, you know, whenever you make a reservation to. Sometimes it could even be a bus. So, that's really useful. 
Could we have the menu, please? אפשר לקבל תפריט בבקשה? Could we have the menu, please? Yeah, sometimes they just forget, like they sit, they sit you down, you're at the table, sometimes they'll even give you water and no menu, so that's kind of funny. יש לך המלצות? Do you have any recommendations? יש לך המלצות? Do you have any recommendations? So, I think, like, in Israel, generally, if you ask the waiter if he has recommendations, then he will tell you what he personally likes. Um, whereas in other places, they would like, oh, do you have recommendations? And they'll tell you, yeah, this and this is very popular. So, I don't know what you guys prefer, but I kind of prefer the waiter's own preference because he probably ate all of the dishes in the menu and he knows what up, you know? אפשר לקבל את החשבון? Could I have the check? אפשר לקבל את החשבון? Could I have the check? Yeah, or you can just like... And I think that's like an international thing, you know, check please, but you'll be surprised to some countries. אני אלרגי לבוטנים. I'm allergic to peanuts. אני אלרגי לבוטנים. I'm allergic to peanuts. That's really important if you're going to restaurants and if you have any sorts of allergies, so you should mention that and you should really make it clear. And funny story, I found out that in Israel, there are much less peanut allergies than any other place in the world because there's a peanut snack that parents just shove to their kids since they're like zero age, and apparently that kind of immunes them towards peanut allergies, and it's very rare, so yay. <laughs> מים בבקשה. Water please. מים בבקשה. Water please. Yeah, water in restaurants. You should know that you're always supposed to get tap water for free, so remember that. כמה זה עולה? How much is this? כמה זה עולה? How much is this? Also a very useful phrase, you can ask that when you're doing shopping and clothes and like when you're buying tickets for something, so useful. אני רוצה עשרה כאלה. I'd like ten of these. אני רוצה עשרה כאלה. I'd like ten of these. Wow. <laughs> I don't think I've ever bought ten of anything. אני רוצה את זה. I'd like this. אני רוצה את זה. I'd like this. So out of all the things, this is the thing you want. And you should emphasize, when you say that, you should emphasize the word זה, it, this. אתה יכול לתת לי הנחה? Could you give me a discount? אתה יכול לתת לי הנחה? Could you give me a discount? Now this one you should always say with a smile on your face. And another way of saying it in Hebrew, which is a little bit more common and a little bit more casual, is instead of, instead of the verb לתת, to give, use the verb לעשות, to do. אתה יכול לעשות לי הנחה? אתם מקבלים כרטיסי אשראי? Do you take credit card? אתם מקבלים כרטיסי אשראי? Do you take credit cards? Again, usually yes. Um, another very useful thing to ask with credit cards is if you can put, like, the tip in a restaurant, if you can put that on the credit card as well. And when you want to ask that, you'd say, אפשר טיפ באשראי? איפה תחנת הרכבת? Where is the train station? איפה תחנת הרכבת? Where is the train station? I feel like this sentence is more useful in places when you have, like, an underground train, uh, whereas in Israel you have, like, a train that goes between cities, but sometimes you need to take that to the airport, so it's good to ask. סליחה? כמה עולה נסיעה? Excuse me, what's the fare? סליחה, כמה עולה נסיעה? Excuse me, what's the fare? I guess you'd ask that probably only on a bus in Israel and not in any other place. אתה יכול לצלם אותי בבקשה? Could you take a picture of me, please? אתה יכול לצלם אותי בבקשה? Could you take a picture of me, please? Yeah, so if you're not that much into selfies or you'd want to get a more panoramic or wide view of what's behind you, then ask somebody. Don't be shy. Okay, that's it for today, everybody. Thank you for watching Hebrew Top Words. We spoke about 20 travel phrases that you should know. Please let me know down below if there's anything else that you want to know. And what do you commonly use? And if you have a funny story for when you were abroad, I'd love to read all of your comments. 
Don't forget to like up this video and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check out HebrewPod101.com for more content, more videos, and more Hebrew. I'll see you next time. Bye. Shalom. Hi everybody, Yana here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Hebrew questions. The question for this lesson is, what's the difference between the Nikud Kamatz and Patach, and between Tzere and Segol? To understand this, it's important to know that vowels in Hebrew were traditionally of three lengths. Some vowels were long, some short, and some super short. Kamatz and Patach both represent an A sound, but Kamatz is long while Patach is short. Here are a few examples. Shalom, Kal. Some words have both Kamatz and Patach. Katav, Ganav, Matzah. Similarly, Tzere is the long version of the A sound while Segol is the short version. Here are a few examples. Lev, Etz, Moed, Melech, Carmel. In the past, knowing the difference between these sounds was crucial to speaking and understanding proper Hebrew. But in contemporary Hebrew, there is no difference at all. That's right, they all sound exactly the same. How do you know then which one to use? Since they have no impact on pronunciation, the only real way to learn the proper spelling and use of the Nikud is simply by memorizing it. As you study Hebrew, you may start to recognize patterns that make this easier, but on the whole, there are no shortcuts. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Lehitraot! I didn't see you there. Hello, welcome to Hebrew Weekly Words with me, Yara. <laughs> and uh, today's theme is, oh, in your wallet. Uh, that's gonna be a short one. <laughs> so, uh, wallet in Hebrew is arnak, arnak. Here is my arnak. And okay, let's see uh, what is the first word. רישיון נהיגה, driver's license. קיבלתי את רישיון הנהיגה שלי כשהייתי בת 17. I got my driver's license when I was 17 years old. כרטיס אשראי, credit card. הגזמתי עם הקניות החודש, אז גזרו לי את כרטיס האשראי. I went too far with the shopping this month, so they had to cut my credit card. קופון, קופון. I'm not very good at collecting them, but I know people that live off coupons. Like, they only buy with coupons. יש לי קופונים בשווי אלף שקלים. I have a thousand shekel worth of coupons. מזומן, cash. Uh, the full term is כסף מזומן, cash money. סליחה, אנחנו מקבלים רק כסף מזומן. I'm sorry, we only accept cash. כרטיס ביקור. Business card. Kartis Bikur. Business card. The card you give to someone you meet. Uh, it can be uh, a person's card. It can be a business business card. Can I have your business card, please? Why, of course. Here is my business card. And this is the end. We were talking about things that you have in your wallet. Arnak. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the website and we'll see you next week. Bye! Oh, now I'm a member, yeah, and it's for life. <laughs>
Hi everybody, Jana here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Hebrew questions. The question for this lesson is, what's the difference between Nikud and Ktiv Male systems of writing vowels? And which one should I learn? Let's start at the beginning. Originally, Hebrew was written without any vowels or vowel symbols at all. All the letters were consonants. This is called Ktiv Chaser, and you may be familiar with it if you've seen the Torah written out in its original form. Reading this can be very challenging for people new to Hebrew or unfamiliar with the vocabulary in a given text. Because of this, Ktiv Menukad was introduced. Ktiv Menukad involves a series of dots and other forms of notation called Nikud. They are added to words and fully represent their vowel sounds. You'll see this writing system in language textbooks, as well as in children's books or poetry. But for people who know Hebrew well or who use it in their everyday life, this Ktiv Menukad is very labor-intensive and inconvenient. The Academy of the Hebrew Language has established a set of rules to write without Nikud, but still indicate some vowels using the letters Aleph, Hey, Vav, and Yud. This is commonly called Ktiv Male, and it's the most widely used writing system in Israel today. You'll see it in newspapers, books, on signs, and in TV subtitles. Here is an example of a word, Shulchan, written with the three different systems. When learning Hebrew, you should study all of these systems to some degree. When starting out, you can use the Ktiv Menukad to help you develop your pronunciation and build your vocabulary. As you become a more proficient Hebrew user, though, you'll want to get familiar with Ktiv Male, as this will be the most common system you'll use as an adult in your everyday life. In fact, it's becoming more common recently to teach Hebrew with Ktiv Male and skip Ktiv Menukad altogether. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Lehitraot! Hi everyone, shalom and welcome to Hebrew Weekly Words. My name is Yara and I am super excited to find out this week's theme. Okay, drums. And this week's theme is... Being sick, <laughs> yeah, sounds like fun. Uh, being sick, liot chole, zihum, infection. I once had uh, an, a ring in my eyebrow. Well, when you're 16, you know. Hayali zihum bagaba. I had an infection in my eyebrow. That's a true story. Kevrosh, headache. I have so many of these, so I'm actually really experienced. I can tell you a lot about it. לא הגעתי לשיעור כי היה לי כאב ראש. I didn't come to class because I had a headache. True story. כאב בטן, stomach ache. אני חושבת שאכלתי משהו מקולקל, יש לי כאב בטן. I think I ate something bad. I have a stomach ache. Beware. חום, fever. חום is actually the word for heat as well. הוא היה בסדר בבוקר, אבל אז עלה לו החום. He was fine in the morning, but then his fever went up. צינון, cold. כשאת סובלת מצינון, את מתעטשת כל הזמן. When you suffer from a cold, you keep sneezing all the time. Uh, so this is the end. Thank you so much for watching. This week's theme was being sick. להיות חולה. I wish you only good health. And uh, don't forget to check our site. And see you next week on Hebrew Weekly Words. Bye. Hello everyone, it is here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words and today we are going to talk about 10 phrases to say when you're angry. Let's get started. Zeloinyancha. It's none of your business. Zeloinyancha. It's none of your business. Zeloinyancha. Zeloinyancha. It's none of your business. We all know when we're using that, right? I wouldn't say it to like people from work. <laughs> Stock. Shut up. Stock. Shut up. Stock.
uh, stock means be quiet or, you know, it's not really shut up, but it's like be quiet. Sometimes you can say to like friends, like, like be quiet for a second. You can say like stockschnia, like shut up for a minute. But if you really want to be rude, um, which sometimes you do, then you want to say stom tape. Stom tape, not et hape, because this is too polite. Stom tape means like shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. This is what you want to know. Azovoti. Leave me alone. Azovoti. Leave me alone. Azov oti. Uh, most of these phrases are obviously quite short because you don't want to start a lecture when you're angry, right? You just want to just want to send a message. You just want to be loud and clear. Leave me alone. Azovoti. It can also be physically like, you know, just like don't touch me. Like azovoti if somebody does touch you, which is wrong. Ata tzokhek alai? Are you kidding me? Ata tzokhek alai? Are you kidding me? Ata tzokhek alai? Um, yeah, it also means like, are you making fun of me kind of a uh, thing. Uh, we usually say it when somebody is saying something that you really can't believe. It doesn't have to be like in an angry way, like if somebody tells you something and it's really amazing, you say like, you're kidding, right? So you can say, It's like, no, no, it's real. <gasps> can be that kind of a thing. Sheye, whatever. Sheye, whatever. Sheye, it's like, let it be. <laughs> uh, but it's not let it be like in a philosophical kind of a Beatles, it's more like, it's whatever, I don't, I don't care. Oh yeah, you can, you can say to your parents, like, whatever, she yeah. Or if somebody tells you something and you don't really, like, you don't, you don't even want to argue about it anymore, it's just whatever, okay, just she yeah. She yeah. She yeah. It's more of a teenager thing. Maspik im ze. Cut it out. Maspik im ze. Cut it out. Now this is more of a parent thing, like when you twitch your leg or you're just making noise or, you know, children are being um, annoying. Uh, and you just, you also kind of say it through your teeth, it's like, maspik im ze. And the slower you say it, the scarier it is. It's like, the slower it is, you know they mean business. Oh my god, I should really stop. Sorry, mom. It's more of like a stop, kind of a, you know, enough. אני לא רוצה לדבר איתך. I don't want to talk to you. אני לא רוצה לדבר איתך. I don't want to talk to you. אני לא רוצה לדבר איתך. I mean, if when you're having an argument or something and you just, you know, want to give the silent treatment and somebody tries to, somebody tries to ruin your silent treatment, then you're just like, I don't want to talk to you. אני לא רוצה לדבר איתך. Talk to the hand. Ani koes. I'm upset. Ani koes. I'm upset. I guess it's not too scary. I mean, people are entitled to their emotions, right? So you can say, you can express in simple words that you're upset or angry. That's probably fine. It's what comes after that. <laughs> it's really the bad part, right? It's like, ani koes. I'm angry. What about? Azma. So what? Azma. So what? This is a very Israeli kind of a gesture. And it's like, kind of like, who do you think you are? Kind of a thing. Or, you know, who cares? So what? Practice. It's like, it's like screwing a ball, but more like vertical and fast. Azma is literally just so what? Azma. תשמור על הפה שלך. Watch your mouth. תשמור על הפה שלך. Watch your mouth. I honestly believe that you can have a serious discussion or um, just a really angry discussion without um, using any cuss words, and I'm a strong believer in that, and I try not to because I think I can make my points perfectly clear without it. Um, and if somebody, like especially your child, if somebody is using, using like cuss words against you, you can say, like, watch your mouth. And that's a really scary thing to, thing to say, in my opinion, to somebody like, Tishmora la peshelcha. 
um, because there is a famous saying in Hebrew that means that life and death is on the tongue, like you can control life and death just by speaking. And it says, in Hebrew it says, Chaim v'mavet beyad halashon. So if somebody tells you to watch your mouth, it means like, oh, this is going to get serious. Okay, everybody, those were 10 phrases to use when you're angry. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything similar in your country, which one is your favorite, and if there's anything that we missed. Um, you know, there are a lot of ways to express your anger, and it's a wonderful emotion, isn't it? So, uh, don't forget to check out Hebrew Pod 101 for more videos, more content, more Hebrew, and I'll see you next time. Bye, later. Ephes Zero Ephes 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 Echad One Echad 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 Achat One Achat 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 Shnaim Two Shnaim 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 Shtaim Two Shtaim 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 Shlosha Three Shlosha 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 Shalosh Three Shalosh 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 Arbaa Four Arbaa 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 Arba Four Arba 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 Hamisha Five Hamisha 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 Hamesh Five Hamesh 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 Shisha Six Shisha 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 Shesh Six Shesh 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 Shiv Ah Seven Shiv Ah Shiv Ah Shiv Ah Sheva 
seven. Sheva. 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 Shmona. Eight. Shmona. 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 Shmone. Eight. Shmone. 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 Tish a. Nine. Tish a. Tish a. Tish a. Teisha. Nine. Teisha. 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 Hamisha Hamish Shiv Ah Sheva Shlosha Shalosh Ephes Ephes Tish A Teisha Schneim Steim Shisha Shesh Arbaa Arba Shmona Shmone Echad Achat Oh, oh, I didn't see you there. Hello, welcome to Hebrew Weekly Words with me, Yara. <laughs> and uh, today's theme is, oh, in your wallet. Uh, that's gonna be a short one. So, uh, wallet in Hebrew is arnak, arnak. Here is my arnak. And okay, let's see uh, what is the first word. רישיון נהיגה, driver's license. קיבלתי את רישיון הנהיגה שלי כשהייתי בת 17. I got my driver's license when I was 17 years old. כרטיס אשראי, credit card. הגזמתי עם הקניות החודש, אז גזרו לי את כרטיס האשראי. I went too far with the shopping this month, so they had to cut my credit card. קופון, קופון. I'm not very good at collecting them, but I know people that live off coupons. Like, they only buy with coupons. יש לי קופונים בשווי אלף שקלים. I have a thousand shekel worth of coupons. מזומן, cash. 
Uh, the full term is כסף מזומן, cash money. סליחה, אנחנו מקבלים רק כסף מזומן. I'm sorry, we only accept cash. כרטיס ביקור, business card. כרטיס ביקור, business card, the card you give to someone you meet, uh, it can be uh, a person's card, it can be a business, business card. אפשר לקבל את כרטיס הביקור שלכם בבקשה? Can I have your business card, please? Why, of course, here is my business card. And this is the end. We were talking about things that you have in your wallet. Arnak. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the website and we'll see you next week. Bye. Oh, now I'm a member. Yeah, and it's for life. <laughs>שלום, נעים להכיר אותך. Hello, it's nice to meet you. שלום, נעים להכיר אותך. Hello, it's nice to meet you. You say this when you're talking to a male. Otherwise, it's שלום, נעים להכיר אותך. אני מישראל. I'm from Israel. אני מישראל. I'm from Israel. You can obviously change that. I'm from Italy would be אני מאיטליה. I'm from America will be אני מאמריקה. אני גרה בירושלים. I live in Jerusalem. אני גרה בירושלים. I live in Jerusalem. I said the female form. The male form would be אני גר בירושלים. This verb, אני גרה, גר, it doesn't mean to live, like to exist. but to live in a place. So, אני גרה בירושלים. אני לומדת עברית כבר שנה. I've been learning Hebrew for a year. אני לומדת עברית כבר שנה. I've been learning Hebrew for a year. For a male it would be, אני לומד עברית כבר שנה. אני בת 27. I'm 27 years old. אני בת 27. I'm 27 years old. For a male, אני בן 27. אני מורה. I'm a teacher. אני מורה. I'm a teacher. Or for a male, אני מורה. You obviously don't have to say that if you're not a teacher. אחד התחביבים שלי הוא קריאה. One of my hobbies is reading. אחד התחביבים שלי הוא קריאה. One of my hobbies is reading. This sentence stays the same for male and for female speaker. אני נהנית להאזין למוזיקה. I enjoy listening to music. אני נהנית להאזין למוזיקה. I enjoy listening to music. For male speaker, אני נהנה להאזין למוזיקה. גדלתי בתל אביב. I grew up in Tel Aviv. גדלתי בתל אביב. I grew up in Tel Aviv. This sentence stays the same for a male and for a female speaker. Obviously, if you grew up somewhere else, you can also say, גדלתי בניו יורק, I grew up in New York, or גדלתי בפריז, I grew up in Paris. Okay, so these were 10 lines you need for introducing yourself in Hebrew. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. One of my hobbies is really... Hi everyone, welcome to Hebrew Top Words. My name is Yara and today we're going to learn 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. Okay, are you ready? Let's start. אני אדבר עברית ברמת שפת אם תוך שלוש שנים. I'll speak Hebrew in a native level in three years. 
אני אדבר עברית ברמת שפת אם תוך שלוש שנים. I'll speak Hebrew in a native level in three years. You think you can? Well, prove it. Start now. אני יכולה לצפות בסרטים בעברית ללא כתוביות. I can watch movies in Hebrew without subtitles. אני יכולה לצפות בסרטים בעברית ללא כתוביות. I can watch movies in Hebrew without subtitles. There actually are a lot of good movies done in Israel in the last, like, 10 years. Obviously more, but if you want to, you know, be updated. A uh, few of my favorite are Jellyfish, which is amazingly good, I think. And another one who was actually nominated for the Academy Awards uh, called Vals im Bashir, Waltz with Bashir, I think. It's a really good movie. אני יכולה לשנן בערך 50 מילים חדשות בעברית ביום. I can memorize around 50 new Hebrew words a day. אני יכולה לשנן בערך 50 מילים חדשות בעברית ביום. I can memorize around 50 new Hebrew words a day. That's crazy, can you? You say that to me and I will be amazed. Just saying. אני לומדת עברית כבר עשר שנים. I've been learning Hebrew for 10 years. אני לומדת עברית כבר עשר שנים. I've been learning Hebrew for 10 years. Well, that would only amaze me if you don't speak Hebrew at this point, because learning a language for 10 years and not being able to speak it, well, that is amazing. אני לומדת עברית לגמרי לבד. I'm learning Hebrew all by myself. אני לומדת עברית לגמרי לבד. I'm learning Hebrew all by myself. That is impressive. How do you do that? With HebrewPod101.com? Well, in Israel, when we're impressed, we have this sound that we make. <laughs> it goes... Psh. Okay, so this is what you say when you're impressed. All by yourself? Psh. I am amazed. You know what? Amazed. Hevanti et kol ma she'amart. I understood everything you said. <laughs> That's a funny one. הבנתי את כל מה שאמרת. I understood everything you said. I hope you understand everything I say. Otherwise, I'm just sitting here talking to myself. But you know what? Props to you. חוץ מעברית, אני יכולה לדבר גם כמה שפות אחרות. Apart from Hebrew, I can speak a few other languages as well. Well, that's just bragging. חוץ מעברית, אני יכולה לדבר גם כמה שפות אחרות. Apart from Hebrew, I can speak a few other languages as well. Well, you don't need to brag, okay? I only have two. How many languages can you speak? Leave a comment below. Make us jealous. לקח לי רק שנה אחת על מנת לדבר בשטף. It took me only one year to become fluent. לקח לי רק שנה אחת על מנת לדבר בשטף. It took me only one year to become fluent. Well, I am amazed by that because... As you probably already know, Hebrew is a difficult language to learn, but I think it's doable. עברית היא כיפית וקלה ללמידה. Hebrew is fun and easy to learn. עברית היא כיפית וקלה ללמידה. Hebrew is fun and easy to learn. I would be happy if you think that. <laughs> yeah, do you agree? Is Hebrew fun and easy to learn? Hope it is. תודה, אבל זו לא שפת האם שלי, למען האמת. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker, actually. תודה, אבל זו לא שפת האם שלי, למען האמת. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker, actually. You're not a native speaker? Pfft, then, pfft, you're really good. One that would really amaze me would be, למדתי את כל זה אתמול. I learned all of that yesterday. Pfft. Must have been a busy day. Okay, thank you so much for watching 10 Phrases to Amaze Native Speakers. Now go out there and amaze some native speakers. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye! Hello everybody, Edith here, welcome to Hebrew Top Words, and today we are going to talk about must-know particles for Hebrew learners, prepositions and conjunctions. Let's do it. El, to, 
אל. 2. אני הולך אל חברה שלי ברגל. I'm walking to my friend. So we use אל as to, but we use it usually when you're going to see people um, or people's houses and not for like just random places like school or the post office. So when we use a particular name, we can use either אל or לה. Um, which is what we'll also use for um, places. Me. From. Me. From. אני חוזר מירושלים מחר בבוקר. I'm coming back from Jerusalem tomorrow morning. So me is much more simple. It has no variations. And it's just always when you use from, you use me. So here is another example, and I want you to please notice that sometimes when we say me, it kind of sounds like me, but the meaning is the same. For instance, אני מתל אביב. I am from Tel Aviv. עם, with, עם, with. הילד הולך עם הכלב לטייל. The child is walking with the dog. אם in the letter אין always means with. Um, oftentimes, even Hebrew speakers sometimes confuse אם with אין, with the letter אין, which is with, with אם in an אלף, which means if. Um, so please do your best not to get confused. I'll give you another example for אם with. אני הולכת עם החבר שלי לסרט. I am going with my boyfriend to a movie. בלי. Without. בלי. Without. אני לא יכולה לרקוד בלי הנעליים שלי. I can't dance without my shoes. So the word בלי always means without. I can give you a very common example of the usage of the word בלי, which is kind of um, uh, a saying. ללכת עם להרגיש בלי. That means going with and feeling without. It has many uses and not only for commercials. <laughs> v. And. V. And. חבריי הטובים הם דוד ואבנר. My best friends are דוד and אבנר. V is extremely common, probably the most common of all the prepositions. And I remember I asked a friend once, how does Hebrew sound to them? Like, if he doesn't understand Hebrew and, I'm, and I talk Hebrew, what does, he, what does it sound like? And he said it sounds a lot like just v v v v v v So it's very common. Ki. Because. Ki. Because. Ha'akhbar barach ki hu ra'a et hechatul. The mouse ran away because it saw the cat. Ki is a very short word to say because, and it's very convenient. Um, so I hope you're going to use it a lot. And also it sounds a little bit like the word ki, spelled kuf yud alef. But kuf yud alef means vomit. Don't confuse the two. בשביל, for, בשביל, for. הפרח הזה בשביל אמא שלי. This flower is for my mom. That's so cute. או, oh. or, או, oh. or. אפשר לטוס לרומא או למילאנו. I can fly to Rome or Milan. או 
and or are very similar, so I don't see any excuse to forget it. Aval, but, aval, but. אני רוצה לאכול, אבל לא משהו מטוגן. I want to eat, but not anything fried. Of course I want to eat something fried. <laughs> um, so the word aval means but. Um, again, extremely common. And it spells the same as some other words, but it doesn't sound the same. So when you're talking, you're not going to get confused. So aval is spelled the same way as the word for morning, which is kind of bad, but it doesn't, you don't say it the same way. Aval or evel, it's not the same, so you're not going to get confused when you're having a conversation. Ad, until, ad, until. Ani elmad, ad shish. I will study until six. Ad means until or up to. Um, kind of the same meaning. Okay, everybody, that's it. Those were must-know particles in Hebrew. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything that I forgot, if there's any particle that you want to know what it is. And yeah, don't forget to check out HebrewPod 101 for more content, more Hebrew. Like up this video, share it with your friends, and I'll see you next time. Bye! In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Hebrew. Hi everybody, my name is Edith. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you've learned the new words and phrases, Stick around and review what you've learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at HebrewPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is... Tzchok. Laugh. Tzchok. Tzchok. Laugh. Litzchok mit muna. Laugh at a picture. Litzchok mit muna. Taim. Delicious. Ta'im. Ta'im. Delicious. Ze nir'e ta'im. It looks delicious. Ze nir'e ta'im. Ma'im. Water. Maim. Maim. Water. Haisha shota maim. The woman is drinking water. Haisha shota maim. Te. 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 Haisha shota te. The woman is drinking tea. Haisha shota te. Café. Coffee. Café. 
Café. Coffee. Coscafé. Cup of coffee. Cos café. Beer. 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 Be ra. Beer. Bakbuk beer. Bottle of beer. Bakbuk beer. Yain. Wine. Yain. Yain. Wine. Yain nimzag letocha kos. Wine is being poured into the glass. Yain nimzag letoch hakos. Basar bakar. Beef. Basar bakar. Basar bakar. Beef. Bakar lamana ha'ikarit. Beef for the main course. Bakar lamana ha'ikarit. Of. Chicken. Of. Of. Chicken. Ha'ish chotech of. The man is cutting chicken. Ha'ish chotech of. Besar chazir. Pork. Besar chazir. Besar Chazir. Pork. Basar lavan hu basar chazir. Pork is the meat from a pig. Basar lavan hu basar chazir. Dag. Fish. Dag. Dag. Fish. Japanim ochlim harbe dagim. Japanese people eat a lot of fish. Japanim ochlim harbe dagim. Kevis. Lamb. Kevis. Kevis. Lamb. Besar kevis is a taim nora. Lamb is extremely delicious. Besar kevis is a taim nora. Rofe. Doctor. Rofe. Rofe. Doctor. Ani Rofe. I am a doctor. Ani Rofe. Shoter. Police officer. Shoter. Shoter. 
police officer. שוטר במדים. Police officer in uniform. שוטר במדים. מורה. Teacher. מורה. מורה. Teacher. מורה בכיתה. Teacher in a classroom. מורה בכיתה. עובד. Employee. עובד. עובד. Employee. הטבות לעובדים. Employee benefits. הטבות לעובדים. לבוא. קם. לבוא. לבוא. קם. לבוא מוקדם. קם early. לבוא מוקדם. לראות. see. לראות. לראות. see. אראה הצגה ביום ראשון. I'll see a play on Sunday. אראה הצגה ביום ראשון. להכין. make. להכין. להכין. make. השף מכין מיץ תפוזים. The chef is making orange juice. השף מכין מיץ תפוזים. השתמש. Use. השתמש. השתמש. Use. השתמשו במצלמת אינטרנט. Use a webcam. השתמשו במצלמת אינטרנט. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at hebrewpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom. Hi. Welcome to Introduction to Hebrew. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Edith. In this series, you'll learn everything you need to know to get started learning Hebrew. That's right. And we're here to help guide you through your journey. In this lesson, you'll learn the reasons why you should start learning Hebrew and how to get started. Let's begin with the most obvious question. Why learn a new language? There are countless reasons, but perhaps the biggest one of all is that it could actually change your life. Learning a new language unlocks new pathways that are off limits to you now. There are certain things that you simply cannot do without having the technical or cultural skills that come from learning a new language. Like working or living in another country. Knowing another language provides you with greater job opportunities. You have the freedom to move to another country halfway around the world and earn a living, 
or even better yet, build a career from it, instead of just being stuck in one place. Language allows you to visit or live in places that you may never have even considered going. Knowing another language simply gives you more options to choose from. And learning a new language can help you to be more open-minded and see the world from a new perspective. Language and culture go hand in hand. The world is a big place, and by broadening your understanding of other cultures, it allows you to be more empathetic and understanding of the many different ways that people live their lives. With language, you're able to see and experience more, which helps you grow as a person. Learning a new language also improves your memory. Several studies have consistently shown that those who study another language have improved memory as opposed to those who didn't. Learning another language also keeps your brain healthy by significantly delaying the onset of Alzheimer's and dementia. This difference can be as much as four to five more years of quality life. And those are just some of the reasons you should learn another language. The list just goes on and on. Now you know the benefits of studying another language, but why should you learn Hebrew in particular? Well, do you know the Bible? That was written in Hebrew. One of the best reasons for learning Hebrew is to gain access to ancient texts in their original language. The Old Testament of the Bible was written in Biblical Hebrew. By learning modern Hebrew, you can begin to understand what the original writers intended in these complex texts. These ancient words take on new meaning when you know the word in Hebrew. Speaking of history, modern Hebrew made history when it became a spoken language after 2,000 years of only being used for prayer and in religious texts. That's right, Hebrew is unique in this way. In the late 1800s and the early 1900s, a man called Eliezer ben Yehuda worked hard to revive Hebrew as a spoken language. By learning Hebrew, you can be a part of this unique movement of history. Today, Israel is a leader in the area of high-tech industry. And this means there are many jobs and business opportunities in tech in Israel. Although most Israelis speak English, learning Hebrew will help you communicate in an effective way with Israelis. There are many times knowing the language and culture of Israel will give you an advantage when making a business deal or finding work in Israel. Another reason to learn Hebrew is to better understand politics in the region. There is quite a lot going on in the Middle East right now. Learning Hebrew will help you understand Israeli politics and perspective. You'll be able to read Israeli newspapers and watch Israeli news and learn about this intense region in a new way. There are so many reasons to learn Hebrew. Okay then. We've talked about why you should start learning a language and why you should start learning Hebrew, but how should they get started, Edith? Well, it's as simple as learning your first word in Hebrew and building up from there. The good news is that you already know some Hebrew. Hallelujah, chutzpah, chumus. These are words that have made their way into English, but the reverse is also true. Many English words have also made their way into Hebrew. In fact, for many modern technologies, like telephone or television, the word most often used in Hebrew is derived from English. Telephone, televisia, autobus. So there are many words you already know in Hebrew. Let's teach you something that you might not know, but is very useful. Toda. It means thank you in Hebrew. That's a useful phrase. Can you tell us more about these characters, though? Sure. In Hebrew, you use the Hebrew alphabet. Once you learn the letters and their sounds, it's actually pretty easy to read. Most letters in Hebrew represent a consonant sound, but we also use a system of dots to represent vowels. These vowel dots are called nikud. When you're learning to read, you read texts with the vowel dots. As you get better, you read the letters without the dots. Isn't that a little confusing? No, it's actually easier than it looks. Hebrew is a systematic language, and the vowel sounds will be clear from the structure of the word. This is toda with the vowel dots, toda. And this is toda without the vowel dots, toda. You'll learn the Hebrew writing system eventually, but for now, let's put up some romanization to help you get started. The romanization will make it easier for you to learn Hebrew until you learn to read the letters yourself. That certainly makes things much easier to learn. Well, okay then. Now listen and repeat after eat it. Toda. Now you try. Toda. Your turn again. Toda. Well done. Now you know how to say thank you in Hebrew. 
We've covered a lot of things already, so why don't we wrap up the first lesson and recap what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that studying another language has many benefits, such as providing new job and business opportunities. The Hebrew language has a unique history, and learning Hebrew will open up a new aspect of history for you. And to say thank you in Hebrew, it's... Toda. In the next lesson, we're going to demystify Hebrew pronunciation by taking a look at the sounds of Hebrew. So be sure to watch the next video. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Bye. Hi everyone, shalom. My name is Yara and this is Hebrew Weekly Words. So, uh, I actually don't know what this week's theme is, so let's find out together. This week's theme is... Hobbies. Hobbies. Tachbivim. What are your hobbies? Lesachek shachmat. To play chess. When I was in elementary school, we actually had a checkmate lesson. Chess lesson. Kshani aiti bebeta sefer esodi, hayali shiur shachmat. Yeah. That didn't go very well for me. Never won. Le'esof gulim. To collect stamps. Le'esof gulim. My father had a stamp collection. Abba sheli asaf gulim. And then he gave me the uh, collection and I obviously lost it. So. Liglosh <laughs> internet To surf the net. Is that a hobby? It's more like a, a, a way of life, I'd say. You surf the net too much. אתה גולש באינטרנט יותר מדי. לשחק פוקר. To play poker. Okay, uh, the next hobby is to play poker. And this is a common hobby in Israel. I went over to a friend of mine to play poker. הלכתי לחבר שלי לשחק פוקר. I actually never played poker. I don't even know how to do that. צילום. Photography. I always wanted to take a photography class. תמיד רציתי ללכת לחוג צילום. I uh, never did that, so kind of lazy. And this is the end. So thank you so much for watching Hebrew Weekly Words. Uh, don't forget to check our site, and I'll see you next week. Bye, Litraot. I feel I lost my personality. Hello, everybody. Edith here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. Today we are going to talk about top lines you'll need to reject a date. Let's start. Lotoda. No thanks. Even though that's very proper, it's also a little bit mean. Um, but I guess it kind of depends on the situation, right? Yeshli Chavel. I have a boyfriend. Unfortunately, the existence of another man is the only thing that will make another man leave you alone. Aniloma Unyan. I'm not interested. Harsh, but sometimes you gotta be harsh. It's okay. Ani lo mechapes kesha. I am not looking for a relationship. Fair enough, yeah. Um, if you're gonna say that as a female, you would say, Ani lo mechapeset kesha. Bidiuk nifradati michavera sheli. I just broke up with my girlfriend. Um, yeah, actually, that's a very valid thing to say. I guess a lot of people, after a breakup, they're really not in the mood to start something new. And, yeah, I respect that. I'm not attracted to guys. That's kind of a... I mean, it could be true, but sometimes that will turn on people even more, which, uh, I guess is, um, weird. <laughs> Whatever. And if you are a man and you're not attracted to girls, then you would say, Anilonim shach lenashim. I'm not attracted to women. Anilome daberet ivrit. I don't speak Hebrew. Sometimes that helps. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> um, and also, I mean, if you're watching this video, your Hebrew is probably okay. So, I don't know. It's, it's an oxymoron. Just I don't know how you would use that. Okay, everybody, that's it. Let me know in the comments below how would you reject a date 
or if you've ever been rejected uh, in one of these ways. Don't forget to check out HebrewPod101.com for more Hebrew, more content. Like up this video, share it with your friends, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye, later -bye. Hi everybody, Edith here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words and today we are going to talk about top 10 most popular train or bus stations in Israel. Let's start. Hatachana HaMerkazit Yerushalayim Jerusalem Central Station Tamid Lachutz Batachana HaMerkazit BeYerushalayim It's always busy at Jerusalem Central Station. Luckily, I have never been. שדה התעופה בן גוריון בן גוריון איירפורט שדה התעופה בן גוריון הוא הגדול והחשוב בישראל. בן גוריון איירפורט is the largest main airport in Israel. It is also named after the first prime minister of Israel, דוד בן גוריון. So, בן גוריון איירפורט is supposedly in Tel Aviv, but it's not really, it's close. And it's in a city called Lod. Ha-Universita. University. Ha-Studentim yirdu b'tachanat ha-Universita. The students got off at the university station. Uh, that's a very important train station in Tel Aviv. And one that was actually the closest to my house. So it is called the university station because it's just right next to Tel Aviv University. Um, so it makes, makes it convenient for students from all over the country to get there. Ha'ir Ha'atika, Old City. Anashim mikol hadatot mitgorerim ba'ir Ha'atika. People from all religions live in the Old City. When we say the Old City, we mean the Old City of Jerusalem, which is right down in the center of um, Jerusalem metropolitan, I guess, today. Um, that's the old city that existed for thousands of years. Shuk Machne Yehuda, Mahane Yehuda Market. Shuk Machne Yehuda, who kmo shnei mekomot shonim b'meshech hayom v'halayla. Mahne Yehuda Market is like two different places during the day and during the night. It's actually very true. Like during the day, it's just a market. Um, with, uh, you know, people selling vegetables and fish and meat and whatever. And at night time, there are many nice restaurants there and bars and a lot of young people hang out. So it's not just for like old grannies to go shopping for vegetables for soup, but it's also like a very hip kind of an area for young people to hang out. That's kind of cool. Rakevet Savidor Merkaz. Savidor Railway Station. אנחנו צריכים להחליף רכבת בסבידור מרכז. We need to change trains at סבידור מרכז station. So yes, usually this is the station when you usually have to change trains when you're going from the north part of Israel to the south. Um, it will happen in Tel Aviv, which is the center, and that will be the station that you will change it in. מרכזית חוף הכרמל Carmel Beach Central Bus Station. Af pam lo haiti batachana merkazit chofa karmel. I have never been to Carmel Beach Central Bus Station. I actually have many, many times. Uh, my boyfriend used to live long, long, long time ago. I had a boyfriend in Haifa, and I used to go there all the time. Hashalom. Azrieli. Hashalom. Azrieli. אחר הצהריים יש המון חיילים באזור השלום עזריאלי. In the afternoons there are a lot of soldiers around השלום עזריאלי area. This is again a very big uh, train station in Tel Aviv, and it's right next to a big shopping mall called עזריאלי, and that shopping mall is very close to a military base. תחנת הרכבת בית יהושע, בית יהושע טריין סטיישן. אני תמיד עולה בתחנת הרכבת בית יהושע. 
I always take the train from Beit Yehoshua. I have to admit I don't know where that is. I think it's up north. I don't know. Shar Yafo, Jaffa Gate. שבוע שעבר הלכנו לאכול חומוס במסעדה ליד שער יפו. Last week we ate hummus at a restaurant near Jaffa Gate. I like hummus. Okay, everybody, that's it. Those were top 10 popular train and bus stations in Israel. Not the most sexy of subject, but please let me know in the comments below what you think about it. And how do the train and bus stations look like in your country? Don't forget to like up this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to HebrewPod101.com for more Hebrew and more content. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye! In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Hebrew. Hi everybody, my name is Edith. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you've learned the new words and phrases, Stick around and review what you've learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at HebrewPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is Shalom. Hello. Shalom. Shalom. Hello. He omeret shalom. She is saying hello. He omeret shalom. Slicha. Excuse me. Slicha. Slicha. Excuse me. Slicha. Raita et akelev sheli? Excuse me. Have you seen my dog? Slicha. Raita et akelev sheli? Animit staeret. I'm sorry. אני מצטערת. אני מצטערת. I'm sorry. אני מצטערת. הוא לא נמצא כאן כרגע. I'm sorry. He is not here right now. אני מצטערת. הוא לא נמצא כאן כרגע. לילה טוב. Good night. לילה טוב. לילה טוב. Good night. כשאת הולכת לישון, את יכולה להגיד לי לילה טוב. When you go to sleep, you can tell me good night. כשאת הולכת לישון, את יכולה להגיד לי לילה טוב. נעים מאוד. Nice to meet you. נעים מאוד. נעים מאוד. Nice to meet you. נעים מאוד להכיר אותך, אדוני. Nice to meet you, sir. נעים מאוד להכיר אותך, אדוני. מה שלומך? How are you? מה שלומך? 
Ma Shlomcha. How are you? Shalom. Ma Shlomcha. Hello. How are you? Shalom. Ma Shlomcha. Ken. Yes. Ken. Ken. Yes. Ken. An Israelit. Yes. I'm Israeli. Ken. An Israelit. Lo. No. Lo. Lo. No. Oi, lo. Hish artima show ala kiraim. Oh, no. I left something on the stove. Oi, lo. Hish arti mashehu al hakiraim. Toda. Thank you. Toda. To da. Thank you. Toda la Ezra. Thank you for your help. Toda al ha Ezra. Ani. I am Ani A Ni I'm Ani Lisa I am Lisa Ani Lisa Shalom Goodbye. Shalom. Shalom. Goodbye. Shalom. Lehitraot bekarov. Goodbye. See you soon. Shalom. Lehitraot bekarov. Ra. Bad. Ra. Ra. Bad. Haish ra. The man is bad. Haish ra. Tov. Good. Tov. Tov. Good. He ben adam tov. She is a good person. He ben adam tov. Yafe. Pretty. Yafe. Yafe. Pretty. At yafame od. You are very pretty. At yafa me od. Mechoar. Ugly. Mechoar. Me. Cho. Ar. Ugly. Hakelev hazem mechoar me od. That is a very ugly dog. 
הכלב הזה מכוער מאוד. קל. איזי. קל. קל. איזי. המבחן היה קל. The test was easy. המבחן היה קל. קשה. Difficult. קשה. קשה. Difficult. אנגלית היא שפה קשה. English is a difficult language. אנגלית היא שפה קשה. קרוב. Near. קרוב. קרוב. Near. אני גרה קרוב לאוניברסיטה. I live near the university. אני גרה קרוב לאוניברסיטה. רחוק. Far. רחוק. רחוק. far התחנה נמצאת רחוק מכאן The station is far from here התחנה נמצאת רחוק מכאן קטן small קטן ק tan small המכונית קטנה אבל היא עוצמתית מאוד The car is small but it's very powerful המכונית קטנה אבל היא עוצמתית מאוד Well done In this lesson you expanded your vocabulary and learn 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at hebrewpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom. Hi, everyone. Shalom. Welcome to Hebrew Weekly Word. Uh, my name is Yara, and this week's theme is... Fruits. Perot, a uh, single is pri. So, fruits, exciting. Yeah. Tapuach, apple. Green apples are my favorite. Tapuchim irukim em tapuchim ahuvim alai. Avatiach, watermelon. Avatiach, a uh, plural is avatichim. Mm. Biyapan, yesh avatichim irubaim. Japan has square watermelons. It's true. Google it. Te'ena. Fig. I actually love figs. Uh, I have a friend who can't eat them because she says that their insides look like worms. Sorry, that's a picture you won't be able to get out of your head. Lesavta sheli haya etz te'ena. My grandmother had a fig tree. Mishmesh, apricot. The word is mishmesh, but Israelis usually say mishmish. Kaniti bashuk kilo mishmishim. I bought one kilo of apricots in the market. Duvdevan, cherry. This event was the cherry on my cream. And this is the end. So thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Hebrew Weekly Words. We talked about fruits, perot. So don't forget to check our website and see you next week. Bye.
Welcome to Introduction to Hebrew. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Edith. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hebrew writing. In Hebrew, we use two different scripts, one for print and one for handwriting. Most people learn the printed script first, and even learn to write their letters this way. These are called otiot dfus. Printed letters are rarely used for handwriting other than in elementary school. So most people learn script letters very quickly after learning the printed letters. Script letters are called otiot ktav. One thing you don't have to worry about in Hebrew is capital letters. There's only one case for letters in Hebrew. Here's some general information about Hebrew letters. Hebrew is read right to left, the opposite of English. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, and they are all consonants. You may be thinking, but what about vowels, right? These dots are placed underneath or next to the letter in order to let you know what vowel comes after the consonant. Here is the word for dog, kelev, without nikud. And here it is with nikud. Let's do the same with the word for boy, yeled. Without nikud, it's... And with nikud, it looks like this. Those are both with e vowels. Let's look at one with some other vowels. How about the word for mountains, harim? Here it is with nikud. This has both an a vowel and an e vowel. Although this is very useful when you're learning Hebrew, don't get used to it. Most things in Hebrew are written without the vowel dots. The reason we usually don't use nikud when writing Hebrew is that we don't really need it. That's right. Hebrew is very systematic and structured. It's very methodical and logical. Words are created according to patterns, and this helps you figure out what vowels are used in the words. You already know the word for dog, which is kelev. Next time you see this word, you don't need to see the vowels because you know they are there. You'll have to rely on what you've learned. There are some letters in Hebrew that will indicate what vowels are present. These letters are technically consonants, but can behave like vowels. Aleph, Hey, Vav, Yud, Ein. For example, the letter Hey often ends a word with an A or an E sound, like in the words Laila for night and Bonne, the masculine singular form for build. There are five letters that change form when they're at the end of a word, but they're still the same letter. Chaf, chaf sofit. Mem, mem sofit. Nun, nun sofit. Pe, pe sofit. Tzadi, tzadi sofit. Here is an example of how this works. The letter mem looks like this in the beginning or middle of the word. Mem, like in the word for stage, bama. When it comes in the end, it looks like this, mem, like in the word for the sea, yam. Three letters can have two different sounds depending on whether they are in a stressed position or not. Bet is both b and v. In the word bama, or stage, it makes a b sound, and in the word for dog, or kelev, it makes a v sound. Chaf is both k and ch. For this example, we can use the word for dog again. In kelev, this letter makes a k sound. And in the word for correct, which is nchon, it makes a ch sound. This letter also has a special end form that looks like this. When it comes at the end of the word, like chiyuch, the word for smile, it's always pronounced ch. Pe is both p and f. In the word Papar, or butterfly, this letter is pronounced with a p sound. In the word for book, or sefer, it's pronounced with a f sound. There are also six pairs of letters that at one point in history had different sounds, but today sound very similar. Aleph and Ein, Bet and Vav, Chet and Chaf, Tet and Taf, Kaf and Kuf, Samech and Sin. For example, the words telephone, meaning telephone, 
and tshuva, meaning answer, begin with two different letters of the alphabet. But you would never know that unless you saw them written. One interesting aspect of the Hebrew alphabet is the letters also represent numbers. Aleph represents the number one. Bet represents the number two, and so on. When you get to the number ten, or Yud, we add the first nine letters to it to represent eleven through nineteen. The letters can be combined to create numbers into the hundreds and thousands. You can find the first ten letters used as numbers in many day-to-day -day contexts. For instance, Sunday is often referred to as Yom Aleph, or Day One. The first semester in university is called Semester Aleph. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that there are two different scripts used to write Hebrew, printed script and written script. Hebrew is written and read from right to left. All 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet are consonants. There are also vowels in Hebrew, and these are written with a dot system. Some letters in Hebrew cover two sounds, and other sounds are covered by two letters. And lastly, the Hebrew alphabet can also be used to represent numbers. If you want to learn more, check out our Learn Hebrew Writing video series. In the next lesson, you'll be entering Hebrew Boot Camp, where you'll learn useful beginner phrases to get you speaking Hebrew right away. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! Hello everyone, Edie here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. Today we're going to talk about happy words. Yay! Sameach. Happy. Sameach. Happy. Mi shetov lo vesameach kafimcha. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. So obviously there's also a Hebrew translation to this song. And I remember it from kindergarten and I didn't even know that it was in English originally. Um, I guess I found out somehow, but yeah, you know, I think they have it in like every language. Mi shetov lo vesameach kafimcha. Yefeife. Beautiful. Yefeife. Beautiful. Their apartment is absolutely beautiful. Obviously, the word yefeife, beautiful, comes from the word yefe, pretty. It's so pretty that you have to repeat the word twice. Like, is it yefe? No, it's yefeife. Lehov, to love. Lehov, to love. Ani ohev shokolad. I love chocolate and cheesecakes. This example sentence is also from like a Hebrew song for kids, and it's a very famous song about a kid who sings about all the things that he loves. And he's saying, Ani ohev shokolad veugot gvina. He loves chocolate and cheesecakes, and he loves food, and he loves his sister, and his mom, and his dad, but most of all, he loves himself. Nehedar, <laughs> great. Nehedar, great. Echa ya seret? Oi, hu aya pashut nehedar. How was the movie? Oh, it was simply wonderful. Nehedar can be great, it can be wonderful, um, it can be magnificent. And it comes from the word hadar, which means glamour. Nehedar, magnificent. Nimratz, lively. Nimratz, lively. Yesh lanu echad wa misrad, vu kol azman kol kach nimratz. We have a guy at our office, and he's always so lively. We all know that one guy, right? <laughs> Adiv, kind. Adiv, kind. It's important to be kind to one another. You know, like on the bus, if you see a pregnant lady or an older man, like, and they're standing up and you're sitting down, just stand up for them, let, have, let them have a seat. That's a very kind thing to do. Um, and it's very adiv. Matzchik. Funny. Matzchik. Funny. Oh, you're so good at this guy. 
Oh, you're gonna love that guy. He's so funny. I know that sounds like a euphemism, <laughs> but it's not. Just, you know, funny is, is funny. Um, I think some people now, nowadays, like, they use, oh, you're so funny. When they said that in Hebrew, at kazot matzchika. Like, oh, I think you're confusing. Oh, I think you're mistaken. In, like, a, a little bit of a passive-aggressive way. But I think 98% of, you know, when people use that word, it's just mean, you know, funny. Huh? Adir. Awesome. Adir. Awesome. Did you see the app that I installed? It's just awesome. So this is more of like a slang word when you say about something, Adir, it's like, ah, oh, it was great, it was awesome. Absolutely awesome. Adir. Nifla. Fantastic. Nifla. Fantastic. Achalnu kinuach nifla b'misada. We had a fantastic dessert at the restaurant. So, nifla is a, less of a slangish way of saying like the same thing, but it's a bit more, you know, kind of like upscale, a bit more respectful. Fantastic. Nifla. Lehitgalgel mitzchok. Rolling on the floor laughing. Lehitgalgel mitzchok. Rolling on the floor laughing. Hayiti bestand up at mall. I was at a stand-up comedy yesterday, and I just rolled on the floor laughing. So this phrase in English, usually people use it like online, and they write R-O-F-L, like ruffle, and it's like meaning, oh yeah, I'm, I'm like rolling on the floor laughing right now. But in Hebrew, you also kind of use it when you're actually talking to somebody face to face. It's not just like an internet kind of a... A meme phrase. It's just something that actually happens, like you're just rolling on the floor. Okay, so thank you everyone for joining me today for Hebrew Top Words. This week we talked about happy words, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please tell me your favorite happy words in Hebrew or in English in the comments below. Don't forget to like up this video and hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you, bye bye! Hi everyone, Shalom, my name is Yara and this is Hebrew Weekly Words. So, uh, I actually don't know what this week's theme is, so let's find out together. This week's theme is... Hobbies. Hobbies. Tachbivim. What are your hobbies? Lesachek shachmat. To play chess. When I was in elementary school, we actually had a checkmate lesson, chess lesson. כשאני הייתי בבית הספר היסודי, היה לי שיעור שחמט. Yeah, that didn't go very well for me. Never won. לאסוף בולים. To collect stamps. לאסוף בולים. My father had a stamp collection. אבא שלי אסף בולים. And then he gave me the uh, collection and I obviously lost it. לגלוש so. באינטרנט. To surf the net. Is that a hobby? It's more like a, a, a way of life, I'd say. You surf the net too much. אתה גולש באינטרנט יותר מדי. לשחק פוקר. To play poker. Okay, uh, the next hobby is to play poker. And this is a common hobby in Israel. I went over to a friend of mine to play poker. הלכתי לחבר שלי לשחק פוקר. I actually never played poker. I don't even know how to do that. צילום. Photography. I always wanted to take a photography class. תמיד רציתי ללכת לחוג צילום. I never did that though. Kind of lazy. And this is the end. So thank you so much for watching Hebrew Weekly Words. Uh, don't forget to check our site and I'll see you next week. Bye, Litraot. I feel I lost my personality. In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Hebrew. Hi everybody, my name is Edith. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there's a twist. 
With each new lesson in the series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you've learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at HebrewPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is Yad Hand Yad Ya d hand yad small left hand yad small zroa arm zroa Zro a arm. Shtei hazroot muramot mala. The two arms are raised. Shtei hazroot muramot mala. Kaf regel. Foot. Kaf regel. Kaf regel. Foot. Bechaf regel yesh chamesh behonot. A foot has five toes. Bechaf regel yesh chamesh behonot. Regel. Leg. Regel. Regel. Leg. Raglaim arukot. Long legs. Raglaim arukot. Etzba. Finger. Etzba. Etzba. Finger. Haetzba lechutsa el hazchuchit. The finger is pressed against the glass. Haetzba lechutsa el. Hazchuchit. Gav. Back. Gav. Gav. Back. Hagav sheli koev. My back hurts. Hagav sheli koev. Beten. Stomach. Beten. Beten. Stomach. Yeshli kev beten. I have a stomach ache. יש לי כאב בטן. חזה. צ'סט. חזה. חזה. צ'סט. יש לי כאבים בחזה. I have chest pains. יש לי כאבים בחזה. ינואר. January. 
ינואר. יא נו אר. ג'ניוארי. בינואר קר כאן מאוד. It's very cold here in January. בינואר קר כאן מאוד. פברואר. February. פברואר. פברואר. February. פברואר הוא החודש הקצר ביותר, עם 28 ימים. February is the shortest month with 28 days. פברואר הוא החודש הקצר ביותר, עם 28 ימים. מרץ 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 אפריל עכשיו, אז החודש הקודם היה מרץ. It is now April, so last month was March. אפריל עכשיו, אז החודש הקודם היה מרץ. אפריל April אפריל אפריל April גשמי אפריל מביאים פרחים במאי. April showers bring May flowers. גשמי אפריל מביאים פרחים במאי. מאי. מי. מאי. מאי. מי. ה-31 במאי הוא היום הבינלאומי נגד עישון. May 31st is World No Smoking Day. ה-31 במאי הוא היום הבינלאומי נגד עישון. יוני ג'ון יוני, יוני, ג'ון. אנחנו מתחתנים ביוני. We are getting married in June. אנחנו מתחתנים ביוני. יולי. July. Yuli. You. Li. July. Yuli nikra al shmo shel Julius Kaysar shenolad be Yuli. July is named for Julius Caesar who was born in July. Yuli nikra על שמו של יוליוס קיסר, שנולד ביולי. אוגוסט. 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 בית הספר סגור באוגוסט. The school is closed in August. Beit ha-sefer, sagur, 
באוגוסט. ספטמבר. 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 בספטמבר מתחיל הסתיו בחצי הכדור הצפוני, והאביב בחצי הכדור הדרומי. In September, falls begins in the northern hemisphere, and spring in the southern hemisphere. בספטמבר מתחיל הסתיו בחצי הכדור הצפוני, והאביב בחצי הכדור הדרומי. אוקטובר 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 ליל כל הקדושים חל ב-31 באוקטובר. Halloween falls on October 31st. Leil kol hakdoshim chal ba shloshim v'echad be-Oktober. November. 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 Chag ha-hodaya, yom chamishi, ha-esrem v'arba'a b'november. Thanksgiving, Thursday, November 24th. Chag ha-hodaya, yom chamishi, העשרים וארבעה בנובמבר. דצמבר. 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 השלושים ואחד בדצמבר הוא ערב ראש השנה. December 31st is New Year's Eve. השלושים ואחד בדצמבר הוא ערב ראש השנה. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at hebrewpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom. Hi, everyone. Shalom. Welcome to Hebrew Weekly Words. Uh, my name is Yara, and this week's theme is fruits. Perot. A uh, single is pri. So, fruits. Exciting. Yay. תפוח, apple, green apples are my favorite. תפוחים ירוקים הם התפוחים האהובים עליי. אבטיח, watermelon. אבטיח, הפלורל uh, is אבטיחים. Mm, ביפן יש אבטיחים מרובעים. Japan has square watermelons. It's true, גוגל איט. תאנה, fig. I actually love figs. Uh, I have a friend who can't eat them because she says that their insides look like worms. Sorry, that's a picture you won't be able to get out of your head. Lesavta sheli haya etz teena. My grandmother had a fig tree. Mishmesh, apricot. The word is mishmesh, but Israelis usually say mishmish. Kaniti bashuk kilo mishmishim. I bought one kilo of apricots in the market. Duvdevan, cherry. This event was the cherry on my cream. האירוע הזה היה הדובדבן שבקצפת. 
And this is the end. So thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Hebrew Weekly Words. We talked about fruits, perot. So don't forget to check our website and see you next week. Bye. Welcome to Introduction to Hebrew. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Edith. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hebrew writing. In Hebrew, we use two different scripts, one for print and one for handwriting. Most people learn the printed script first, and even learn to write their letters this way. These are called otiot dfus. Printed letters are rarely used for handwriting other than in elementary school. So most people learn script letters very quickly after learning the printed letters. Script letters are called otiot ktav. One thing you don't have to worry about in Hebrew is capital letters. There's only one case for letters in Hebrew. Here's some general information about Hebrew letters. Hebrew is read right to left, the opposite of English. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, and they are all consonants. You may be thinking, but what about vowels, right? These dots are placed underneath or next to the letter in order to let you know what vowel comes after the consonant. Here is the word for dog, kelev, without nikud. And here it is with nikud. Let's do the same with the word for boy, yeled. Without nikud, it's... And with nikud, it looks like this. Those are both with e vowels. Let's look at one with some other vowels. How about the word for mountains, harim? Here it is with nikud. This has both an a vowel and an e vowel. Although this is very useful when you're learning Hebrew, don't get used to it. Most things in Hebrew are written without the vowel dots. The reason we usually don't use nikud when writing Hebrew is that we don't really need it. That's right. Hebrew is very systematic and structured. It's very methodical and logical. Words are created according to patterns, and this helps you figure out what vowels are used in the words. You already know the word for dog, which is kelev. Next time you see this word, you don't need to see the vowels because you know they are there. You'll have to rely on what you've learned. There are some letters in Hebrew that will indicate what vowels are present. These letters are technically consonants, but can behave like vowels. Aleph, Hey, Vav, Yud, Ein. For example, the letter Hey often ends a word with an A or an E sound, like in the words Laila for night and Bonet, the masculine singular form for build. There are five letters that change form when they're at the end of a word, but they're still the same letter. Chaf, chaf sofit, mem, mem sofit, nun, nun sofit, pe, pe sofit, tzadi, tzadi sofit. Here is an example of how this works. The letter mem looks like this in the beginning or middle of the word, mem, like in the word for stage, bama. When it comes in the end, it looks like this, mem, like in the word for the sea, yam. Three letters can have two different sounds depending on whether they are in a stressed position or not. Bet is both b and v. In the word bama, or stage, it makes a b sound, and in the word for dog, or kelev, it makes a v sound. Chaf is both k and ch. For this example, we can use the word for dog again. In kelev, this letter makes a k sound. And in the word for correct, which is nchon, it makes a ch sound. This letter also has a special end form that looks like this. When it comes at the end of the word, like chiyuch, the word for smile, it's always pronounced ch. Pe is both p and f. In the word Papa, or butterfly, this letter is pronounced with a p sound. In the word for book, or sefer, 
It's pronounced with a f sound. There are also six pairs of letters that at one point in history had different sounds, but today sound very similar. Aleph and Ein, Bet and Vav, Chet and Chaf, Tet and Taf, Kaf and Kuf, Samech and Sin. For example, the words telephone, meaning telephone, and chuva, meaning answer, begin with two different letters of the alphabet. But you would never know that unless you saw them written. One interesting aspect of the Hebrew alphabet is the letters also represent numbers. Aleph represents the number one. Bet represents the number two, and so on. When you get to the number 10, or Yud, we add the first nine letters to it to represent 11 through 19. The letters can be combined to create numbers into the hundreds and thousands. You can find the first 10 letters used as numbers in many day-to-day -day contexts. For instance, Sunday is often referred to as Yom Aleph, or Day One. The first semester in university is called Semester Aleph. Okay. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that there are two different scripts used to write Hebrew, printed script and written script. Hebrew is written in red from right to left. All 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet are consonants. There are also vowels in Hebrew, and these are written with a dot system. Some letters in Hebrew cover two sounds, and other sounds are covered by two letters. And lastly, the Hebrew alphabet can also be used to represent numbers. If you want to learn more, check out our Learn Hebrew Writing video series. In the next lesson, you'll be entering Hebrew Boot Camp, where you'll learn useful beginner phrases to get you speaking Hebrew right away. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Bye. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Hebrew listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? סלח לי, הייתי רוצה לראות את הספר שעל המדף ההוא. איזה ספר תרצי? זה בנושא מכוניות. רגע אחד בבקשה. זה? כן, בדיוק. בבקשה. איזה ספר האישה מעוניינת לראות? בחנות הספרים, אישה שואלת משהו את המוכר. איזה ספר האישה מעוניינת לראות? סלח לי, הייתי רוצה לראות את הספר שעל המדף ההוא. איזה ספר תרצי? זה בנושא מכוניות. רגע אחד בבקשה. זה? כן, בדיוק. בבקשה. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Love these lessons? Want more? You'll find the rest of the Hebrew Alphabet Made Easy lessons on HebrewPod101.com. So sign up for your free lifetime account and unlock the full course in seconds. You also get audio and video lessons that get you speaking from your very first lesson and teach you real conversations. You'll get PDF lesson notes, cheat sheets, study tools, and much more. Click the link in the description below and sign up for your free lifetime account. Hi everyone, welcome to Hebrew Weekly Words. My name is Yara and today we're gonna to talk about the weather. The weather in Israel is mostly really hot, but for the rare occasions it's not. Uh, let's learn how to say that. Bahir. Clear sky. Bahir actually means bright, but we use it to describe a sunny day uh, with no clouds.
יום בהיר. מחר יהיה בהיר, אולי נעשה פיקניק. Tomorrow the sky will be clear, maybe we'll have a picnic. גשם, rain. Uh, when you want to say it's raining outside, you say יורד גשם, which literally means rain is coming down. In Israel it only rains during the winter, and even then uh, not that much. מחר ירד גשם, אז אולי נבטל את הפיקניק. Tomorrow it's going to rain, so maybe we'll cancel the picnic. לח, humid. So לח is humid, לחות is humidity. There is one sentence you hear in the Israeli summer all the time. That's like the, the one sentence people keep saying to each other all the time during the summer. And the sentence is, זה לא החום, זו הלחות. Which means it's not the heat, it's the humidity that makes the Israeli summer so horrible in an elevator conversation. It's hot today, eh? Oh, it's not the heat, it's the humidity. And then everyone goes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sheleg, snow. It doesn't snow a lot in Israel. During the winter, there's one mountain who gets covered in snow. And this is where Israelis go to ski. It's pretty tiny. I don't think it matches up to European standards. But it's ours and we love it. מחר אני נוסעת לחרמון לבנות אי שלג. Tomorrow I'm going to Mount Hermon to build a snowman. Do you want to build a snowman? שמש, sun. A heat stroke in Hebrew is מכת שמש. מכת שמש, it's... Something like sun punch. And that's exactly how you feel after spending a whole day on the beach. Like the sun just punched you in the face. תראו, השמש יצאה. אולי בכל זאת נעשה פיקניק? Look, the sun came out. Maybe we'll have the picnic after all. Okay, so that's it for today. We're talking about the weather. Thank you so much for watching. And what's the weather like in your country now? Tell us in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the site. See you next week. Bye. Okay. 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 <laughs> Sun punch. I'm having a picnic. Hi, everybody. I'm Edith from HebrewPod101.com. Do you know how to say bye in Hebrew? In this lesson, you will learn three parting expressions in Hebrew. Let's start with the easiest one. Lehitraot. Lehitraot. This means goodbye in Hebrew. You can use this on any occasion with anyone in Hebrew. If you want to say bye at night or in the evening, there is a different phrase you should use. Erev tov. Erev tov. This means good evening in Hebrew. The first word, Erev, means evening. And the next word, Tov, means good in Hebrew. If you know you're going to see the person again, here's a phrase for you. Deber iti. Deber iti. This literally means talk with me in Hebrew. You can use this to mean see you later. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what you've learned. Listen to the expressions and repeat after me. Goodbye. להתראות. להתראות. Good evening. ערב טוב. ערב טוב. See you later. Deberity.
דבר איתי. Well done! Here's a fun fact. The other common way to say goodbye in Hebrew is by using shalom. This word means both bye and take care. Give a slight wave and a loud shalom and you'll be just like one of the locals. You just learned how to say bye in three different ways in Hebrew. And don't forget, you can learn Hebrew twice as fast with your free PDF lessons. Just click on the link in the description to download them. See you soon! The Beriti! In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Hebrew. Hi everybody, my name is Edith. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you've learned the new words and phrases, Stick around and review what you've learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at HebrewPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is... Hayom. Today. היום, היום, today, היום בשש ורבע, today at 6.15, היום בשש ורבע, אתמול, yesterday, אתמול. אתמול. Yesterday. לקחתי אתמול יום חופש. I took a day off yesterday. לקחתי אתמול יום חופש. מחר. Tomorrow. Machar. Machar. Tomorrow. Nitraya Machar. See you tomorrow. Nitraya Machar. Shavua. Week. Shavua. Shavua. Week. Beshavua yesh shivaya mim. There are seven days in a week. Beshavua yesh shivaya mim. ימים. שנה. year. שנה. שנה. year. בשנה יש 12 חודשים. There are 12 months in a year. בשנה יש שנים עשר חודשים. שנייה. Second. שנייה. שנייה. Second. ישנן שישים שניות בדקה. There are 60 seconds in a minute. ישנן 60 
שניות בדקה. דקה. מינט. דקה. דקה. מינט. ישנן שישים שניות בדקה. There are sixty seconds in a minute. ישנן שישים שניות בדקה. שעה. hour. שעה. שעה. hour. ישנן שישים דקות בשעה. There are sixty minutes in an hour. ישנן שישים דקות בשעה. שעון. Clock. שעון. שעון. Clock. שעון הקיר תלוי על הקיר. The wall clock is hanging on the wall. שעון הקיר תלוי על הקיר. השעה. O'clock. השעה. השעה. O'clock. השעה שתים עשרה. It's twelve o'clock. השעה שתים עשרה. לוח שנה. Calendar. לוח שנה. לוח שנה. Calendar. לוח שנה יומי. Day calendar. לוח שנה יומי. יום שני. Monday. יום שני. יום שני. Monday. שבוע העבודה מתחיל ביום שני. The work week starts on Monday. שבוע העבודה מתחיל ביום שני. יום שלישי. Tuesday. יום שלישי. יום שלישי. Tuesday. יום שלישי, הראשון בינואר. Tuesday, January 1st. יום שלישי, הראשון בינואר. יום רביעי. Wednesday. יום רביעי. יום רביעי. Wednesday. בימי רביעי בערב אנחנו משחקים פוקר אצלי בבית. Wednesday nights we play poker at my house. בימי רביעי בערב אנחנו משחקים פוקר אצלי בבית. יום חמישי. Thursday. יום חמישי. יום חמישי. Thursday. יום חמישי 
השלושה בינואר. Thursday, January 3rd. יום חמישי, השלושה בינואר. יום שישי, Friday. יום שישי. יום שישי. Friday. כתוב את התוכניות ליום שישי על לוח השנה. Write the plans for Friday on the calendar. כתוב את התוכניות ליום שישי על לוח השנה. יום שבת. Saturday. יום שבת. יום שבת. Saturday. אין תוכניות ליום שבת. No plans for Saturday. אין תוכניות ליום שבת. יום ראשון. Sunday. יום ראשון. יום ראשון. Sunday. יום ראשון הוא יום האב. Sunday is Father's Day. יום ראשון הוא יום האב. לעשות. Do. לעשות. לה, אה, סו. Do. אני עושה שיעורי בית כל יום אחרי הלימודים. I do homework every day after school. אני עושה שיעורי בית כל יום אחרי הלימודים. ללכת. Go. ללכת. ללכת. Go. לך ישר. Go straight ahead. לך ישר. Well done. In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at hebrewpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom. שלום, אני יאנה. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's אלף בית בקלי קלות. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the אלף בית. In the last lesson, we learned the letters זין and חט. In this lesson, we will continue with the next two letters and learn another ניקוד. Are you ready? בואו נתחיל. The ninth letter of the אלף בית is תת. It has the sound of T. Let's write it. The handwriting of Tet is... This letter is a little unusual. In that you need to start from the bottom up. And in print... Tet. If you round the corners of the print version, it will be just like the handwriting one. Tov is good in Hebrew. In the masculine form. T, O, V. Tov. And in print. Tov. 
In the feminine, you write tova. And in print, tova. Now, let's move on to the 10th letter, yod, which has a y sound. It is probably the simplest letter. Yod, just like a little comma on the upper right side of the frame. And in print version, yod, almost the same, just with a little angle. Yad is hand in Hebrew. Yad, and in print, Yad. Now we've completed 10 letters of the Aleph Bet. You're almost halfway through. Can you believe it? Before finishing up, let's take a look at another Nikud. Shva. Shva has no sound. It is a silent vowel. It just keeps the original sound of the consonant. Like in Ach. Ach is a brother. Ach, an in print version. Ach. We will see more examples of schwa in the next lessons. We are ready to move beyond words and write a phrase. Ach, tov is good brother in Hebrew. The noun comes first and then the adjective. And in print, Ach, Tov. Nice job. Soon you'll be able to write whole sentences. Now it's time for Yana's insights. Before starting the next lesson, try to write all the letters from Aleph to Yod several times in a row while loudly pronouncing each letter. In the next lesson, we will learn the 11th letter, Kaf, and after that, review half the Aleph Bet. How many can you remember? See you in the next lesson. Lehitraot! Shalom, Ani Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Aleph Bet Bekale Kalut, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet. Last lesson, we reached the halfway point of the Hebrew Aleph Bet and did a review of what you've learned so far. Did you practice them all? So I guess you're ready for the next two letters that we will learn in this lesson. They are Lamed with the sound of L and the letter mem, with an m sound. So let's start writing. Lamed looks different in hand and print writing. So pay attention and remember to pronounce the letter while writing. Lamed. Lamed. Lamed looks like a loop, doesn't it? The word loop in Hebrew actually starts with lamed. Lula a. Can you read this word without nikud? Lula a, loop. Easy to remember, right? In print, it looks like this. So how loop will look in print? Yeled is a boy in Hebrew. Yeled. And in print version, yeled. If you wondered how we make the sound of e in yeled, 
you are paying very good attention. There is a new Nikud there called Segol, and it looks like this. You say it with a sound E. Eh. So let's write Yeled with proper Nikud. Yeled. And in print version, Yeled. Another example using Segol is Kelev. Kelev is a dog. And in print, Kelev. Could you read Kelev without any code there at all? Kelev. Great. The next letter is Mem, and it has an M sound. In handwriting, Mem looks like this. Mem. And in print, Mem. Mem changes when at the end of the word, just like in the previous lesson, Chaf. It looks like this. Mem Sofit. And in print, Mem Sofit. You might say it looks like a square. Maim is water in Hebrew. Here you can see both variations of Mem. Maim. And in print version, Maim. So how would you read this word? This is Melech. Melech means a king in Hebrew. Melech. Me. Le. Ch. Here is Yana's insight. Have you been checking out the Aleph Bet transcripts for HebrewPod101.com's lessons? I bet you can read a lot more now than you could after lesson two. Go back and browse the Aleph Bet transcripts for a lesson or two and you'll be amazed at how far you've come. Just think a little more and you'll understand the whole thing. This lesson will learn the letters Lamed and Mem and the Nikud Segol with the sound of E. In the next lesson, we will have a little quiz. So practice your Aleph Bet and the Nikud. See you then. Lehitraot. Hi everyone, my name is Yara. Welcome to another episode of Top Hebrew Words. And this episode is especially fun because today we're going to learn 10 phrases you always want to hear. So the first one is Tzedakt, you were right. Tzedakt, you were right. I said it in the female form, Tzedakt. For a male, it would be Tzedakta, you were right. I knew it. I'm always right. אני מתגעגעת אלייך, I miss you. אני מתגעגעת אלייך, I miss you. This is a really interesting verb, I think, because it doesn't exist in English. In English you say, I miss you, which is, which is really nice, but in Hebrew you have a special verb for this feeling of missing someone or something. מתגעגע, for a male, מתגעגעת, for a female. So I like this one. אני מתגעגעת אלייך. את טבחית מעולה. You're an excellent cook. At tabachit meula. You're an excellent cook. For a male, at a tabach meule. At niret nehedar hayom. You look great today. At niret nehedar hayom. You look great today. For a male, at a nire nehedar hayom. Heveti lach mashehu miyuchad. I brought you something special. Heveti lach mashehu miyuchad. I brought you something special. For a male, הבאתי לך משהו מיוחד. התקציב הוא בלתי מוגבל. The budget is unlimited. התקציב הוא בלתי מוגבל. The budget is unlimited. This goes for all genders. <laughs> Yay! את המנצחת. You are the winner. Yeah, it's always fun to hear. 
For a female it would be at המנצחת. You're the winner. אתה המנצח. You're the winner. I want to thank my parents and everyone that helped me get here. You love me. You really love me. יהיה בונוס בסוף החודש. There'll be a bonus at the end of the month. יהיה בונוס בסוף החודש. There'll be a bonus at the end of the month. Yes. עשית עבודה נהדרת. You did a great job. עשית עבודה נהדרת. You did a great job. It's always fun to hear. For a male, it would be עשית עבודה נהדרת. תודה, לא היינו יכולים לעשות את זה בלעדייך. Thanks, we couldn't have done this without you. תודה, לא יכולנו לעשות את זה בלעדייך. Thanks, we couldn't have done this without you. For a male, בלעדיך. These were 10 phrases you always want to hear. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye! Hey, here's a huge pile of money. <laughs>
This letter is pronounced differently than an English R. It's pronounced at the back of the throat, instead of forward in the mouth. Listen to Edith say this letter. R. R. It's actually closer to the German or French R, but without the roll. Nearly all sounds in Hebrew are identical to English, like the K, V, and T sounds in this example. Since you already know how to pronounce most of these sounds, we only need to pay attention to the handful of sounds that are completely new to you. They're the ones we need to look out for. In the previous lesson, we taught you how to say thank you in Hebrew. Do you remember what it was? It's... Toda. Well done! Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Hebrew has 22 letters, but even more sounds. The extra sounds come from the vowels and the consonants that can represent two sounds instead of one. Many of the sounds in Hebrew are identical to the sounds in English. And there are only a handful of new sounds that you need to learn. We've covered only the basics of Hebrew pronunciation. If you're interested in learning more, check out our ultimate guide to Hebrew pronunciation. In that video series, we teach you how to pronounce every single sound used in Hebrew. In the next lesson, we'll introduce you to the basics of Hebrew grammar, where you'll learn about Hebrew word order and how to build basic phrases in Hebrew. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! It's a getting ready dance. Hi everyone, welcome to Top Hebrew Words. My name is Yara and today's theme is 15 questions you should know. So, let's start. Me'efo ata, where are you from? Me'efo ata, where are you from? And if you want to ask a female, it's me'efo at. Ani mi Tel Aviv. I am from Tel Aviv. Ben kama ata, how old are you? Ben kama ata, how old are you? For a female, it would be bat kama at. I'm not gonna answer that one. <laughs> Ma shimcha, what's your name? Ma shimcha, what is your name? For a female, Ma shmech. A more common way of asking that would be Ech koreim lecha, or for a female, Ech koreim lach, which literally means how are you called? Ma shlomcha, how are you? Ma shlomcha, or Ma shlomech, for a woman, and this is, how are you? How do you feel? Ma what's this? Ma what is this? Ma some people use it uh, as, what, like what did you say? Ma But uh, most of the times it's used uh, when you wanna know what a thing is. Excuse me? Ma ze. Ma amarta? What did you say? Ma amarta? What did you say? And for a female, ma amart? Lo amarti klum. I didn't say anything. Efo ata oved? Where do you work? Efo ata oved? Where do you work? And for a female, efo at ovedet? Efo hashirutim? Where is the bathroom? Memorize this one. Efo hashirutim? Where is the bathroom? Excuse me, where, איפה השירותים? איפה אתה גר? Where do you live? איפה אתה גר? Where do you live? Or for female, איפה את גרה? מתי יום ההולדת שלך? When is your birthday? מתי יום ההולדת שלך? When is your birthday? For female, מתי יום ההולדת שלך? כמה זמן אתה לומד עברית? How long have you been studying Hebrew? כמה זמן אתה לומד עברית? How long have you been studying Hebrew? For a female, כמה זמן את לומדת עברית? איפה למדת עברית? Where did you learn Hebrew? איפה למדת עברית? Where did you study Hebrew? Or for a female, איפה למדת עברית? That's an easy question. HebrewPod101.com Hayita bi Israel? Have you been to Israel? Hayita bi Israel? Have you been to Israel? For a female, Hayit bi Israel? Well, have you? Ata ohev ochel Israeli? 
Do you like Israeli food? אתה אוהב אוכל ישראלי? Do you like Israeli food? And for a female, את אוהבת אוכל ישראלי? איפה אתה רוצה לבקר? Where do you want to visit? איפה אתה רוצה לבקר? Where do you want to visit? Or for a female, איפה את רוצה לבקר? So this is it. This was 15 questions that you should know in Hebrew. Thank you so much for watching. And have you ever been to Israel? What is your favorite Israeli food? Tell us in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye! everybody, my name is Edit. Welcome to the 800 core Hebrew words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in the series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at hebrewpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is... Chulza. Shirt. Chulza. Chul... Tsa. Shirt. Hachulza alta mataim shkalim. The shirt costs 200 shekels. Hachulza alta mataim shkalim. Michnasaim. Pants. מכנסיים. מכנסיים. פאנטס. אני צריכה זוג מכנסיים. I would like a pair of pants. אני צריכה זוג מכנסיים. שמלה. דרס. שמלה. שמלה. דרס. יש שמלה יפה בחנות הזאת. There is a nice dress in this store. יש שמלה יפה בחנות הזאת. אמר say אמר אמר say מה אמרת? לא אמרתי כלום. What did you say? I didn't say anything. מה אמרת? לא אמרתי כלום. להתקשר. קר. להתקשר. ל... היט קה שר. קר. האם תוכל להתקשר למספר הזה? Could you call this number? האם תוכל להתקשר למספר הזה? למצוא. Find. 
למצוא. למצוא. find. אני לא מצליח למצוא את הדרך חזרה למלון שלי. I can't find the way back to my hotel. אני לא מצליח למצוא את הדרך חזרה למלון שלי. נקי clean נקי נא קי clean המדינה הזאת נקייה מאוד. This country is very clean. המדינה הזאת נקייה מאוד. מלוכלך. Dirty. מלוכלך. מלוכלך. Dirty. עדשת המצלמה מלוכלכת. The camera's lens is dirty. עדשת המצלמה מלוכלכת. גזר. קארט. גזר. גזר. קארט. אתה יכול להוסיף גזר לסלט? Can you add carrot to the salad? אתה יכול להוסיף גזר לסלט? בצל עניין בצל בצל. עניין. היא רוצה פיצה עם בצל. She wants pizza with onions. היא רוצה פיצה עם בצל. חסה. לטס. חסה. חסה. לטס. חסה מכילה ויטמין K. לטס קונטיינס ויטמין K. חסה מכילה ויטמין K. Kevis. Sheep. Kevis. Kevis. Sheep. Ha Kevis ochel et hadeshe hayarok. The sheep is eating the green grass. הכבש אוכל את הדשא הירוק. ארנב Rabbit ארנב R nav rabbit ארנבים הם חמודים אבל מסריחים 
Rabbits are cute, but smelly. ארנבים הם חמודים, אבל מסריחים. כלב ים Seal, the animal. כלב ים כלב ים Seal, the animal. כלבי ים חיים באזורים הקרים ביותר. Seals live in the coldest areas. כלבי ים חיים באזורים הקרים ביותר. ענן Cloud ענן ענן Cloud מזג האוויר היום הוא שמשי עם עננים מזדמנים. Today's weather is sunny with occasional clouds. מזג האוויר היום הוא שמשי עם עננים מזדמנים. שמשי סאני שמשי שמשי סאני בימים שמשיים חוף הים מלא באנשים. On sunny days the beach is very crowded. בימים שמשיים חוף הים מלא באנשים. גשום רייני גשום גשום רייני אני חייבת לחלק עיתונים בימים גשומים ובימים סוערים. I have to deliver newspapers on rainy days and windy days. אני חייבת לחלק עיתונים בימים גשומים ובימים סוערים. תינוק baby תינוק תינוק baby התינוק מטופל על ידי המטפלת The baby is being taken care of by the nanny התינוק מטופל על ידי המטפלת. ילדה. גרל. ילדה. ילדה. גרל. הילדה אוהבת לאכול פסטה. The girl loves to eat pasta. הילדה אוהבת לאכול פסטה. ילד בוי ילד ילד בוי יש לילד כלב מחמד. The boy has a pet dog. יש לילד כלב 
Mahmad. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at HebrewPod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom. You. Hey, you. You. Yeah, you. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. So, my name is Yara, and I do not know uh, today's words, but the theme is 10 hardest words to pronounce in Hebrew. So, let's begin. Chatzotzra, trumpet. Chatzotzra, trumpet. Haiti rotzalen again bechatzotzra. I would like to play the trumpet. Letzachzeach, to brush. חשוב מאוד לצחצח שיניים פעמיים ביום. It is very important to brush your teeth twice a day. צריכים. Must, need. צריכים. Must. צריכים is, is the word must, but in the plural masculine version of this word. הם צריכים. They must, they need. For example, הם צריכים לעזוב את המסיבה המוקדם. They must leave the party early. They must or they need to. Or they have to. חתיכה. Peace. חתיכה. Peace. I, it's not like it... They're, these are not tongue twisters. It's just... It's for people who can't pronounce ח. אפשר לקבל חתיכת עוגה בבקשה? Can I have a piece of cake, please? מנצנץ. Sparkling. I love this word, menetsnets, sparkling. Yeah, I, okay, I love this lesson. These are really fun words. It's fun to say, try it. Come on. Nice. For example, השרשרת שלי מנצנצת. My necklace is sparkly. It's not really, but just, you know, use your imagination. פעלולים, special effects. פעלולים. But it's more fun saying it fast, paalulim. So usually like a stuntman will be called paalulan. Now that I, 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 I'm saying it over and over again, I'm like, is this a real word? I'm not sure all of a sudden, but it is. Wow. Mi haya akhrai al hapaalulim b'seret hazeh? Wow. Who was in charge of the special effects in this movie? Shifshuf. Rub. This is a noun. The verb will be leshafshef. אם נשפך לכם יין אדום על השטיח, תשפשפו אותו במלח. If you spilled red wine on your carpet, rub it with salt. Someone told me about this method, I did not uh, check it, so I don't really know. לצחקק, to giggle. לצחקק, to giggle. Oh, that's a wonderful word. To laugh is לצחוק. So this is like the smaller version of it, לצחקק. And the noun version is צחקוק, צחקוקים, yeah, in plural. הם לא הפסיקו לצחקק בזמן שדיברתי. They wouldn't stop giggling while I was talking. How rude. מחצלת, מת. מחצלת, מת. כשאתם הולכים לים, אל תשכחו לקחת מחצלת. When you go to the beach, don't forget to take a mat. שרוכים, שולייסס. שרוכים, שולייסס. באיזה גיל למדתם לקשור את השרוכים? What age did you learn to tie your own shoelaces? So that's it. Thank you so much for watching the 10 hardest word uh, to pronounce in Hebrew. I hope you learned something new. Tell us in the comments what was your favorite word and don't forget to check the website. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye. Hi everyone, Edith here. Today we're going to talk about 10 responses to How are you? In Hebrew, of course. Ma shlomcha? How are you? Ma shlomcha? How are you? So yeah, like this is the most common way to ask people in Hebrew how they are. You can also say like, hey, what's up? Or, you know, how's it going? But the most simple way is 
מה שלומך? ואתה? And you? So after you've been asked how are you and you've given your response, you would ask the other person, and you? ואתה? אני בסדר. I'm fine. אני בסדר. I'm fine. Yeah, just בסדר is literally just fine. It can be, you know, fine. It can be fine. שלומי לא רע. I'm not bad. שלומי לא רע. I'm not bad. So I think people usually would say that after they, maybe they had a bit of a rough time, I don't know, like maybe at work or something personal, and then when people ask them how they're doing, so they would say, oh, I'm not bad, like, you know, it's getting better. Gam Shlomitov. I'm fine too. Gam Shlomitov. I'm fine too. When you say gam in the beginning of the sentence, it's the same as saying in English too. but in the end of the sentence. So in Hebrew you would say it first. Gam Shlomitov. Ani Ashnuni. I'm sleepy. Ani Ashnuni. I'm sleepy. I think nowadays it's like a very common thing to say, like, how are you doing? Oh, I'm sleepy. When do you guys actually like wake up? I only wake up after I have a cup of coffee and then maybe another hour. Ani Margish Ra. I'm feeling bad. אני מרגיש רע. I'm feeling bad. So if you're ill, usually yes, ill or having a headache, you would say that you feel bad. It's not so much as like an emotional thing, or you know, I'm hurting, I'm sad. It's like, I feel bad, I'm, I'm ill. שלומי מצוין. I'm great. שלומי מצוין. I'm great. When you're really doing well, like you really have it, it's like, I'm great, מצוין. איך הולך איתך? How have you been? איך הולך איתך? How have you been? So since in Hebrew we don't have as much tenses as English, and we don't have like all of the progressive tenses, it's just past, past um, present and future, Um, when we try to ask like, oh, how have you been during the last few days? How have you been during the last few weeks? So we would say, How are things going for you? Pretty much that's the literal translation. Manishma, what's up? Manishma, what's up? Um, so this is like the number one most common expression. Um, in Israel, when you ask people how they're doing, and it's very friendly and casual, like when you say, Manishma, it's just like saying, what's up? And the literal translation, it's like saying, what is heard? Like, what do you have to tell me that is new? Please do. Please tell me. Um, so that's it. That's Manishma. So thanks, everyone. Thank you for watching that video. Today, we discussed about how to respond to how are you. Please let me know in the comments below, like, what are the most surprising responses you ever gotten? It's like, oh, how are you? Uh, yeah, my dog died. It's, you know, stuff like that. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like up this video. And also don't forget to get into uh, HebrewPod101.com for more content and more Hebrew. And I will see you all next time. Lehitrot. everybody, Edith here, welcome to Hebrew Top Words, and today we are going to talk about 10 ways to say hello. Let's get started. Boker Tov. Good morning. Boker Tov. Good morning. Some people, if they're having like kind of a bad morning and they don't want to say good morning or Boker Tov, they would just say like Boker Morning. Obviously. <laughs> Shalom. Hello. Shalom. Hello. Shalom also means peace in Hebrew. So it's almost kind of Rastafarian, you know, peace. Harbe zman lo hitra'enu. Long time no see. Harbe zman lo hitra'enu. Long time no see. I guess in Hebrew it's not quite as natural to say as it is in English, 
Um, so if you really want to be super casual, um, you can also say something like, um, why? Shanim. It's like, it's like saying, whoa, ages, without even saying, it has been, just ages. How have you been? How have you been? This is more of a way to ask somebody like that you really haven't seen for a while, like, what has he been up to? And you say it, which is a very casual way of saying it. It's very useful. How are you? How are you? also comes from the word shalom. So literally, it's kind of like asking, how is your peace? How is your day? How is your day? Um, that's a nice thing to text somebody, like your boyfriend or girlfriend in the middle of the day, um, just to see how they're doing. What's up? Ma kore? What's up? There are so many ways of saying it in Hebrew. Um, the most common ones is, are this, this one, ma kore, which is more like what's happening, and also ma nishma, which is like, what's up? Erev tov. Good evening. Erev tov. Good evening. So, like English, I think Erev Tov is not something that you would use like with your friends or in any casual situation. It's more like when you're going to a restaurant or some sort of a service giver would say that, not like with friends. Na'im la'kirotcha. It's nice to meet you. Na'im la'kirotcha. Nice to meet you. Um, as a matter of fact, a more common way of saying it is to just drop the last part, dropping the otach or otcha, and simply say, na'im l'hakir. It's like saying uh, in English, it's a pleasure. Ech hakol, how's everything? Ech hakol, how's everything? Uh, also very, like friendly way of asking, like, how's life? Um, and if you want to ask, how's life? You can ask, Echa chaim? Okay, everybody, that's it. This was 10 ways to say hello in Hebrew. Let me know the com in the comments below if there's anything else that you would like to know. And I would say goodbye in 10 different ways, but I don't have any time. So see you next time. Goodbye. Shalom, אני יאנה. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Aleph Bet Bekalei Kalut. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet. The Aleph Bet. In the last lesson, we finished up the first 10 Hebrew letters of the Aleph Bet and six Nikud symbols. Can you remember how to write good brother in Hebrew? I'm sure you can do it. Now let's move on to the 11th letter, Kaf. The sound of Kaf is K. Let's write it. Kaf. Just half a circle to the right, starting from the upper left side and going down. The print is the same, but with sharp corners. Kaf. Kaf actually is only pronounced like k when it has a dot inside. Just like bet only has the b sound when it has this dot. Without the dot, it sounds like ch. Chaf. A good example is the word kochav, kochav, which means a star. K, O, Ch, V, kochav, and in print version, kochav. Be careful though, the letter chaf takes a different shape when it is written at the end of the word. It looks like this. 
half so fit. The print is quite similar. Half so fit. Now let's have a short review of the first 11 letters, the first half of the alphabet. Be ready with a pen and a paper. I'll say the letter out loud, starting from Aleph, and give you a second to write it down, first in handwriting and then in print style. Then I will write it myself, first the handwriting version and then the print. Are you ready? Let's go! Aleph Aleph, Bet. Bet, Gimel. Gimel, Dalet. Dalet, hey. Hey, vav. Vav, zain. Zain Chet Chet Tet Tet Yod Yod and Kaf Kaf. Good job. Now it's time for Yana's insights. How is your Aleph Bet learning going? If you're having a tough time with some characters, how about checking them out on the Aleph Bet chart in HebrewPod101.com's Learning Center? Don't just get stuck in one learning method. Mix it up for the best results. In this lesson, we studied the letter Kaf with its variations and did a review of the last 11 Aleph Bet letters. Next lesson, we will continue with two more letters. Do you know what Lama means? So why not join me in the next lesson? See you then. Bye. I should have done a little dance before I sat down. Hi everyone, my name is Yara and this is Top 25 Hebrew Nouns. Let's begin. Yom, day. Etmol aya yom ha'uledet sheli. Yesterday was my birthday. It wasn't really. Shana, year. Ashana achrona ita metsuyenet. The last year was wonderful. Sha'a, hour. Sha'a means hour, but when you want to know what time it is, you ask Maha Sha'a, which literally translates as uh, what hour is this? Ma Sha'a, what time is it? Chalon, window. Tiftechi et chalon, champo. Open a window, it's hot in here. It is. Bait, home. Bait, home uh, or house, it's the same. Baruch haba labait sheli. Welcome to my home, or to my house. Avoda, work. It's a work, it's also a job. Yesh li avoda chadasha. I have a new job. Derech, way. Haderech habayta aruka meod. The way home is very long. Makom, 
place. מה היה המקום האחרון שביקרת בו? What was the last place you visited? תן לשים דקה. חבר. Friend. חבר. Friend. It also means a boyfriend, uh, which can be kind of confusing sometimes. הלכתי עם החבר שלי לסרט. I went with my friend to watch a movie. It can also mean I went with my boyfriend to watch a movie, so... Yeah. חיים. Life. There's a band called חיים. So actually this noun in Hebrew is one of the very few that is plural. אלו חיים נפלאים. What a wonderful life. חברה. Company. התקבלתי לעבודה בחברה גדולה. I got a job in a big company. מספר. Number. מה מספר הדירה שלך? What is your apartment number? קבוצה. Group. יש קבוצה גדולה של אנשים מחוץ לחלון שלי. There's a big group of people outside my window. And they're noisy. עובדה. Fact. חתולים הם אדירים, וזאת עובדה. Cats are awesome, and that's a fact. בעיה. Problem. אני יכולה לתקן לך את המחשב, זאת לא בעיה. I can fix your computer, it's not a problem. <laughs> Definitely can't. ילד. Child. How many children do you have? כמה ילדים יש לך? עולם. World. אני חולמת לעשות טיול מסביב לעולם. I dream of going on a trip around the world. Finance me. שבוע. Week. אני יוצאת לחופשה של שבוע. I'm going on a one-week vacation. משפחה. Family. יש לה משפחה גדולה. She has a big family. אינטרנט. אינטרנט. סבתא שלי בדיוק למדה לגלוש באינטרנט. My grandmother just learned to surf the internet. You go, grandma! Hi! חודש. Month. I'm going on a one-month vacation. <laughs> I'm unemployed. <laughs> אני מקבלת משכורת כל חודש. I get my salary every month. אוכל. Food. מה האוכל האהוב עליכם? What is your favorite food? יד. Hand. תני לי את היד שלך, אני אעזור לך לעלות. Give me your hand, I'll help you up. רחוב. Street. הבית שלי נמצא בקצה הרחוב. My house is at the end of the street. סבתא. Grandma. A lot of people say סבתא, because it's like easier to say. לסבתא שלי יש חשבון פייסבוק. My grandma has a Facebook account. Add her now! Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching uh, Top 25 Hebrew Nouns. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye! That's kind of something my grandma would say. Who chose these words? Never heard any complaints yet. Shalom everybody, Edith here, welcome to Hebrew Top Words, and today we are going to talk about 15 must-know family words. Let's get started. Mishpacha, family. Mishpacha, family. Zot muna shel mishpachti. This is a picture of my family. Av, Abba, father. Av, Abba, father. Miha Abba shel Mario. Who is Mario's father? So in Hebrew, there are basically two ways for saying father or dad. And one of them is Abba, which is the more natural one, a normal one that people use. And it can mean dad or daddy or father also. It's like a real word. It's not just like daddy. Um, and Av is a little bit more biblical and more formal. And people don't usually use it, but it's still it's an important word to know. Obviously, both of the words are very close, with just the difference of one letter in the end. Um, so you can understand, but just so you'll know that Av is a bit more serious, I guess. Baal, husband. Baal, husband. Baali ahuv mevashel bishvili. My beloved husband is cooking for me. So, actually now, a lot of... Women, and especially, I guess, feminist women, um, don't want to use the word Baal anymore because it, it is, it does come from the word owner. And of course, yes, it comes from the Bible. And back then, men used to own women. But since we don't 
live at that time anymore. Uh, many women just don't say that word anymore, and they say uh, an equivalent to my man, which is ishi, ben, son, ben, son, haben sheli, student baunivarsita. My son is a university student. This is really easy. The word for son in Hebrew is just the same as the word for boy. Um, ben. Ach. Brother. Ach. Brother. Le'aba sheli yesh shlosha achim. My father has three brothers. This is also like a very easy word. Ach. If you got your chetz right, then you'll be fine. Dod. Uncle. Dod. Uncle. Hadod sheli rofe. My uncle is a doctor. Another interesting like factoid is that the word dod in the Bible doesn't only mean uncle, but sometimes it's used as meaning my love, um, especially in the Song of Songs and uh, Salmi. But it doesn't have anything to do like the word uncle and the word my love or lover has any nothing to do with each other. So, Saba. Grandfather. Saba. Grandfather. Yarashti tashaona ze mi saba sheli. I inherited this clock from my grandfather. So, as you can see, most of the words in Hebrew for like family members are quite short and easy because you use them a lot. <laughs> um, family is very important in Jewish culture and in Israeli culture. It's a very, it's a very family oriented culture, I guess. So, yeah, like even the words for dad and granddad are very similar. It's Abba and Saba. M. Ima. Mother. M. Ima. Mother. Ima ve Abba sheli hayu nesuim chamishim shana. My mother and father were married for 50 years. So again, for the word for mom or mother, the word Ima is more common and used as mom, mommy, mother. And the word M, again, is more biblical, it's shorter, it's more official. Um, just the same as we've learned about father. Bat, daughter. Bat, daughter. Habat shelanu professorit baunivarsita, vehaben shelanu isha sakim. Our daughter is a university professor, and our son is a businessman. Again, very easy, the word for daughter is just the same as the word for girl. Bat, achot. Sister, achot, sister. He a achot agdola sheli vhi orechet din. She is my older sister and she's a lawyer. Achot, as you can probably tell, sounds very similar to ach, just with a suffix for female. <laughs> Isha, wife. Isha, wife. He isha vem. She's a wife and a mother. The word for wife is the same as the word for woman. <laughs> It's very simple. Um, it's like, she's my woman, she's my wife. It's the same. Um, and when a man says, my wife, he would say, the most common way to hear it is, ishti. Chamot. Chama. Mother-in-law. Chamot. Chama. Mother-in-law. Al titen lechama shtaltanit lirdot becha. Don't be pushed around by an overbearing mother-in-law. It's not just... The mothers, everybody, okay? Also, there are two words for the word mother-in-law, and they're very similar. Chama and chamot. And they're both used kind of, you know, interchangeably. Savta. Grandmother. Savta. Grandmother. Savta machina et paya tapuchim atov ba'olam. My grandmother makes the best apple pie in the world. Well, I guess American grandmothers. <laughs> My grandmother made the best rice casserole in the world. <laughs> Bat Zug. Ben Zug. Partner. Bat Zug. Ben Zug. Partner. Harbe gvarim tseirim mechapsim bat Zug. Many young men are looking for a partner. So in Hebrew, again, you always have the difference between male and female, unlike English when partner can be both male and female. So when you're talking about a boy partner, it's Ben Zug, and a girl partner is Bat Zug. Um, like, we've learned that 
Ben is boy and Bat is girl and also daughter and Ben is also son. It's very, very simple. Doda, aunt. Doda, aunt. Hadoda Shali Ohevet Prahim Tsubim. My aunt likes yellow flowers. Sometimes we use the word for aunt in Hebrew also when we see just like a woman who's a little bit older, maybe like in her 50s, and she seems to, you know, have this older woman vibe. Or when we say about somebody that she dresses older from her age or puts a makeup that makes her look older than her true age, then we can say that she looks like a doda, she looks like an aunt. Um, I don't know why that is, but actually I think that's a very accurate way to say it, like, oh yeah, she looks like a tall aunt. So, yeah. Okay, everybody, that's it for today. Today we've learned about 15 must-know family words in Hebrew. Please let me know in the comments below. Tell me about your family and who is your favorite family member. And don't forget to like up this video, subscribe, and check out HebrewPod101.com for more Hebrew, more context, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Bye. Hi everyone, welcome to the Ultimate Hebrew Pronunciation Guide. In this lesson, you'll learn all five Hebrew vowel sounds. A, E, I, O, U. By learning all of these sounds, you'll be able to pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in Hebrew. Are you ready? Then let's get started. The first vowel sound is A. Gum, Bach, Dag. This vowel sound is very similar to the A in far. A, A. A, A. The next vowel sound is e, shell, ken, kehe. It's very similar to the e in the word education. E, 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 e. The next vowel sound is e, misim, imun, tinok. This is identical to the i in ski. E, 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 e. The next vowel sound is o. Shalom, Noal, Shalom. It's very similar to the O sound in the word or. O, 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 O. The last vowel sound for this lesson is U, Tmuna. Aduma, medura. This is identical to the U in the word rule. U, 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 U. Well done. You've just learned all five vowel sounds in Hebrew. With these sounds, you can pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in the Hebrew language. Isn't that great? Which vowel sound was the most difficult for you to pronounce? Let us know in the comments. In the next lesson, you'll start learning consonant sounds. See you in the next Ultimate Hebrew Pronunciation Guide lesson. Hi! 
Welcome to Introduction to Hebrew. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Edith. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hebrew grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. The first thing you must remember when reading Hebrew is that it's read from right to left. Consider the English sentence, he ate an apple. But first, let's remove the article an here for simplicity. So we're just left with, he ate apple. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. If we break down the English sentence, he ate apple, we can see that the subject he is presented first, followed by the verb ate. And then finally, the object apple is positioned last. This is the basic word order for sentences in English. Now let's compare that same sentence, he ate an apple, in Hebrew. Hu achal tapuach. In Hebrew, you only need an article for definite articles. Here we have only an indefinite article, so we don't need a word like a or n. If we break down the Hebrew sentence, we get the subject, hu, meaning he. Then comes the verb, achal, meaning ate. And finally, we have the object, tapuach, meaning apple. The word order for Hebrew is the same as English, subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. In Hebrew, for simple sentences with a verb, the order is the same as in English. Word order varies in Hebrew for emphasis and in more complicated sentences. You don't have to worry about that until you learn the basics. For now, use the basic subject, verb, object form when making sentences in Hebrew. Okay, let's move on to the next section. In Hebrew, you want to begin with the subject of your sentence. Let's start with the pronoun I. In Hebrew, that's ani. Next, you need your verb. In the present tense, there are four forms for verbs according to masculine, feminine, masculine plural, and feminine plural. When your subject is I, the verb is conjugated either in masculine or feminine, depending on who is talking. Using the verb to love, le'ehov, as an example, the masculine is ohev and the feminine is ohevet. So, what do we have so far? I'm a woman, so I would use the feminine, ani ohevet. The last thing we need is an object, something you love. How about dogs? Klavim. Ani ohevet klavim. I love dogs. If I were a man, I would say, ani ohev klavim. So, it's as simple as that, and very similar to English. Now it's your turn. See if you can use these words to make the sentence, the boy loves dogs. Ohev. Klavim. Hayeled. Did you succeed? First you need the subject, the boy. In the present tense in Hebrew, the verb is determined by the number and gender of the subject. Here we have one boy. Hayeled. Then you need to add the verb, the boy loves. This verb will be conjugated in masculine singular for the boy. That's ohev. Hayeled ohev. Finally, you add the object. Altogether, the boy loves dogs. Hayeled ohev klavim. But what if you're not a dog lover and you want to express that in Hebrew? Forming the negative in Hebrew is very easy. You just need to know one word. Lo. To make the sentence negative, you add this word before the verb. Ani lo ohevet klavim. Great! Now you know how to make a sentence in Hebrew, and you know how to say it in the negative. Next, we're going to teach you one more thing, how to ask a question in Hebrew. This is really difficult. Are you ready for this? You don't have to change a word in the sentence. To ask a question in Hebrew, you change how you say the words in the sentence. Let's hear the boy loves dogs, as a question. Let's hear the difference between the normal sentence and the question. The normal sentence is The question is The formal way to ask this as a question is to add a word to the beginning of the sentence. But this way is not used very often in speech. You say before the rest of the sentence. If you want to ask, 
who loves dogs, you replace the subject with the word for who. That word is me. Me or have clavim? Well done. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Hebrew sentences are formed using a subject, verb, object, or SVO word order, just like in English. Secondly, you learned how to make a sentence negative by adding one word before the verb. Lastly, you learned that asking questions in Hebrew is easy because you only have to change the way you say the sentence to ask a question. We've covered only the very basics of Hebrew grammar. If you're interested in learning more, check out our Hebrew in 3 Minutes video series. In that course, we teach you useful phrases while covering the fundamentals of Hebrew grammar, and each lesson is only 3 minutes long. In the next lesson, we'll introduce you to the basics of Hebrew writing. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! Hi everybody, I'm Edith from HebrewPod101.com. Do you know how Israeli people celebrate New Year's Day? In this lesson, you'll learn some important phrases about the Hebrew New Year and some valuable cultural tips. In Hebrew, New Year's Day is called Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. On Rosh Hashanah, Israeli people greet each other by saying Shana Tova. Shana Tova. This means Happy New Year. When you meet someone for the first time in the New Year, be sure to greet them with this phrase. In Israel, New Year's Day also has a nickname. Yom Din. Yom Din. This means the Day of Judgment. On this day, people are judged on what they did in the previous year, and then they predict what will happen in the coming year. The custom most associated with the festival is the Shofar. Between holiday prayers, the Shofar is blown loudly. The Shofar is made from a ram's horn, and the noise it makes, which sounds like crying, opens the heart and reminds people how important this day really is. Israeli people also celebrate the holiday with special events and customs. The most popular one is Tashlich. Tashlich. This is a ritual performed on Rosh Hashanah. In Israel, people do not celebrate New Year's Day on the same day that many countries do. Israel uses a Hebrew calendar alongside the Gregorian calendar. The Hebrew year begins on the 1st of Tishrei, and on that day people celebrate Rosh Hashanah, the holiday marking the beginning of the new year. This day differs each year as it does not match exactly with the Gregorian calendar. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what you've learned. Listen to the words and repeat after me. New Year's Day Rosh Hashanah Rosh Hashanah Happy New Year Shana Tova Shana Tova Day of Judgment Yom Din Yom Din A ritual performed on Rosh Hashanah Tashlich Well done! Here's a fun fact. Do you know why it is customary to eat apples and honey on Rosh Hashanah? 
On Rosh Hashanah, it is customary to dip slices of apple or tapuach in honey and greet each other by saying that we shall be renewed with a good and sweet year. Or in Hebrew, Shetitchadesh aleinu shana tova umetuka. So, in other words, we are asking that the following year will be as good as the sweet taste of apples and honey. You just learned how Israeli people celebrate New Year's Day and some important facts about the holiday. And if you want to learn Hebrew twice as fast, just click in the link in the description and download tons of PDF lessons for free. I'll see you next time. Toda raba! Celebrate. Can I go to sleep? <laughs>
the resulting combination of consonants often feels unnatural to learners of Hebrew. Kvisa. Instead of properly combining these letters, new speakers often put a short vowel between the two. In order to correct this problem, Hebrew students should practice these special letter combinations. Listen to the examples. Gdola. Ktana. Zman. Number two, the Hebrew letter resh. This is a problematic letter for learners of Hebrew, particularly for English speakers, because this R sound does not exist in English. The Hebrew R sound is similar to the German or French R. Unlike the English R, which is pronounced with the tip of the tongue at the front of the mouth, the Hebrew R is pronounced using the back of the tongue with a slight roll. You can think of it like gargling air at the back of your throat. Listen to the following examples. Kar, Rishon, Horim. We'll teach you how to pronounce this sound in lesson six. Number three, misplacing stress. A common mistake for new speakers of Hebrew is the misplacement of stress. In the beginning, most foreign speakers model their stress patterns after their native language. Correcting this is very easy because most Hebrew words are stressed on the last syllable. Pay attention to the stress pattern in the following Hebrew words. Bgadim, yalda, lilmod. When words aren't stressed on the last syllable, they are part of a very specific group of words, all containing a similar stress pattern. Medaberet, sefer, tapuach. We'll teach you how to speak Hebrew with a correct stress in lesson eight. Number four, foreign words in Hebrew. When you see a word you recognize from your own language in Hebrew, your first instinct is to pronounce it like it is in your own language. However, many foreign words in Hebrew have been modified to have different stress patterns. They may even use different sounds altogether. Pay attention to how native speakers pronounce these words and you'll learn them quickly. Listen to Yara. Universita. Televisia. Sandwich. Number five. While this letter is usually difficult for foreign speakers to pronounce correctly in the beginning, it is also one that many people perfect with a good amount of practice. This is a guttural H pronounced at the back of the throat. It has a bad reputation because it sounds as though you're bringing up phlegm from your throat. It's possible that non-native speakers are afraid to make this sound, and this is why it has become known as a difficult Hebrew letter to pronounce. There's no need to be afraid of this letter because this sound is part of what gives Hebrew its uniqueness. Listen and repeat alongside Yara. Cheder, Chavera, Bachar, Noach. Practice often, and you'll be sure to master this elusive sound in no time. Now you know the top five Hebrew pronunciation mistakes to avoid. Try to be careful so that you don't make the same mistakes. In the next lesson, we'll start learning vowel sounds in Hebrew. What's your biggest challenge with Hebrew pronunciation? Is it one of these top five mistakes? Let us know in the comments. Stick with us and you'll overcome it quickly. See you in the next Ultimate Hebrew Pronunciation Guide lesson. Hi everyone, my name is Yara. Welcome to Top 25 Hebrew Adjectives. So, let's begin. Tov, good. Aglida is not mamash tova. This ice cream is really good. Nehedar, wonderful. For the word wonderful, we have another word in Hebrew, um, which is maybe more similar to the word in English because it has the word wonder in it. And this is nifla. So, nifla and nehedar, uh, they have a very similar meaning. You can use each of them for the word wonderful. Ha-concert haya nehedar, or ha-concert haya nifla, which means the concert was wonderful. Ra, bad. Ah, falafel is not bad at all. This falafel is not bad at all. No falafel is bad. Sa'ir, young. Achshav ani bat shloshim, aval paam ayiti tsa'ira. Now I'm 30 years old, but once I was young. Chadash, new. Yes, it is sport chadasha. I got a new haircut. 
ישן, old. You can't um, say it about old people, it's only about uh, old object, like an old car or an old book. אני אוהבת ריח של ספרים ישנים. I love the smell of old books. ארוך, long. אבטר היה ארוך מדי. אבטר was too long. ראשון, first. Fun fact, in Hebrew you don't have names for the days of the week, you just call them first day, second day, third day. The first day, Sunday, is called יום ראשון. הוא הגיע למקום הראשון בתחרות. He came in first in the competition. אחרון, last. בסוף השבוע האחרון נסעתי לירושלים. Last weekend I went to Jerusalem. מוקדם, early. אני שונאת להתעורר מוקדם. I hate waking up early. מאוחר, late. הוא הגיע מאוחר מדי. He arrived too late. קצר, short. הייתם פעם בפסטיבל הסרטים הקצרים של תל אביב? Have you ever been in Tel Aviv's short films festival? רחוק, far. הבית שלי רחוק מתחנת הרכבת. My house is far from the train station. מעט, few, or little if you talk about quantity. מעט מאוד אנשים הגיעו למסיבה. Very few people came to the party. That's a really sad sentence. הרבה, many, or a lot. בקיץ יש הרבה אנשים בחופים של תל אביב. In the summer, there are many people at the beaches of Tel Aviv. חשוב, important. האירוע הזה חשוב לי מאוד. This event is very important to me. יפה, beautiful. באביב, הגליל ממש יפה. In springtime, the Galilee is really beautiful. קטן, small. העיר הזאת קטנה מדי בשביל שנינו. This town is too small for the two of us. Beware. גדול, big. This town is big enough for the both of us. וואו, הבניין הזה ממש גדול. וואו, this building is really big. מהר, fast. היא נוהגת ממש מהר. She drives really fast. לאט, slow or slowly. השיעור הזה עובר ממש לאט. This class is going by really slow. שונה, different. השיעור הזה שונה מאוד מהשיעור הקודם. This class is very different from the last class. דומה, similar. החדר הזה דומה מאוד לחדר ההוא. This room is very similar to that room. מנומס, polite. הילד הקטן הזה מנומס מאוד. This small child is very polite. נחמד, nice. Uh, you can say that about places and about people as well. And about experiences. It was nice. זה היה נחמד. איך היה הטיול? היה נחמד מאוד. How was the trip? It was very nice. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching Top 25 Hebrew Adjectives. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. Bye! Oh, oh no, someone is pressing the button. But nothing's happening. <laughs>
התחברות וחיזוק קשרים. לפי המסורת, זהו יום של אהבה בין אלוהים לעם ישראל ובין בני אדם. כיום, בישראל חוגגים את באב כיום של אהבה. זוגות אוהבים נותנים מתנות זה לזה, מחזרים שולחים פרחים ושוקולד, והמסעדות הרומנטיות מלאות עד הלילה. מסורת מפורסמת של החג היא ליל אהבה בצמח, פסטיבל מוזיקה לילי שהיה נערך כל שנה בט"ו באב בחוף צמח שבכנרת. עבור יהודים דתיים, ט"ו באב הוא יותר מחג של אהבה רומנטית, הוא יום של שמחה ושל לימוד תורה. החל בט"ו באב ועד לסוף החורף, מקדישים זמן נוסף ללימוד התורה בשעות הלילה, כי הימים מתחילים להתקצר והלילות מתחילים להתארך. ט"ו באב מסמל גם את ההתחלה של תקופת חשבון הנפש לקראת תחילת השנה הבאה. לוח השנה העברי תואם את מחזור הירח, כך שבאמצע כל חודש, כלומר בט"ו בחודש, הירח מלא. כך, בחג האהבה היהודי, הירח מלא ומאיר במיוחד. ועכשיו אגלה לכם את התשובה על החידה מתחילת הסרטון. לפי המסורת היהודית, בט"ו באב היו יוצאות בנות ישראל לרקוד בבגדים שאולים. אתם יודעים למה? הבגדים היו שאולים כדי שלא יוכלו להבחין מי עשירה ומי ענייה, ולא לבייש אף אחת. איך היה השיעור? למדתם משהו מעניין? איך חוגגים את האהבה בתרבות שלכם? כתבו לנו תגובה באתר hebrewpod101.com. נתראה בשיעור הבא! Hi everyone, do you know how to say I love you in Hebrew? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say it. Let's start with how to express your feelings to your loved one. אני אוהב אותך. אני אוהב אותך. אני אוהב אותך. Or, if you want to explain those butterflies in your stomach, you can say אני דלוק עלייך. אני דלוק עלייך. אני דלוק עלייך. And when you feel that I love you is not enough, you can say מילים לא יכולות לתאר את האהבה שלי אליך. מילים לא יכולות לתאר את האהבה שלי אליך. מילים לא יכולות לתאר את האהבה שלי אליך. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Hebrew. And if you're interested in learning more, don't forget to download your free Romance and Love Cheat Sheet, which includes romantic words, compliments, and pickup lines. Check out the description below and go to hebrewpod101.com now. See you next time. Hi everyone! Welcome to Top Hebrew Words. My name is Yara and today our top words will be 15 favorite words chosen by fans, which is even more fun than usual. So I am genuinely excited to find out what you chose. So let's start. Ahava, love. Ahava is the noun and the verb is Lehov, to love. Uh, you can use it. Um, to describe your love for people, animals, clothes, or anything. האהבה הכי גדולה שלי היא חתולים. My biggest love is cats. Oh, don't worry, I like you too. אין בעיה, no problem. Okay, for example, in the very Israeli phrase, אתה יכול לעשות לי טובה? אין בעיה. Can you do me a favor? No problem. אל תדאג, don't worry. אה, אל תדאג, it'll be okay. For example, אל תדאג, טיפלתי בזה. Don't worry, I took care of it. אימא, mother. We don't have a mother-mom thing. It's always אימא. תראי אימא, אני ביוטיוב. Look, mom, I'm on YouTube. היי! אני מצטער. I'm sorry. אני מצטער. Or for a female speaker, אני מצטערת. I'm sorry. אני מצטערת ששפכתי עלייך את כוס הקפה שלי. I'm sorry I spilled my coffee on you. שמח, happy. יום הולדת שמח, 
happy birthday. For a female, it will be שמחה. מיטה. bed. יורד גשם בחוץ, אז אני רוצה להישאר במיטה כל היום. It's raining outside, so I want to stay in bed all day long. להתראות. See you. So you say it when you part with somebody. Okay, להתראות. Which literally means something like to see each other. להתראות בפעם הבאה. See you next time. כבוד. Respect. כבוד is the noun, but you can also use it as a verb. לכבד. To respect someone. There is this uh, iconic Israeli movie from the 70s, 70s or 80s, uh, called Kazablan. And it was a musical, and one of the most famous songs uh, from that movie is about respect. The main line is, כולם היו יודעים אז טוב מאוד, למי יש יותר כבוד? Uh, everyone would then know very well who has the most respect. <laughs> yeah, it, sound, it sounds a bit funny, but... No, I didn't write it, so... ללמוד, to learn. It can mean to learn something new, it can mean to uh, study, and it can also mean what you do in school. Like, in English you would ask what university do you go to, and in Hebrew you would ask באיזו אוניברסיטה את לומדת? אתה לומד, which means what university do you learn in. So, yeah. שפה, language. שפה also means a lip, and another word for language in Hebrew is לשון, which also means tongue. איזו שפה את רוצה ללמוד? What language do you want to learn? גדול. Awesome. גדול. Awesome. Uh, גדול literally means big or large, but you say it as awesome, yeah, גדול. איך היה בהופעה? היה גדול. Uh, how was the show? Awesome. It was awesome. Bis. Bait. A very useful word is the word bis, which means a bite. אפשר לקבל bis מהפלאפל שלך? Can I have a bite of your falafel? Be generous. Give people a bite of your falafel. חירות. Freedom. Uh, freedom has two words, חופש and חירות. You can use the word חופש for a vacation from school, but חירות is a much bigger word. And you can hear it a lot in Pesach, in Passover, in the term לצאת מעבדות לחירות, to go from slavery to freedom. שלום, peace. שלום means peace. It can be used as hello, and it, it, it is used. mostly as hello. When I was a little girl, there was a famous children's song uh, named Shalom Himila Shimushit. Shalom is a useful word, which is nice. This is it. These were the 15 top Hebrew words that you chose, and thank you for that. So don't forget to check out the website, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye! <laughs> In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Hebrew. Hi everybody, my name is Edith. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at HebrewPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is... Kelev. Dog. Kelev. Ke... Live. Dog. Layelad yesh kelev machmad. 
The boy has a pet dog. La yeled, yesh, kelev, machmad. Chatul, cat. Chatul, cha, tul, cat. Hachatul betoch hakova. The cat is in the hat. Hachatul betoch hakova. Oger. Hamster. Oger. O ger. Hamster. Ogrim. אוהבים לישון במהלך היום. Hamsters like to sleep during the day. אוגרים אוהבים לישון במהלך היום. חמים Warm חמים חמים Warm לעיתים קרובות אנו משחקים בקלפים בערבי קיץ חמימים. We often play cards on a warm summer evening. לעיתים קרובות אנו משחקים בקלפים בערבי קיץ חמימים. גשם rain Geshem. Geshem. Rain. Hageshem yored al arachov. The rain is falling on the street. Hageshem yored al arachov. Agvania. Tomato. Agvania. Ag van ya. Tomato. Chatachti agvanya. I sliced a tomato. Chatachti agvanya. Tut. Strawberry. Tut. Tu. Strawberry. אפשר לקנות תותים כל השנה, אבל הם הכי טעימים בקיץ. You can buy strawberries all year round, but they taste best in summer. אפשר לקנות תותים כל השנה, אבל הם הכי טעימים בקיץ. Duvdevan. Cherry. Duvdevan. Duvdevan. Cherry. Ha'eru ha'ze ha'ya duvdevan shebakatsefet. This event was the cherry on my cream. Ha'eru ha'ze ha'ya ha'duvdevan שבקצפת. ילד. child. ילד. ילד. child. הילד מטייל עם הכלב. The child is walking with the dog. הילד מטייל עם הכלב. חבר. friend. חבר. ח-ו-ר. friend. בילינו הלילה עם החברים שלנו. We spend time with our friends tonight. בילינו הלילה עם החברים 
שלנו. מבוגר אדולט מבוגר מבוגר אדולט לפעמים זה לא כל כך כיף להיות מבוגר. Sometimes being an adult just isn't very fun. לפעמים זה לא כל כך כיף להיות מבוגר. אופניים בייסקל אופניים אופניים בייסקל אופניים הם דרך נוחה להסתובב בעיר. The bicycle is a convenient way to get around the city. אופניים הם דרך נוחה להסתובב בעיר. אוטו car אוטו אוטו car אין לי אוטו I don't have a car. אין לי אוטו. אופנוע. מוטרסייקל. אופנוע. אופנוע. מוטרסייקל. אופנועים הם מהירים. מוטרסייקלס are fast. אופנועים הם מהירים. טוסטוס, סקודר. טוסטוס. טוס, טוס. סקודר. לרכב על טוסטוס בעיר זה נוח. Riding a scooter in the city is convenient. לרכב על טוסטוס בעיר זה נוח. סירה boat סירה סירה boat הסירה שטה במים. The boat is moving through the water. הסירה שטה במים. מדוזה Jellyfish מדוזה מדוזה Jellyfish המדוזה שוחה באוקיינוס. The jellyfish is swimming in the ocean. המדוזה שוחה באוקיינוס. לובסטר 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 הלובסטר נמצא על האבן. The lobster is on the rock. הלובסטר נמצא על האבן. סרטן קראב סרטן סרטן קראב אני אוהב לאכול סרטנים טריים. I like fresh crab. אני אוהב לאכול סרטנים טריים. צב טרטל צב צב טרטל צב הים שוחה בים. The sea turtle is swimming in the sea. 
המצב, הים, שוחה, בים. Well done! In this lesson you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at hebrewpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom! Shalom, אני יאנה. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's עברית בשלוש דקות. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase סליחה. את מדברת אנגלית? Or סליחה, אתה מדבר אנגלית? Excuse me, do you speak English? We mentioned the word סליחה, which means excuse me in Hebrew. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use סליחה and other words when apologizing in Hebrew. סליחה is a very common word and can be used in many situations. We can use סליחה in both formal and informal occasions, such as when we are ordering something in bars or restaurants. For example, סליחה, קפה אחד בבקשה. Excuse me, one coffee please. סליחה, קפה. אחד, בבקשה. Do you remember what בבקשה means? We can also use it when asking a question. סליחה, איפה רחוב דיזינגוף? Excuse me, where is דיזינגוף street? Sometimes we also hear people say, סליחה, um, which means, excuse me, um, when we want to draw somebody's attention. Also, in a situation when you want to make your way through a crowd, for example, סליחה is used. Israeli people use סליחה also for apologizing. For example, if you accidentally bump into a person while making your way through that crowd. We also use the word אני מצטער or אני מצטערת if you really want to apologize. You also might hear this phrase translated as forgive me or I'm sorry in English. אני מצטערת. אני מצטערת. If you're a woman, and אני מצטער. אני מצטער. If you're a man. The phrase אני מצטער, or אני מצטערת, has a deeper meaning of apology than סליחה, although both mean I'm sorry. אני is I am, regardless of your gender. But the verb be sorry changes according to your gender. So mitzta'eret is I'm sorry or I apologize if it's a woman. And ani mitzta'er if it's a man. If you feel really, really bad about something and want to deepen the apology even more, you can just add me'od to your apology, which simply means very much. We already used it in the lesson about self-introductions. Remember? שלום, אני יאנה, נעים מאוד. You can also add מאוד to get אני מאוד מצטערת. אני מאוד מצטערת. For a woman. Or אני מאוד מצטער. אני מאוד מצטער. For a man. It simply translates as I'm really sorry into English. But please remember that you cannot use me'od with slicha. Now it's time for Yana's insights. If you are not sure about what will be the proper phrase to use as an apology, it's always your safest bet to simply use slicha. In this way, Israeli people will definitely appreciate your politeness. Are you able to count in Hebrew? In the next lesson, we will learn the numbers in Hebrew from 1 to 10. Hint. We already learned how to say one in this class. I'll be waiting for you in our next Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot ve'ada pa'ama ba'a.
Hi everybody, Jana here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Hebrew questions. The question for this lesson is, how can you possibly read Hebrew if it doesn't have any vowels? The simple answer to this question is that people who are fluent in Hebrew know which vowels go with different words. For someone who knows any language well, it's really not as hard as it sounds. Try it. Here's a famous quote in English translation, which the vowels removed. Take a minute to read this. Can you figure it out? That which is hateful to you, do not do to your fellow. Was it easier than you thought? Most English speakers don't practice this skill much, but imagine if you did this all the time. In reality, there are a few characters used sometimes to indicate vowel sounds in Hebrew, and even native speakers use them. I'll explain more about this in a later lesson. You now know how native speakers can read Hebrew without vowels. But what about Hebrew learners? There are a couple systems available to help non-native or beginner speakers read Hebrew text. The most common of these is the Nikud. Here's an example. Do you see these dots and marks? They represent the vowel sounds and are called Nikud. We go over this system in more detail in our Hebrew Alphabet Made Easy series. But for now, take comfort that there is help. There is also a number of systems of Roman transliteration. These almost always include vowels to help you read. For example, the sentence above can be read Toch mispar shavuot, achanut nizgira. All beginner materials at HebrewPod101.com include this kind of romanization. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Lehitraot! Hi everybody, I'm Edith from HebrewPod101.com. Do you know how to say thank you in Hebrew? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say thank you and how to respond. Let's start with the easiest one. Toda. Toda. It means thank you. If you want to show your sincere appreciation for something, say this phrase. Toda raba. Toda. Rabba. The word Rabba means a lot, so Toda Rabba means thank you very much. It expresses a deeper appreciation for some personal kindness. What if you want to address the recipient when saying thank you? Here's the way to say it. Toda Rabba Lach. Toda Rabba Lach. When addressing to a woman, Simply add the word lach. To a man, say toda raba lecha. Lach and lecha means to you. So it literally means thanks to you. Now you know three different ways to say thank you in Hebrew. But how do you respond if someone thanks you? If someone thanks you in Hebrew, simply say bevakasha. Bevakasha. It means you're welcome. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Listen to the expression and repeat after me. Thank you. Toda. Toda. Thank you so much. Toda raba. Toda raba. The polite way to say thank you to a woman. Toda raba lach. Toda raba lach. The polite way to say thank you to a man. Toda raba lecha. Toda raba lecha. 
And to respond, just say, בבקשה. בבקשה. Well done! If you're not sure about which one to say, just say, תודה. This can be used with anyone, anywhere, and at any time. You just learned three different ways to say thank you and how to respond in Hebrew. And if you really want to become fluent and speak Hebrew from the very first lesson, go to hebrewpod101.com. I'll see you next time. תודה רבה. Hi everybody, Yana here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Hebrew questions. The question for this lesson is, just what is the difference between biblical and modern Hebrew? Now, you may be attracted to Hebrew for any number of reasons. Perhaps you want to communicate with friends or family, or maybe you've interested in studying the many religious and classical texts written in Hebrew. Depending on your reasons for learning Hebrew, you may end up learning one of two very different languages. Biblical or classical Hebrew was an ancient language that first emerged in the 10th century BC. Over the next centuries, the ancient Hebrew people used it to communicate and to take a record of their history, religion, philosophy, poetry and culture. A portion of this literary record formed the basis of Hebrew scriptures and also what came to be called the Bible. During the Roman period, the language evolved beyond recognition and later fell out of use in daily life, but it lived on in religious contexts. Hebrew experienced a revival in the late 19th century as part of the larger Zionist movement. Thanks to the effort of Eliezer ben Yehuda, who prepared the first modern Hebrew dictionary, people started using Hebrew again to communicate with one another as they went about their lives. But because of the influence of European languages, Hebrew changed. Grammar, pronunciation, vocabulary, not a single aspect of the language went untouched by the transformation. And like any other modern language, Hebrew continues to change. So, for example, the word I or me in Biblical Hebrew is anochi. This same word has changed in modern Hebrew to ani. Besides this change in pronunciation, modern Hebrew got a lot of new words from languages like French and German. For example, the word concrete or beton came from French, while schnitzel or schnitzel came from German. And of course, there are new words to describe things that did not exist in ancient times, like electricity, chashmal, computer, machshev, car, mechonit, telephone, telephone. At this point in history, someone familiar only with biblical Hebrew would not be able to communicate very well with contemporary native speakers. At the same time, a modern Hebrew speaker cannot easily read the Bible. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Lehitraot! In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Hebrew. Hi everybody, my name is Edith. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you've learned the new words and phrases, Stick around and review what you've learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at HebrewPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is... Shalom. Hello. Shalom. Shalom. 
hello. He omere shalom. She is saying hello. He omeret shalom. Slicha. Excuse me. Slicha. Slicha. Excuse me. Slicha. Raita et a kelev shelly? Excuse me, have you seen my dog? Slicha. Raita et a kelev shelly? Animit staeret. I'm sorry. Animit staeret. Ani mitztaeret. I'm sorry. Ani mitztaeret. Hu lo nimtza kan karega. I'm sorry. He is not here right now. Ani mitztaeret. Hu lo nimtza kan karega. Laila tov. Good night. Laila tov. Laila tov. Good night. Kshat holechet lishon, at yichola le agidli, Laila tov. When you go to sleep, you can tell me good night. Kshat holechet lishon, את יכולה להגיד לי לילה טוב. נעים מאוד. Nice to meet you. נעים מאוד. נעים מאוד. Nice to meet you. נעים מאוד להכיר אותך, אדוני. Nice to meet you, sir. נעים מאוד להכיר אותך, אדוני. מה שלומך? How are you? מה שלומך? מה שלומך? How are you? שלום, מה שלומך? Hello. How are you? Shalom. Ma shlomcha. Ken. Yes. Ken. Ken. Yes. Ken. An Israelite. Yes, I'm Israeli. Ken, אני ישראלית. לא, no, לא, לא, no. אוי לא. השארתי משהו על הקיריים. Oh no, I left something on the stove. אוי לא, השארתי משהו על הקיריים. תודה. Thank you. תודה. תודה. Thank you. תודה על העזרה. Thank you for your help. תודה על העזרה. אני... I am... אני... אני... 
I'm I'm me, Lisa. I am Lisa. Ani Lisa. Shalom. Goodbye. Shalom. Shalom. Goodbye. Shalom. Lehitraot bekarov. Goodbye. See you soon. Shalom. Lehitraot bekarov. Ra. Bad. Ra. Ra. Bad. Ha'ish ra. The man is bad. Ha'ish ra. Tov. Good. Tov. Tov. Good. He ben adam tov. She is a good person. He ben adam tov. Yafe. Pretty. Yafe. Yafe. Pretty. At your fame od. You are very pretty. At your fame od. Mechoar. Ugly. Mechoar. Me. Ho. Ar. Ugly. הכלב הזה מכוער מאוד. That is a very ugly dog. הכלב הזה מכוער מאוד. קל. Easy. קל. קל. Easy. המבחן היה קל. The test was easy. המבחן היה קל. קשה. Difficult. קשה. קשה. Difficult. Anglit hi safakasha. English is a difficult language. Anglit hi safakasha. Karov. Near. Karov. Karov. Near. אני גרה קרוב לאוניברסיטה. I live near the university. אני גרה קרוב לאוניברסיטה. רחוק. Far. רחוק. רחוק. Far. התחנה נמצאת רחוק מכאן. The station is far from here. התחנה נמצאת רחוק 
מכאן. קטן. small. קטן. קטן. small. המכונית קטנה, אבל היא עוצמתית מאוד. The car is small, but it's very powerful. המכונית קטנה, אבל היא עוצמתית מאוד. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at hebrewpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom. Shalom, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Aleph Bet Bekalei Kalut, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet. In the last lesson, we learned the sixth Hebrew letter, Vav, and three new Nikud. Do you remember how to write David and Uncle? What about electric water heater? In this lesson, we will learn two new Hebrew letters. So let's move on with the seventh letter, Zayn. The sound is Z. Let's write it in handwriting first. Does it look familiar? You might be reminded of the third letter, Gimel, in handwriting. Yes, you are right. They are the mirror images of each other. But don't get confused between them. Gimel faces this way. Zayn faces this way. Okay, how about the print version? Fortunately, this one will be hard to confuse with the print version of Gimel. Even though they are pretty different in print, make sure you don't write Zayn and Vav in too similar a way. Let's see the difference. Vav, Zayn. Zvuv is a fly in Hebrew. Zvuv. And in print? Zvuv. You can easily remember this word since the fly makes this sound. Zvz. Let's move on. If you write Zain with a comma on the left side, it will sound like Zh, as in the word journal or collage. First you write Zain and then add the comma on the upper left side. In print, Usually, the letter J is used for foreign words like jacket, a jacket, journal, a journal, and so forth. Now we move on to the eighth letter, Chet. This has the sound of Ch, and it is written like this. For the handwriting, keep the corners round, and in print, Chet. Almost the same, right? Always the print version will have sharper corners than the handwriting version. Ach is a brother in Hebrew. Ach. The pronunciation is important. Try to pronounce it more glottally from your throat. Chava is a farm. Chava. Here the handwriting and the print versions are almost the same. Let's write them. Chava. In print. Chava. Now it's time for Yana's insights. When writing Hebrew, Aleph Bet always start from the top, both in hand and print writing. In this lesson, we studied two new Hebrew letters, Zayn and Chet, with a variation of J. Did you know that you have already mastered a third of the complete Hebrew Aleph Bet and the Nikud system?
Good job. But how do you write good in Hebrew? In the next lesson, we will learn this and two new letters plus one Nikud. See you then. Lehitraot. Hi everyone, my name is Yara and today we're going to talk about top Hebrew verbs, which are very useful verbs that will help you in everyday life uh, in your next visit in Israel. Yay! Lelechet, to go. Lelechet uh, also means to walk. Lelechet baregel, to walk by foot. So you can use it as to go on a trip. Lelechet letiyul, to go home. Lelechet abaita. Lavo. To come. Lavo, to come. Like, are you coming to the party? At Ba'al Amesiba. Are you planning to come to the party? At Matachnenet Lavo Lamesiba. Come to the party, it'll be fun. Lehagid, to say. Lehagid, Ani Rotsa Lehagid Lachmashu. I want to tell you something. You can only use this verb in this form, at least in modern Hebrew. Lehagid, to say. Uh, you can't use it as I said. It doesn't work like that. Only in the infinitive form. Lehagid, to say. Lishmoa, to hear. Ba'erev, afshar lishmoa et atzfardeim. In the evening, you can hear the frogs. Lishmoa. La'asot, to do, to make. La'asot means to do, but it also means to make. Like la'asot balagan, to make a mess. Alta balagan, don't make a mess. Or like, don't make a big deal. Alta seinyan, lakachat, to take. Uh, you can use that, like in English, to take medicine or to take something from one place to another, to take it back. Hayali keevrosh, as lakachti kadur. I had a headache, so I took a pill. Lirzot, to want. When I was a little girl, I wanted to be a dancer. כשהייתי קטנה, רציתי להיות רקדנית. רציתי is the first person past tense of לרצות. לחכות, to wait, like to wait in line. לחכות בתור. חיכיתי שעות בתור לפלאפל. I waited for hours in the line for the falafel. Oh, don't worry, it never happened. לקנות, to buy. אין לי כסף, אז אני לא יכולה לקנות כלום. I don't have money, so I can't buy anything. <laughs> לדעת, to know. How could I know? איך הייתי יכולה לדעת? להיות, to be. כשאני אהיה גדולה, אני רוצה להיות רופאה. When I grow up, I want to be a doctor. להיות. לתת, to give. רציתי לתת לך מתנה. I wanted to give you a present. לחשוב, to think. You should try thinking about other people too. אתה צריך לנסות לחשוב גם על אנשים אחרים. להרגיש, to feel. Did you feel the earthquake? הרגשת את רעידת האדמה? לאהוב, to love. I love cats. אני אוהבת חתולים. I love other stuff too, but... Like, cats are my favorite thing in the world, so... אני אוהבת חתולים. For a male speaker, it would be, אני אוהב חתולים. Because who doesn't love cats? Yes. לעזוב. To leave. To let go. אני לא רוצה לעזוב את הבית. I don't want to leave home. אל תעזוב את המעקה. Don't let go of the handrail. לעזוב. לעבוד. To work. I don't like working on weekend. אני לא אוהבת לעבוד בסופי שבוע. Nobody does. לנסות, to try. תמשיכי לנסות, בסוף זה יעבוד. Keep trying, eventually it will work. Hopefully. לקבל, to receive. אני אוהבת לקבל מתנות. I love receiving presents. לקבל is to receive, but it can also sometimes mean to get something, to get what you deserve. לקבל מה שמגיע לך. 
In Hebrew, you can also say lekabel makot, which means to get beat up. And it literally means to receive beating. Can you say that? <laughs> Whatever. Ledaber, to speak. תפסיק לדבר, אני לא יכולה לשמוע אותך כבר. Stop talking, I can't hear you anymore. לחפש, to search. I've been searching for my glasses for days. אני מחפשת את המשקפיים שלי כבר כמה ימים. למצוא. To find. If you ever watched any Disney movie, you'll know this sentence. למצוא אהבת אמת. To find true love. Uh, obviously, you can also use it to find, you know, objects. <laughs> uh, to find your glasses. למצוא את המשקפיים שלך. Uh, yeah, I don't do that very often. I look for them a lot, I don't find them very often. to call. This word literally means to contact, but these days, like in modern Hebrew, you only use it to say to call someone on the phone. ניסיתי להתקשר אלייך, אבל לא ענית. I tried calling you, but you didn't answer. Like if you call someone on the street, hey, that's, that's not להתקשר. להתקשר is only on the phone. לאכול, to eat. מה אתה רוצה לאכול? What do you want to eat? And while you're in Israel, make sure to go and have falafel. Go eat falafel. לכו לאכול falafel. לישון, to sleep. לילה טוב, אני הולכת לישון. Good night, I'm going to sleep. Okay, good night, I'm going to sleep. Yes. Sleep. Lishon. Okay, that was the end. Thank you so much for watching Top Hebrew Verbs. Which verb do you use the most? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Ah, oh, now I get it. It's so hot in here. Yes. <gasps>
חמישים, חמישים, שישים, שישים, שבעים, שבעים, שמונים, שמונים, תשעים, תשעים, מאה, מאה. While you have to memorize a few of these numbers, there are a couple of tricks that will make memorizing them incredibly easy. All the tens are basically the numbers 1 to 10, with slight changes, but always end up with im. For example, shalosh is 3, and shloshim is 30. Shalosh, shloshim. Let's take another example. Do you remember what Chamesh is? 5. So to make it 50, you change it to Chamishim. Chamesh, Chamishim. And Shmone will make Shmonim. Shmone, Shmonim. The last thing to learn today is how to form compound numbers above 20. This is also super easy. Take the tens and simply add the numbers you learned in the previous lesson. But don't forget to add V when you are making compound numbers over 20. V means end. So basically, if you count 22, you say Esrim V Stein, meaning 20 and 2. It is very important, so don't forget that. Let's try it out. How would you say 56 in Hebrew? Let's take it step by step. 50 is 50. And then add the tiny V. And 6. 6. 50 V6. After only two lessons, you are now able to count to 100 in Hebrew. In the next lesson, we are going to put your number knowledge to use. Do you have all the skills you need to go shopping in Israel? If not, I'll be waiting for you in our next Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot ve'ad ha'pam ha'ba'a. Shalom, אני יאנה. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned some words used when apologizing in Hebrew, including Slicha and Ani Mitztaeret. Ani Mitztaer. In this lesson, we are going to learn numbers in Hebrew. Yes, numbers. Misparim, from 1 to 10. And you are going to learn them in only three minutes. Beshalosh dakot. You already know the first number from last lesson and can make a full sentence. Do you remember? Kafe echad bevakasha. Ready? Let's start. Echad. Echad. Shtaim. Shtaim. Shalosh. Shalosh. Arba. ארבע, חמש, חמש, שש, שש, שבע, שבע, שמונה, שמונה, תשע, תשע, and עשר, עשר. אוקיי, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat. Each one. Ready? Echad. Shtaim. Shalosh. Arba. Chamesh. Shesh. Sheva. Shmone. Tesha. Eser. Great job. What is before Echad? Do you know? It's Ephes. 
FS. You don't have any more excuses. You can give your friends your cell phone number in Hebrew. Let's try together. We'll use the phrase Hamispar Sheli Hu, which means my number is Hamispar Sheli Hu. Hamispar Sheli Hu. Shalosh Shalosh Sheva. Echad Shtaim Shtaim. Arba Tesha Shesh Shmone. Can you read it by yourself? Shalosh Shalosh Sheva Echad Shtaim Shtaim Arba Tesha Shesh Shmone. Perfect. Now it's time for Yana's insights. When you travel in Israel, it's a good idea to start paying attention to the bus numbers, street numbers, dates, hours, and the local money, the shekel. It's the best practice to remember. You can start now if you are at your hometown to practice Hebrew numbers in your daily life. Do you know the Hebrew word for a hundred? In the next lesson, we are going to learn the numbers from 11 to 100 in Hebrew. Your task now is to practice the numbers we studied in this lesson from Echad till Eser. Lehitraot ve'ada pama ba'a. Bye! Shalom, Ani Yana. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Hebrew. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we are going to learn a very useful phrase, Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Hebrew, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if the answer is no. As already mentioned in previous lessons, in Hebrew there is a difference between male and female speech. So if you want to ask a woman, say, At medaberet anglit? At medaberet anglit? In Hebrew, verbs change depending on the pronoun that is used, according to the gender of both the speaker and the addressee. At, in this case, is the female pronoun for you. So the verb medaberet, which means speak, refers to a female. For example, if I said, I speak English, it will be ani medaberet anglit. Ani, as we learned already, means I am. Ani is the only way you can say I am in Hebrew, regardless of one's gender. Then, medaberet is the female conjugation for speak or speaking. So, ani medaberet anglit will be used only by a female speaker. On the other hand, if you're asking a man if he speaks English, you say, ata medaber anglit, ata medaber anglit. Ata in this case is the male pronoun for you. So, the verb medaber, which means speak, refers to a man only. So, if you're a man and want to say, I speak English, it will be Ani medaber anglit. It is important to notice that in Hebrew the pronoun and the verb change according to female, male, and also to singular or plural of the same sentence. So basically there are four ways to say each phrase. But don't worry, we will talk more about that later. For now, please only remember that you can use both at medaberet anglit and ata medaber anglit only if you are addressing one person. So let's review them once again. At medaberet anglit if you are asking a woman and ata medaber anglit if you are asking a man. Adding slicha, excuse me, the sentence becomes even more polite. Slicha at medaberet anglit Slicha at medaberet anglit or Slicha, אתה מדבר אנגלית? 
סליחה, אתה מדבר אנגלית? The responses you will receive could be one of these three. כן? Yes. כן. קצת? A little. קצת. לא, אני לא מדבר אנגלית. Or, לא, אני לא מדברת אנגלית. No, I don't speak English. לא, אני לא מדבר אנגלית. לא, אני לא מדברת אנגלית. To make every sentence negative in Hebrew, you only have to add לא before the verb, which simply means no. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Yana's insights. For those of you who are not only English speakers, you can obviously use this question with any language you need. Israeli people study other European languages at school, so maybe you will get lucky. Just substitute Anglit with Rusit for Russian, Italkit for Italian, Sfaradit for Spanish, and Germanit for German. In this lesson we mentioned the expression Slicha. But did you know that this could also be used as an apology? In the next lesson we will learn this and other ways to apologize in Hebrew. It's never too late to show your good manners with Israeli people. I'll see you in the next Ivrit B'Shalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot! שלום, אני יאנה. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's א' ב' בקלי קלות. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet. The א' ב'. In the last lesson we'll learn the third and fourth Hebrew letters, ג' and ד'. Do you remember how to write fish? And what about roof? In this lesson we will learn how to write the word for love in Hebrew. Are you ready? So let's start. בואו נתחיל. The fifth Hebrew letter is He. He sound is Ha, but it can also sound like A. You will see how it changes in a second. Let's first write it in handwriting. He. The print version is very similar. He. Make sure to keep He curved while handwriting, but use sharp angles in print. So, as I mentioned, he can sound like both ha and a. The word ahava uses it in both ways. When he appears in the end of the word, it will always sound as a. Ahava is love in Hebrew. Let's try to write it down. A, pronounced ha. Remember the sound here is V, so we don't need a dot of bet. Pronounce A. Let's do it once more in handwriting. Ahava. Ahava. Isn't it a beautiful word with a beautiful curved shape? Now let's do it in print. A. Ha. Va. So if you want to add the full Nikud for this word, we need to use a new Nikud symbol, Patach. Just like Kamatz from last lesson, Patach has the sound of A. Now remember, when you write in modern Hebrew, you don't need to use the Nikud system. It is there mostly for you to read, especially when learning new vocabulary, or if you want to study the Hebrew Bible. Now let's spell Ahava with a full Nikud. Ahava. A-ha-va. Ahava. Here's the print version. Here you saw how the letter He can sound in two different ways. 
so you already know five Hebrew letters and several words. Don't forget to practice the characters in both handwriting and print. Now it's time for Yana's insights. Doesn't hey from this lesson sound like hey in English? When you say hello to your friends? That's exactly the sound for the Hebrew letter hey. Now you can think of the letter hey when saying hello to your friends and memorize it better. In the next lesson, we will see how one word can be pronounced in three different ways in Hebrew. It may sound confusing, but remember, you'll have the Nikud to help you. See you next time. Lehitraot! Shalom, I'm Yana. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit B'Shalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful to people by saying Toda. In this lesson, we learned some of the most common greetings used in Israel. Atem Are you ready? As Atchil. So let's start. The most used greeting is Shalom. Sha-lom. We also saw it in the first lesson. Shalom simply means hi or hello. It can also mean goodbye. We use it when we meet, but also can use it when we part. Shalom means something like peace, so it makes the greeting very special. It is common to say shalom in both informal and formal situations, and at any time of the day. In the morning, you can also greet people with Boker Tov. Boker Tov which means good morning. Boker is morning, and tov is good. During the evening, we also say erev tov. Erev tov. Erev is Hebrew for evening, so erev tov means good evening. Boker tov and erev tov are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say them again. Another way to say goodbye in Hebrew is lehitraot. Le Hit, ra, ot. It is actually more common to use lehitraot than shalom when leaving. But most people in Israel just say bye. Bye! Now you can greet people in many different ways in Hebrew. Let's review them all again. When meeting people in formal and informal situations, shalom. In the morning until the afternoon we say boker tov. And in the evening, erev tov. When living in any situation, lehitraot, or simply, bye. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Yana's insights. In formal situations, Israeli people commonly greet each other by shaking hands. On the other hand, if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we kiss each other on one cheek. Don't be afraid to do it with your Israeli friends. It's normal. During the next lesson, we'll learn the meaning of the phrase Ata medaber anglit, or at Medaberet Anglit? Do you already know it? We'll be waiting to talk about it with you in our next Ivrit B'Shalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot! Bye! Shalom, Ani Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Aleph Bet Bekalei Kalut, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet. In the last lesson, we learned to write the most important word in Hebrew, Ahava, the word for love. Do you remember the Nikud for Ahava? If you are not feeling confident about it, review the last lesson before continuing on from here. In this lesson, we will learn one new Hebrew letter and three more Nikud. Are you ready? So let's start. Bon atchil. The sixth letter is Vav. The sound of Vav is V or O or U. And it's written like this. That's it. Vav has only one stroke from top to the bottom. 
The print version is the same for Vav, with only a small difference. In Hebrew, Vav is not only the name of the character, it's also a word by itself. It means a hook. Doesn't Vav look like a hook? You can write this word like this. It's just the letter Vav, two times. If you want to add Nikud, it will look like this. Now we move on to the next Nikud symbol, Chirik, with a sound I, like in C. It's just one dot under the letter, I. Now you can write a very common name, one that belongs to the second and perhaps most famous king of the ancient kingdom of Israel, David. It's written with two Dalet and one Vav. The Nikud here is important, otherwise it can have different pronunciation and meaning. Let's write this word. David. And now in print. David. The next Nikud for this lesson is Shuruk, with a sound U. This is how you make Vav sound like U. For example, if we take the same letters from David and instead of Chirik, we add Shuruk, it will be Dud, electric water heater. Perhaps now you can appreciate the power of learning the Nikud when you're first studying Hebrew. Let's write this word. Dud. And now in print. Dud. Notice how Shuruk goes to the left of the Vav. Seem complicated? Don't worry, we will review them all at the end of this lesson. But not before we will learn the last Nikud for today. Cholam Malay, with a sound of O. This is how you make Vav sound like O. Let's write this. D, O, D, Dod. And now in print. Dod. Notice that Chola Malay appears above the Vav. Now, Shuruk and Chola Malay are only written with the letter Vav and not with any other letter. Chirik, however, will appear below other letters. Now let's see all the last three examples together and make sense of them. First, we had David, Dud, and Dod. Now let's have a short quiz. I'll show you the Nikud symbol next to a letter and you have to pronounce its sound. Ready? A, U, I, O, A. Now it's time for Yana's insights. Since you will not see any Nikud in modern readings in Israel, you will have to guess, by the context of the sentence, which pronunciation and meaning it has. It all comes with the experience of studying Hebrew vocabulary. Another tip is when writing the letter Vav, it is important to keep the length of the stroke inside the frame. Otherwise, it becomes a different letter. But that's for later. So in this lesson, we studied the letter Vav and three Nikud in Hebrew. Chirik, Shuruk, and Cholam Malay. In the next lesson, we will learn two more Hebrew letters, Zayn and Chet. See you then. Bye. Shalom, Ani Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Aleph Bet Bekalei Kalut, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet. Over the next 20 lessons, you'll learn everything there is to know about reading and writing Hebrew. By the end, you'll even be able to read some portions of the Hebrew Bible. Are you ready? So let's start. Bo Natchil. Hebrew has only one alphabet of 22 letters, so it's super easy. 
Once you know this, a few variations and a simple vowel system, you will be ready to read one of the most ancient languages in the world. As you may know, the Hebrew writing system is written from right to left. At first, this may seem intimidating or confusing, but you'll get the hang of it in no time. Let's start with the first letter, Aleph. What sound does Aleph make? In Hebrew, the name of each letter starts with the sound you use to pronounce it which means the sound of Aleph is A. It is handwritten like this. Now, in Hebrew, there are always two ways to write a letter, the written way, which is used in everyday handwriting, and the print way, which you will see in books and newspapers, on signs and so forth. This is the written way. The print version looks like this. When Israeli kids first learn how to write, they use this print typewriting. It's useful, and as you'll see later, very easy to learn both versions of every letter. Let's do it again. Here's the written form. And here's the print form. You can now write your first letter in Hebrew. Good, let's move on. The second character is bet. The sound of bet is b, and it looks like this. Pay attention to the dot, it has to be in the middle. The print version is like this. If you leave out the dot, bet becomes vet. The sound of Vet is V, but we don't count Vet as a separate letter in the alphabet. So far, you've studied two letters of the Hebrew Aleph Bet, and you've learned three sounds. Want to write them once again? Let's do it. Okay, here is Aleph. This is handwritten. Aleph in print. And now bet, handwritten. And bet in print. Then vet, handwritten. Vet in print style. Did you know you can already write a word in Hebrew? This is Abba. Abba in Hebrew means father. It is the first word every Israeli baby says. These are the simplest phonetic sounds. Try it out. Abba in handwriting. And now the print style. Abba. Great job! In this lesson, you learned the first two letters of the Hebrew alphabet. The Aleph, Bet. You also practice your first word, in both print and writing styles. Before we move on to the next lesson, I want to introduce the Hebrew vowel system. Among 22 Hebrew letters, there are five vowels, one of which we learned in this lesson. But beside those five, there is another vowel system called Nikud. Nikud are a series of dots or points that are used to indicate vowel sounds connected to consonants. Once you have more experience reading Hebrew, you may not see these symbols so often in native texts. But if you can master them when you start learning Hebrew, it will make learning Hebrew much faster and easier. The Nikud take the form of dots, lines, and combinations of the two, and are written in, under, on top, or beside consonant letters. Sound complicated? Don't worry, we'll take it slowly, and by the end of this series, they will seem easy. Now it's time for Yana's insights. Have you been writing as you watch? Hope so. 
There is no better way to master the alphabet quickly than to write them yourself. I also recommend that you make flashcards for each letter and study them whenever you get a chance. Do you know how to write dag, the word for fish in Hebrew? It will definitely come in handy when you read a menu in Israel. And you learn that and much more in the next lesson. Lehitraot! Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. Shalom, Ani Yana. Naim Meod. Hi, I'm Yana. It's a pleasure to meet you. In this series, we are going to learn basic Hebrew expressions. It's super easy, and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to introduce yourself in Hebrew. In Hebrew, there is no formal and informal language. You can use this introduction in both cases and keep it simple. However, in Hebrew, there is a difference between male and female language. Let's first see how Israeli people introduce themselves in a simple way. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naimod. Hi, I'm Yana, it's a pleasure. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Meod. Start by saying Shalom, Ani, then saying your name. Shalom, Ani Yana. Finally say, Naim Od. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Od. And now let's see the same sentence if you wish to be more specific in addressing the person you are introduced to. If you're introducing yourself to a woman, you should say, Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Od Lehakir Otach. Hi, I'm Yana. It's a pleasure to meet you. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Meod lehakir otach. If you are talking to a man, you should say, Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Meod lehakir otcha. Hi, I'm Yana, it's a pleasure to meet you. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Meod lehakir otcha. So, what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a close look at this together. The last part of the introduction has been changed based on the gender of the person you are talking to. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Meod Lehakir Otach, for a woman, versus Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Meod Lehakir Otcha, for a man. Ani, in this case, has not been changed, and in both cases stands for I am, regardless of your gender. The last sounds of the last word changes, however. Otach if you are talking to a woman, and otcha, if you are speaking to a man. One more time, the simple way to introduce yourself in Hebrew is Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Meod. In case you want to personalize the greeting, you say Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Meod, Lehakir Otach. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Meod, Lehakir Otcha. Now it's time for Yana's insights. When you introduce yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands in Israel. If you don't want to worry about using the right word for men and women, just say Naim Meod, as I said at the beginning of this lesson. There is no cultural importance if you add the last part to the introduction. It just makes the sentence more complete. Do you know how to say thank you in Hebrew? You will learn how to say this and many other words in the next lesson. Ada pa'am ba'a, till next time. Hi everyone, my name is Yara and today we're going to do uh, top Hebrew phrases. These are very useful phrases, you're going to hear a lot when you come to Israel, so uh, make sure to memorize them. Okay, let's start. Shalom. Hello. Shalom literally means peace, but we use it also as a greeting. Shalom. Manishma. How are you? Uh, that's a very casual way of asking how are you, and it literally means what is heard? Like, yeah, like, what have you been up to? What's going on with you? 
מה נשמע? תודה. Thanks. And probably the only way to say it, we don't have like thanks or thank you, it's just תודה. בבקשה. Please. בבקשה, it means please, but it can also mean there you go. So you can say, אפשר לקבל מים בבקשה? Can I have water, please? And when you give someone water, you can also say, בבקשה. There you go. סליחה. Excuse me. Uh, it means excuse me or sorry. So when you like push through people in the bus, you can go, mm, סליחה, סליחה, סליחה. Uh, but when you step on someone on the bus, you can also say, אוי, סליחה, I'm sorry. להתראות. See you. It literally means to see each other again. So it's like, to see each other again. <laughs> להתראות. Uh, it's also very casual. בסדר. Okay. This is a very, very useful word. You can say it when someone asks you, how are you? בסדר. You can say it to show you understand something. When someone gives you direction, you're like, בסדר. Uh, it literally means in order. Like everything's in order. טוב. Fine. Uh, most of the time it means fine. Literally it means good. A lot like בסדר. How are you? טוב. To respond to a direction, like, uh, go that way, please. טוב. Fine, I understand. על לא דבר. You're welcome. We use it as you're welcome, and it literally means, oh, for nothing. Thank you. Oh, a lot of all. It was nothing. It's maybe a bit more formal than בבקשה. Most of the times when people say תודה, you answer בבקשה. You can also answer a lot of all. It's pretty much the same, though בבקשה is a bit more common. בוקר טוב. Good morning. בוקר טוב, uh, which literally means good morning, and you obviously use it in the morning. בוקר טוב. לילה טוב. Good night. So yeah, good night you can say uh, when you leave a party at night, you know, you can say, okay, bye, good night, לילה טוב. צהריים טובים. Good afternoon. צהריים טובים. Good afternoon. You can definitely say that. But you don't hear it that often. It literally means good noon. Ma Shimcha, what's your name? For a male, it would be Ma Shimcha. For a female, Ma Shmech, what is your name? You can also ask, Ech Koreim Lach, which literally means how are you called? And this is the most common way to ask. Naim Lehakir, nice to meet you. Literally, I guess it would mean pleasant. It is pleasant to meet you. And you can say naim lakir otach for a woman or naim lakir otcha for a man. A4. Where? A4 hatachana. Where is the station? A4 is very important. You should memorize this one. Ani mevin. I see. For a woman, it would be ani mevina. I understand. I see. אני מבינה. מה השעה? What time is it? The literal translation would be, what is the hour? This is how you ask. סליחה, מה השעה? Excuse me, what time is it? אפשר בבקשה לקבל? Can I please have? אפשר בבקשה לקבל מים? Can I please have some water? And this would be the same uh, for a male speaker and for a female speaker. אפשר בבקשה לקבל? איפה השירותים? Where is the restroom? איפה השירותים? Where is the restroom? שירותים is restroom. איפה השירותים? Another one to memorize. אני מצטער. I'm sorry. אני מצטער. Or for a female speaker, אני מצטערת. אני מצטערת להפריע. I'm sorry to interrupt. כן. Yes. You can... Use it in any way you used yes. Yeah, use it. Be positive. Lo. No. I like this word. It has a fun sound. And it was my sister's first word. Lo. No. Bali. I feel like. Bali. It's two words. Bali. And it means I feel like I want. And you can also use it as a negative. Bali glida. I feel like ice cream. I want ice cream. Lo Bali. ללכת לבית הספר. 
I don't feel like going to school. So it's very useful. Children use it a lot, but grown-ups use it too. Die. Enough. Stop. Uh, it sounds really bad, but it's harmless. It means uh, enough or um, stop when someone is like bugging you, poking you, like, die, stop it, enough. Yeah. Kama ze ole? How much is it? Kama ze ole? How much is it? How much does it cost? Meule. Awesome. Great. I guess maybe the Hebrew equivalent of the word awesome. Uh, it's meule. The masculine form is meule and the feminine is meula. Like, haofa'a uh, zot meula. This show is awesome. It's great. Ech haya tiyul? Haya meule. How was the trip? It was meule. Great, awesome. Okay, that's it for today for Top Hebrew Phrases. Thank you so much for watching. And what is your favorite Hebrew phrase? Tell us on the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye! <laughs> I forgot my name. Shalom, Ani Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Aleph Bet Bekale Kalut the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet. In the last lesson, we learned the first two letters of the Aleph Bet. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we'll move on to the next couple of letters and the first Nikud symbol. So let's start. Bo Natril. The third letter of the Aleph Bet is Gimel. The sound of Gimel is G. Let's first see how to write it by hand. Gimel in handwriting and in print it looks like this Gimel They look quite different, don't they? But the good news is that you already can write another Hebrew word Gag This means roof in handwriting Gag and in print it looks like this Gag. Here you may be a little confused. If you were to see this word written, you might want to read it as gug. There is no vowel sound. In Hebrew, the vowels are often not written. You would know that this word is pronounced gag because it has been taught to you before. And this is why the Nikud is so important. The Nikud shows learners of the Hebrew language what vowel sound is used in words, but don't rely on them too much. As you get more experienced with Hebrew, you should be able to remember how to read words, even if the Nikud is not attached. Now it's time to introduce to you the first Nikud. Remember, Nikud are small points and lines that are placed in, under, on top, or beside consonants. The first one has the sound A, just like Aleph. This is Kamatz, and it looks like this. And it's always written right under the consonant letter. Let's write roof a couple more times while pronouncing its sound, a. Ah. So for example, gag in handwriting looks like this. Gag. And in print, gag. Also the word abba has kamats under two of its letters. Abba, and in print version, Abba. So now you can read and write two words in Hebrew using the full vowel system. You can adjust the sound of the letter Gimel by writing a comma right here. Now it is read J, as in the name George. First the gimel, and then the comma on the upper left side. And in print it looks like this.
So now let's move to the fourth letter, Daled, with the sound of D. Daled. That's it, just one curve for the handwriting. And Daled in print looks like this. Daled. So let's make another word with the letter Gimel and Daled. Here, Dag means fish. This will come in very handy whenever you are in a restaurant. Let's write it. Da. G. And now in print. Da. G. Now it's time for Yana's insights. Don't get lost in studying and forget the real world. Find Hebrew letters around you. Don't see any alphabet letters around you? Go to hebrewpod101.com and check out the alphabet transcripts for every lesson dialogue. You may not be able to read them all yet, but you can get a feel of how the Hebrew letters are used in real life. Do you know what ahava means? It's the most romantic word in Hebrew. You will be able to write and read this and much more in the next lesson. See you then. Lehitraot! Shalom, I'm Yana. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit B'Shalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful to people by saying Toda. In this lesson, we learned some of the most common greetings used in Israel. Atem Uchanim, are you ready? As bon atchil, so let's start. The most used greeting is Shalom. Shalom. We also saw it in the first lesson. Shalom simply means hi or hello. It can also mean goodbye. We use it when we meet, but also can use it when we part. Shalom means something like peace, so it makes the greeting very special. It is common to say shalom in both informal and formal situations, and at any time of the day. In the morning, you can also greet people with Boker Tov. Boker Tov which means good morning. Boker is morning, and tov is good. During the evening, we also say erev tov. Erev tov. Erev is Hebrew for evening, so erev tov means good evening. Boker tov and erev tov are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say them again. Another way to say goodbye in Hebrew is lehitraot. Le Hit, ra, ot. It is actually more common to use lehitraot than shalom when leaving. But most people in Israel just say bye. Bye! Now you can greet people in many different ways in Hebrew. Let's review them all again. When meeting people in formal and informal situations, shalom. In the morning until the afternoon we say boker tov. And in the evening, erev tov. When living in any situation, lehitraot, or simply, bye. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Yana's insights. In formal situations, Israeli people commonly greet each other by shaking hands. On the other hand, if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we kiss each other on one cheek. Don't be afraid to do it with your Israeli friends. It's normal. During the next lesson, we'll learn the meaning of the phrase Ata medaber anglit, or at Medaberet Anglit? Do you already know it? We'll be waiting to talk about it with you in our next Ivrit B'Shalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot! Bye! Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.